Alma, chapters 14 through 17 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Davidson. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 14 through 17. Chapter 14. And it came to pass, after he had made an end of speaking unto the people, many of them did believe on his words, and began to repent, and to search the Scriptures. But the more part of them were desirous that they might destroy Alma and Amulek, for they were angry with Alma because of the plainness of his words unto Zeezrom. And they also said that Amulek had lied unto them, and had reviled against their law, and also against their lawyers and judges. And they were also angry with Alma and Amulek, and because they had testified so plainly against their wickedness, they sought to put them away privily. But it came to pass that they did not. But they took them, and bound them with strong cords, and took them before the chief judge of the land. And the people went forth and witnessed against them, testifying that they had reviled against the law, and their lawyers, and judges of the land, and also of all the people that were in the land, and also testified that there was but one God, and that he should send his Son among the people, but he should not save them. And many such things did the people testify against Alma and Amulek. Now this was done before the chief judge of the land. And it came to pass that Zeezrom was astonished at the words which had been spoken, and he also knew concerning the blindness of the minds which he had caused among the people by his lying words, and his soul began to be harrowed up under a consciousness of his own guilt, yea, he began to be encircled about by the pains of hell. And it came to pass that he began to cry unto the people, saying, Behold, I am guilty and these men are spotless before God. And he began to plead for them from that time forth. But they reviled him, saying, Art thou also possessed with the devil? And they spit upon him, and cast him out from among them, and also all those who believed in the words which had been spoken by Alma and Amulek. And they cast them out, and sent men to cast stones at them. And they brought their wives and children together, and whosoever believed or had been taught to believe in the word of God, they caused that they should be cast into the fire, and they also brought forth their records, which contained the holy scriptures, and cast them into the fire also, that they might be burned and destroyed by fire. And it came to pass that they took Alma and Amulek, and carried them forth to the place of martyrdom, that they might witness the destruction of those who were consumed by fire. And when Amulek saw the pains of the women and children who were consuming in the fire, he also was pained, and he said unto Alma, How can we witness this awful scene? Therefore let us stretch forth our hands, and exercise the power of God which is in us, and save them from the flames. But Alma said unto him, The Spirit constraineth me, that I must not stretch forth mine hand, for behold, the Lord receiveth them up unto himself in glory, and he doth suffer that they may do this thing, or that the people may do this thing unto them, according to the hardness of their hearts, that the judgments which he shall exercise upon them in his wrath may be just, and the blood of the innocent shall stand as a witness against them, yea, and cry mightily against them at the last day. Now Amulek said to Alma, Behold, perhaps they will burn us also. And Alma said, Be it according to the will of the Lord, but behold, our work is not finished, therefore they burn us not. Now it came to pass that when the bodies of those who had been cast into the fire were consumed, and also the records which were cast in with them, the chief judge of the land came and stood before Alma and Amulek as they were bound, and he smote them with his hand upon their cheeks, and said unto them, After what ye have seen, ye will preach again unto this people, that they shall be cast into a lake of fire and brimstone? Behold, ye see, 
that she had not the power to save those who had been cast into the fire. Neither has God saved them because they were of thy faith. And the judge smote them again upon their cheeks, and asked, What say ye for yourselves? Now this judge was after the order and faith of Nehor, who slew Gideon. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek answered him nothing, and he smote them again, and delivered them to the officers to be cast into prison. And when they had been cast into prison three days, there came many lawyers and judges and priests and teachers, who were of the profession of Nehor, and they came into the prison to see them, and they questioned them about many words, but they answered them nothing. And it came to pass that the judge stood before them, and said, Why do ye not answer the words of this people? Know ye not that I have power to deliver you up unto the flames? And he commanded them to speak, but they answered nothing. And it came to pass that they departed and went their ways, but came again on the morrow, and the judge also smote them again on their cheeks. And many came forth also, and smote them, saying, Will ye stand again, and judge this people, and condemn our law? If ye have such great power, why do ye not deliver yourselves? And many such things did they say unto them, gnashing their teeth upon them, and spitting upon them, and saying, How shall we look when we are damned? And many such things, yea, all manner of such things, did they say unto them, and thus did they mock them for many days. And they did withhold food from them, that they might hunger, and water that they might thirst. And they also did take from them their clothes, that they were naked. And thus they were bound with strong cords, and confined in prison. And it came to pass, after they had suffered thus for many days, and it was on the twelfth day in the tenth month, in the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that the chief judge over the land of Ammonihah, and many of their teachers and their lawyers, went into the prison where Alma and Amulek were bound with cords. And the chief judge stood before them, and smote them again, and said unto them, If ye have the power of God, deliver yourselves from these bands, and then we will believe that the Lord will destroy this people according to your words. And it came to pass that they all went forth and smote them, saying the same words, even until the last. And when the last had spoken unto them, the power of God was upon Alma and Amulek, and they rose and stood upon their feet. And Alma cried, saying, How long shall we suffer these great afflictions, O Lord? O Lord, give us strength according to our faith, which is in Christ, even unto deliverance. And they broke the cords with which they were bound. And when the people saw this, they began to flee, for the fear of destruction had come upon them. And it came to pass that so great was their fear that they fell to the earth, and did not obtain the outer door of the prison. And the earth shook mightily, and the walls of the prison were rent in twain, so that they fell to the earth, and the chief judge, and the lawyers, and the priests, and teachers, who smote upon Alma and Amulek, were slain by the fall thereof. And Alma and Amulek came forth out of the prison, and they were not hurt. For the Lord had granted unto them power, according to their faith, which was in Christ. And they straightway came forth out of the prison, and they were loosed from their bands, and the prison had fallen to the earth, and every soul within the walls thereof, save it were Alma and Amulek, was slain, and they straightway came forth into the city. Now the people, having heard a great noise, came running together by multitudes to know the cause of it. And when they saw Alma and Amulek coming forth out of the prison, and all the walls thereof had fallen to the earth, they were struck with great fear, and fled from the presence of Alma and Amulek, even as a goat fleeth with her young from two lions. And thus they did flee from the presence of Alma and Amulek. Chapter 15 And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek were commanded to depart out of the city, and they departed and came out even into the land of Sidom. And behold, there they found all the people who had departed out of the land of Ammonihah, 
who had been cast out and stoned because they believed in the words of Alma. And they related unto them all that had happened unto their wives and children, and also concerning themselves, and of their power of deliverance. And also Zeezrom lay sick at Sidom, with a burning fever, which was caused by the great tribulations of his mind, on account of his wickedness, for he supposed that Alma and Amulek were no more, and he supposed that they had been slain because of his iniquity. And this great sin, and his many other sins, did harrow upon his mind, until it did become exceedingly sore, having no deliverance. Therefore he began to be scorched with a burning heat. Now when he heard that Alma and Amulek were in the land of Sidom, his heart began to take courage, and he sent a message immediately unto them, desiring them to come unto him. And it came to pass that they went immediately, obeying the message which he had sent unto them, and they went in under the house of Zeezrom, and they found him upon his bed, sick, being very low with a burning fever, and his mind also was exceedingly sore because of his iniquities. And when he saw them, he stretched forth his hand and besought them that they would heal him. And it came to pass that Alma said unto him, taking him by the hand, Believest thou in the power of Christ unto salvation? And he answered and said, Yea, I believe all the words that thou hast taught. And Alma said, If thou believest in the redemption of Christ, thou canst be healed. And he said, Yea, I believe according to thy words. And then Alma cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord our God, have mercy on this man, and heal him according to his faith which is in Christ. And when Alma had said these words, Zeezrom leaped upon his feet and began to walk, and this was done to the great astonishment of all the people, and the knowledge of this went forth throughout all the land of Sidom. And Alma baptized Zeezrom unto the Lord, and he began from that time forth to preach unto the people. And Alma established a church in the land of Sidom, and consecrated priests and teachers in the land to baptize unto the Lord whosoever were desirous to be baptized. And it came to pass that there were many, for they did flock in from all the region around about Sidom, and were baptized. But as to the people that were in the land of Ammonihah, they yet remained a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people, and they repented not of their sins, ascribing all the power of Alma and Amulek to the devil. For they were of the profession of Nehor, and did not believe in the repentance of their sins. And it came to pass that Alma and Amulek, Amulek having forsaken all his gold and silver, and his precious things which were in the land of Ammonihah, for the word of God, he being rejected by those who were once his friends, and also by his father and his kindred, Therefore, after Alma, having established the church at Sidom, seeing a great check, yea, seeing that the people were checked as to the pride of their hearts, and began to humble themselves before God, and began to assemble themselves together at their sanctuaries to worship God before the altar, watching and praying continually that they might be delivered from Satan, and from death, and from destruction. Now, as I said, Alma, having seen all these things, therefore he took Amulek, and came over to the land of Zarahemla, and took him to his own house, and did administer to him in his tribulations, and strengthened him in the Lord. And thus ended the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 16 And it came to pass in the eleventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, on the fifth day of the second month, there having been much peace in the land of Zarahemla, there having been no wars or contentions for a certain number of years, even until the fifth day of the second month, in the eleventh year, there was a cry of war heard throughout the land. For behold, the armies of the Lamanites had come in upon the wilderness side, into the borders of the land, even into the city of Ammonihah, and began to slay the people, and destroy the cities. And now it came to pass, before the Nephites could raise a sufficient army to drive them out of the land, 
they had destroyed the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, and also some around the borders of Noah, and taken others captive into the wilderness. Now it came to pass that the Nephites were desirous to obtain those who had been carried away captive into the wilderness. Therefore he that had been appointed the chief captain over the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Zoram, and he had two sons, Lehi and Aha. Now Zoram and his two sons, knowing that Alma was high priest over the church, and having heard that he had the spirit of prophecy, therefore they went unto him, and desired of him to know whither the Lord would that they should go into the wilderness in search of their brethren, who had been taken captive by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Alma inquired of the Lord concerning the matter, and Alma returned and said unto them, Behold, the Lamanites will cross the river Sidon in the south wilderness, away up beyond the borders of the land of Manti. And behold, there ye shall meet them on the east of the river Sidon, and there the Lord will deliver unto thee thy brethren who have been taken captive by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Zoram and his sons crossed over the river Sidon with their armies and marched away beyond the borders of Manti into the south wilderness which was on the east side of the river Sidon. And they came upon the armies of the Lamanites, and the Lamanites were scattered and driven into the wilderness, and they took their brethren who had been taken captive by the Lamanites, and there was not a soul of them had been lost that were taken captive, and they were brought by their brethren to possess their own lands. And thus ended the eleventh year of the judges, the Lamanites, having been driven out of the land, and the people of Ammonihah, were destroyed, yea, every living soul of the Ammonihahites was destroyed, and also their great city, which they said God could not destroy because of its greatness. But, behold, in one day it was left desolate, and the carcasses were mangled by dogs and wild beasts of the wilderness. Nevertheless, after many days their dead bodies were heaped up upon the face of the earth, and they were covered with a shallow covering. And now so great was the scent thereof, that the people did not go in to possess the land of Ammonihah for many years. And it was called Desolation of Nehors, for they were of the profession of Nehor who were slain, and their lands remained desolate. And the Lamanites did not come again to war against the Nephites until the fourteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus for three years did the people of Nephi have continual peace in all the land. And Alma and Amulek went forth preaching repentance to the people in their temples, and in their sanctuaries, and also in their synagogues, which were built after the manner of the Jews. And as many of them would hear their words, Unto them they did impart the word of God, without any respect of persons, continually. And thus did Alma and Amulek go forth, and also many more who had been chosen for the work, to preach the word throughout the land. And the establishment of the church became general throughout the land, in all the region round about, among all the peoples of the Nephites. And there was no inequity among them, the Lord did pour out His Spirit on all the face of the land to prepare the minds of the children of men, or to prepare their hearts to receive the word which should be taught among them at the time of His coming. That they might not be hardened against the word, that they might not be unbelieving and go on to destruction, but that they might receive the word with joy, and as a branch be grafted into the true vine, that they might enter into the rest of the Lord their God. Now those priests who did go forth among the people did preach against all lyings and deceivings and envyings and strifes and malice and revilings and stealing, robbing, plundering, murdering, committing adultery, and all manner of lasciviousness, crying that these things ought not so to be, holding forth things which must shortly come yea, holding forth the coming of the Son of God, his sufferings and death, and also the resurrection of the dead. And many of the people did inquire concerning the place where the Son of God should come, and they were taught that he would appear unto them after his resurrection, 
and this the people did hear with great joy and gladness. And now, after the church had been established throughout all the land, having got the victory over the devil, and the word of God being preached in its purity in all the land, and the Lord pouring out his blessings upon the people, thus ended the fourteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Chapter 17 And now it came to pass that as Alma was journeying from the land of Gideon southward away to the land of Manti, behold, to his astonishment, he met with the sons of Mosiah, journeying towards the land of Zarahemla. Now these sons of Mosiah were with Alma at the time the angel first appeared unto him. Therefore Alma did rejoice exceedingly to see his brethren. And what added more to his joy, they were still his brethren in the Lord. Yea, and they had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth, for they were men of a sound understanding, and they had searched the Scriptures diligently, that they might know the word of God. But this is not all. They had given themselves to much prayer and fasting. Therefore they had the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of revelation. And when they taught, they taught with power and authority of God. And they had been teaching the word of God for the space of fourteen years among the Lamanites, having had much success in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, by the power of their words, many were brought before the altar of God, to call on his name and confess their sins before him. Now these are the circumstances which attended them in their journeyings, for they had many afflictions, they did suffer much, both in body and in mind, such as hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and also much labor in the spirit. Now these were their journeyings. Having taken leave of their father Mosiah, in the first year of the judges, having refused the kingdom which their father was desirous to confer upon them, and also this was the minds of the people. Nevertheless, they departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and took their swords, and their spears, and their bows, and their arrows, and their slings, and this they did, that they might provide food for themselves while in the wilderness. And thus they departed into the wilderness with their numbers, which they had selected, to go up to the land of Nephi, to preach the word of God unto the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they journeyed many days in the wilderness, and they fasted much and prayed much that the Lord would grant unto them a portion of his Spirit, to go with them and abide with them, that they might be an instrument in the hands of God to bring, if it were possible, their brethren, the Lamanites, to the knowledge of the truth, to the knowledge of the baseness of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. And it came to pass that the Lord did visit them with his Spirit, and said unto them, Be comforted. And they were comforted. And the Lord said unto them also, Go forth among the Lamanites, thy brethren, and establish my word. Yet ye shall be patient in long suffering and afflictions, that ye may show forth good examples unto them in me, and I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. And it came to pass that the hearts of the sons of Mosiah, and also those who were with them, took courage to go forth unto the Lamanites, and declare unto them the word of God. And it came to pass, when they had arrived in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, that they separated themselves, and departed from one another, trusting in the Lord that they should meet again at the close of their harvest, for they supposed that great was the work which they had undertaken. And assuredly it was great, for they had undertaken to preach the word of God to a wild and a hardened and a ferocious people, a people who delighted in murdering the Nephites, and robbing and plundering them, and their hearts were set upon riches, upon gold and silver, and precious stones, yet they sought to obtain these things by murdering and plundering, that they might not labor for them with their own hands. Thus they were a very indolent people, many of whom did worship idols, and the curse of God had fallen upon them because of the traditions of their fathers, notwithstanding the promises of the Lord were extended unto them on the conditions of repentance. 
Therefore this was the cause for which the sons of Mosiah had undertaken the work, that perhaps they might bring them unto repentance, that perhaps they might bring them to know the plan of redemption. Therefore they separated themselves from one another, and went forth among them, every man alone, according to the word and power of God which was given unto him. Now Ammon, being the chief among them, or rather he did administer unto them, and he departed from them, after having blessed them according to their several stations, having imparted the word of God unto them, or administered unto them before his departure, and thus they took their several journeys throughout the land. And Ammon went to the land of Ishmael, the land being called after the sons of Ishmael, who also became Lamanites. And as Ammon entered the land of Ishmael, the Lamanites took him and bound him, as was their custom to bind all the Nephites who fell into their hands, and carry them before the king, and thus it was left to the pleasure of the king to slay them, or to retain them in captivity, or to cast them into prison, or to cast them out of his land, according to his will and pleasure. And thus Ammon was carried before the king, who was over the land of Ishmael, and his name was Lamoni, and he was a descendant of Ishmael. And the king inquired of Ammon if it were his desire to dwell in the land among the Lamanites, or among his people. And Ammon said unto him, Yea, I desire to dwell among this people for a time, yea, and perhaps until the day I die. And it came to pass that King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon, and caused that his band should be loosed, and he would that Ammon should take one of his daughters to wife. But Ammon said unto him, Nay, but I will be thy servant. Therefore Ammon became the servant to King Lamoni. And it came to pass that he was set among other servants to watch the flocks of Lamoni, according to the custom of the Lamanites. And after he had been in the service of the king three days, as he was with the Lamanitish servants, going forth with their flocks to the place of water, which was called the water of Sebus, and all the Lamanites drive their flocks hither, that they may have water. Therefore, as Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to his place of water, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites, who had been with their flocks to water, stood and scattered the flocks of Ammon and the servants of the king, and they scattered them insomuch that they fled many ways. Now the servants of the king began to murmur, saying, Now the king will slay us, as he has our brethren, because their flocks were scattered by the wickedness of these men. And they began to weep exceedingly, saying, Behold, our flocks are scattered already. Now they wept because of the fear of being slain. Now when Ammon saw this, his heart was swollen within him with joy, for said he, I will show forth my power unto these my fellow servants, or the power which is in me in restoring these flocks unto the king, that I may win the hearts of these my fellow servants, that I may lead them to believe in my words. And now these were the thoughts of Ammon, when he saw the afflictions of those whom he termed to be his brethren. And it came to pass that he flattered them by his words, saying, My brethren, be of good cheer, let us go in search of the flocks, and we will gather them together, and bring them back to the place of water, and thus we will preserve the flocks under the king, and he will not slay us. And it came to pass that they went in search of the flocks, and they did follow Ammon, And they rushed forth with much swiftness, and did head the flocks of the king, and did gather them together again to the place of water. And those men again stood to scatter their flocks, but Ammon said unto his brethren, Encircle the flocks round about, that they flee not. And I go and contend with these men who do scatter our flocks. Therefore they did as Ammon commanded them, and he went forth and stood to contend with those who stood by the waters of Sebus, and they were in number not few. Therefore they did not fear Ammon, for they supposed that one of their men could slay him according to their pleasure. For they knew not that the Lord had promised Mosiah that he would deliver his sons out of their hands. Neither did they know anything concerning the Lord. Therefore they delighted in the destruction of their brethren, and for this cause they stood to scatter the flocks of the king. But Ammon stood forth and began to cast stones at them with his sling. 
yea with mighty power did he sling stones amongst them and thus he slew a certain number of them insomuch that they began to be astonished at his power nevertheless they were angry because of the slain of their brethren and they were determined that he should fall therefore seeing that they could not hit him with their stones they came forth with their clubs to slay him but behold every man that lifted his club to smite ammon he smote off their arms with his sword for he did withstand their blows by smiting their arms with the edge of his sword insomuch that they began to be astonished and began to flee before him yea and they were not few in number and he caused them to flee by the strength of his arm now six of them had fallen by the sling but he slew none save it were their leader with his sword and he smote off as many of their arms as were lifted against him and they were not a few and when he had driven them afar off he returned and they watered their flocks and returned them to the pasture of the king and then went in unto the king bearing the arms which had been smitten off by the sword of ammon of those who sought to slay him and they were carried in unto the king for a testimony of the things which they had done end of alma chapters 14 through 17 recording by kevin davidson www.blogordie.com Alma chapters 18 through 20 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma chapters 18 through 20. Alma chapter 18. And it came to pass that King Lamoni caused that his servants should stand forth and testify to all the things which they had seen concerning the matter. And when they had all testified to the things which they had seen, and he had learned of the faithfulness of Ammon in preserving his flocks, and also of his great power in contending against those who sought to slay him, he was astonished exceedingly, and said, Surely this is more than a man. Behold, is not this the great spirit who doth send such great punishments upon this people because of their murders? And they answered the king and said, Whether he be the great spirit or a man we know not, but this much we do know, that he cannot be slain by the enemies of the king, neither can they scatter the king's flocks when he is with us because of his expertness and great strength. Therefore we know that he is a friend to the king. And now, O king, we do not believe that a man has such great power, for we know that he cannot be slain. And now when the king heard these words, he said unto them, Now I know that it is the great spirit, and he has come down at this time to preserve your lives, that I might not slay you as I did your brethren. Now this is the great spirit of whom our fathers have spoken. Now this was the tradition of Lamoni, which he had received from his father, that there was a great spirit notwithstanding they believed in a great spirit they supposed that whatsoever they did was right nevertheless lamoni began to fear exceedingly with fear lest he had done wrong in slaying his servants for he had slain many of them because their brethren had scattered their flocks at the place of water and thus because they had had their flocks scattered they were slain now it was the practice of these lamanites to stand by the waters of Sebus to scatter the flocks of the people that thereby they might drive away many that were scattered into their own land it being a practice of plunder among them and it came to pass that king lamoni inquired of his servants saying where is this man that has such great power and they said unto him behold he is feeding thy horses now the king had commanded his servants previous to the time of the watering of their flocks that they should prepare his horses and chariots and conduct him forth to the land of nephi for there had been a great feast appointed at the land of nephi by the father of lamoni who was king over all the land now when king lamoni heard that ammon was preparing his horses and his chariots he was more astonished because of the faithfulness of ammon saying surely there has not been any servant among all my servants that has been so faithful as this man for even he doth remember all my commandments to execute them. 
now I surely know that this is the great spirit, and I would desire him that he come in unto me, but I durst not. And it came to pass that when Ammon had made ready the horses and the chariots for the king and his servants, he went in unto the king, and he saw that the countenance of the king was changed, therefore he was about to return out of his presence. And one of the king's servants said unto him, Rabbana, which is being interpreted powerful or great king, considering their kings to be powerful. And thus he said unto him, Rabbana, the king desireth thee to stay. Therefore Ammon turned himself unto the king, and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do for thee, O king? And the king answered him not for the space of an hour, according to their time, for he knew not what he should say unto him. And it came to pass that Ammon said unto him again, what desirest thou of me? But the king answered him not. And it came to pass that Ammon being filled with the Spirit of God, therefore he perceived the thoughts of the king. And he said unto him, Is it because thou hast heard that I defended thy servants and thy flocks, and slew seven of their brethren with the sling, and with the sword, and smote off the arms of the others, in order to defend thy flocks and thy servants? Behold, is it this that causeth thy marvellings? I say unto you, What is it that thy marvellings are so great? Behold, I am a man, and am thy servant. Therefore whatsoever thou desirest, which is right, that will I do. Now when the king had heard these words, he marveled again, for he beheld that Ammon could discern his thoughts. But notwithstanding this, king Lamoni did open his mouth, and said unto him, Who art thou? Art thou that great spirit who knows all things? Ammon answered, and said unto him, I am not. And the king said, How knowest thou the thoughts of my heart? Thou mayest speak boldly, and tell me concerning these things. And also tell me by what power ye slew, and smote off the arms of my brethren, that scattered my flocks. And now if thou wilt tell me concerning these things, whatsoever thou desirest I will give unto thee. And if it were needed, I would guard thee with my armies. But I know that thou art more powerful than all they. Nevertheless, whatsoever thou desirest of me, I will grant it unto thee. Now Ammon, being wise, yet harmless, he said unto Lamoni, Wilt thou hearken unto my words, if I tell thee by what power I do these things? And this is the thing that I desire of thee. And the king answered him, and said, Yea, I will believe all thy words. And thus he was caught with guile. And Ammon began to speak unto him with boldness, and said unto him, Believest thou that there is a God? And he answered and said unto him, I do not know what that meaneth. And then Ammon said, Believest thou that there is a great spirit? And he said, Yea. And Ammon said, This is God. And Ammon said unto him again, Believest thou that this great spirit, who is God, created all things which are in heaven and in the earth? And he said, Yea, I believe that he created all things which are in the earth, but I do not know the heavens. And Ammon said unto him, The heavens is a place where God dwells with all his holy angels. And King Lamoni said, Is it above the earth? And Ammon said, Yea, and he looketh down upon all the children of men, and he knows all the thoughts and intents of the heart. For by his hand were they all created from the beginning. And King Lamoni said, I believe all these things which thou hast spoken. Art thou sent from God? Ammon said unto him, I am a man, and man in the beginning was created after the image of God. And I am called by his Holy Spirit to teach these things unto this people, that they may be brought to a knowledge of that which is just and true. And a portion of that Spirit dwelleth in me, which giveth me knowledge and also power according to my faith and desires which are in God. Now when Ammon had said these words, he began at the creation of the world, and also the creation of Adam, and told him all the things concerning the fall of man, and rehearsed and laid before him the records and the holy scriptures of the people, which had been spoken by the prophets, even down to the time that their father Lehi left Jerusalem. For he also rehearsed unto them, for it was unto the king and to his servants, all the journeyings of their fathers in the wilderness, and all their sufferings with hunger and thirst, and their travail, and so forth. 
and he also rehearsed unto them concerning the rebellions of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael, yea, all their rebellions did he relate unto them, and he expounded unto them all the records and scriptures, from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem down to the present time. But this is not all, for he expounded unto them the plan of redemption, which was prepared from the foundation of the world, and he also made known unto them concerning the coming of Christ, and all the works of the Lord did he make known unto them. And it came to pass that after he had said all these things, and expounded them to the king, that the king believed all his words. And he began to cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, have mercy, according to thy abundant mercy which thou hast had upon the people of Nephi, have upon me and my people. And now when he had said this, he fell unto the earth as if he were dead. And it came to pass that his servants took him and carried him in unto his wife, and laid him upon a bed, and he lay as if he were dead for the space of two days and two nights, and his wife and his sons and his daughters mourned over him after the manner of the Lamanites, greatly lamenting his loss. Alma chapter 19 And it came to pass that after two days and two nights they were about to take his body and lay it in a sepulchre, which they had made for the purpose of burying their dead, now the queen, having heard of the fame of Ammon, therefore she sent and desired that he should come in unto her. And it came to pass that Ammon did as he was commanded, and went in unto the queen, and desired to know what she would that he should do. And she said unto him, The servants of my husband have made it known unto me that thou art a prophet of a holy God, and that thou hast power to do many mighty works in his name. Therefore, if this be the case, I would that ye should go in and see my husband, for he has been laid upon his bed for the space of two days and two nights. And some say that he is not dead, but others say that he is dead, and that he stinketh, and that he ought to be placed in the sepulchre. But as for myself, to me he doth not stink. Now this was what Ammon desired, for he knew that King Lamoni was under the power of God, he knew that the dark veil of unbelief was being cast away from his mind, and the light which did light up his mind, which was the light of the glory of God, which was a marvelous light of his goodness, yea, this light had infused such joy into his soul, the cloud of darkness having been dispelled, and that the light of everlasting life was lit up in his soul, yea, he knew that this had overcome his natural frame, and he was carried away in God. Therefore what the queen desired of him was his only desire. Therefore he went in to see the king according as the queen had desired him. And he saw the king, and he knew that he was not dead. And he said unto the queen, He is not dead, but he sleepeth in God, and on the morrow he shall rise again. Therefore bury him not. And Ammon said unto her, Believest thou this? And she said unto him, I have had no witness save thy word, and the word of our servants. Nevertheless, I believe that it shall be according as thou hast said. And Ammon said unto her, Blessed art thou because of thy exceeding faith. I say unto thee, woman, there has not been such great faith among all the people of the Nephites. And it came to pass that she watched over the bed of her husband from that time even until that time on the morrow which Ammon had appointed that he should rise. And it came to pass that he arose, according to the words of Ammon. And as he arose, he stretched forth his hand unto the woman, and said, Blessed be the name of God, and blessed art thou. For as sure as thou livest, behold, I have seen my Redeemer. And he shall come forth, and be born of a woman, and he shall redeem all mankind who believe on his name. Now when he had said these words, his heart was swollen within him, and he sunk again with joy. And the queen also sunk down, being overpowered by the Spirit. Now Ammon, seeing the Spirit of the Lord poured out according to his prayers upon the Lamanites, his brethren, who had been the cause of so much mourning among the Nephites, or among all the people of God, because of their iniquities and their traditions, he fell upon his knees and began to pour out his soul in prayer and thanksgiving to God for what he had done for his brethren. And he was also overpowered with joy and thus they all three had sunk to the earth. Now when the servants of the king had seen that they had fallen, 
they also began to cry unto God, for the fear of the Lord had come upon them also. For it was they who had stood before the king, and testified unto him concerning the great power of Ammon. And it came to pass that they did call on the name of the Lord in their might, even until they had all fallen to the earth, save it were one of the Lamanitish women, whose name was Abish, she having been converted unto the Lord for many years on account of a remarkable vision of her father. Thus having been converted to the Lord, and never having made it known, therefore when she saw that all the servants of Lamoni had fallen to the earth, and also her mistress the queen and the king, and Ammon lay prostrate upon the earth, she knew that it was the power of God, and supposing that this opportunity, by making known unto the people what had happened among them, that by beholding this scene it would cause them to believe in the power of God, therefore she ran forth from house to house, making it known unto the people. And they began to assemble themselves together unto the house of the king, and there came a multitude, and to their astonishment they beheld the king, and the queen, and their servants prostrate upon the earth, and they all lay there as though they were dead, and they also saw Ammon, and behold, he was a Nephite. And now the people began to murmur among themselves, some saying that it was a great evil that had come upon them, or upon the king and his house, because he had suffered that the Nephite should remain in the land. But others rebuked them, saying, The king hath brought this evil upon his house, because he slew his servants, who had had their flocks scattered at the waters of Sebus. And they were also rebuked by those men who had stood at the waters of Sebus and scattered the flocks which belonged to the king. For they were angry with Ammon, because of the number which he had slain of their brethren at the waters of Sebus, while defending the flocks of the king. Now one of them, whose brother had been slain with the sword of Ammon, being exceedingly angry with Ammon, drew his sword, and went forth that he might let it fall upon Ammon to slay him, and as he lifted the sword to smite him, behold, he fell dead. Now we see that Ammon could not be slain, for the Lord had said unto Mosiah his father, I will spare him, and it shall be unto him according to thy faith. Therefore Mosiah trusted him unto the Lord. And it came to pass that when the multitude beheld that the man had fallen dead, who lifted the sword to slay Ammon, fear came upon them all, and they durst not put forth their hands to touch him or any of those who had fallen. And they began to marvel again among themselves, what could be the cause of this great power? or what all these things could mean. And it came to pass that there were many among them who said that Ammon was the great spirit, and others said he was sent by the great spirit. But others rebuked them all, saying that he was a monster who had been sent from the Nephites to torment them. And there were some who said that Ammon was sent by the great spirit to afflict them because of their iniquities, and that it was the great spirit that had always attended the Nephites, who had ever delivered them out of their hands. And they said that it was this great spirit who had destroyed so many of their brethren, the Lamanites. And thus the contention began to be exceedingly sharp among them. And while they were thus contending, the woman servant, who had caused the multitude to be gathered together, came. And when she saw the contention which was among the multitude, she was exceedingly sorrowful, even unto tears. And it came to pass that she went and took the queen by the hand, that perhaps she might raise her from the ground. And as soon as she touched her hand, she arose and stood upon her feet, and cried with a loud voice, saying, O blessed Jesus, who has saved me from an awful hell! O blessed God, have mercy on this people! And when she had said this, she clasped her hands, being filled with joy, speaking many words which were not understood. And when she had done this, she took the king, Lamoni, by the hand, and, behold, he arose and stood upon his feet. And he, immediately seeing the contention among his people, went forth and began to rebuke them, and to teach them the words which he had heard from the mouth of Ammon. And as many as heard his words believed, and were converted unto the Lord. But there were many among them who would not hear his words. Therefore they went their way. And it came to pass that when Ammon arose, he also administered unto them, and also did all the servants of Lamoni, and they did all declare unto the people the selfsame thing, that their hearts had been changed, that they had no more desire to do evil. And behold, many did declare unto the people that they had seen angels, and had conversed with them, 
and thus they had told them things of god and of his righteousness and it came to pass that there were many that did believe in their words and as many as did believe were baptized and they became a righteous people and they did establish a church among them and thus the work of the lord did commence among the lamanites thus the lord did begin to pour out his spirit upon them and we see that his arm is extended to all people who will repent and believe on his name alma chapter twenty and it came to pass that when they had established a church in that land that king lamoni desired that ammon should go with him to the land of nephi that he might show him unto his father and the voice of the lord came to ammon saying thou shalt not go up to the land of nephi for behold the king will seek thy life but thou shalt go to the land of madoni for behold thy brother aaron and also mulekai and amma are in prison now it came to pass that when ammon had heard this he said unto lamoni behold my brother and brethren are in prison at madoni and i go that i may deliver them now lamoni said unto ammon i know in the strength of the lord that thou canst do all things but behold i will go with thee to the land of madoni for the king of the land of madoni whose name is antiomno is a friend unto me therefore i go to the land of madoni that i may flatter the king of the land and he will cast thy brethren out of prison now lamoni said unto him who told thee that thy brethren were in prison and ammon said unto him no one hath told me save it be god and he said unto me go and deliver thy brethren for they are in prison in the land of madoni now when lamoni had heard this he caused that his servants should make ready his horses and his chariots and he said to ammon come i will go with thee down to the land of madoni and there i will plead with the king that he will cast thy brethren out of prison and it came to pass that as ammon and lamoni were journeying thither they met the father of lamoni who was king over all the land and behold the father of lamoni said unto him why did ye not come to the feast on that great day when i made a feast unto my sons and unto my people and he also said whither art thou going with this nephite who is one of the children of a liar and it came to pass that lamoni rehearsed unto him whither he was going for he feared to offend him and he also told him all the cause of his tarrying in his own kingdom that he did not go unto his father to the feast which he had prepared and now when lamoni had rehearsed unto him all these things behold to his astonishment his father was angry with him and said lamoni thou art going to deliver these nephites who are sons of a liar behold he robbed our fathers and now his children are also come amongst us that they may by their cunning and their lyings deceive us that they again may rob us of our property now the father of lamoni commanded him that he should slay ammon with the sword and he also commanded him that he should not go to the land of madoni but that he should return with him to the land of ishmael but lamoni said unto him i will not slay ammon neither will i return to the land of ishmael but i go to the land of madoni that i may release the brethren of ammon for i know that they are just men and holy prophets of the true god now when his father had heard these words he was angry with him and he drew his sword that he might smite him to the earth but ammon stood forth and said unto him behold thou shalt not slay thy son nevertheless it were better that he should fall than thee for behold he has repented of his sins but if thou shouldst fall at this time in thine anger thy soul could not be saved and again it is expedient that thou shouldst forbear for if thou shouldst slay thy son he being an innocent man his blood would cry from the ground to the lord his god for vengeance to come upon thee and perhaps thou wouldst lose thy soul now when ammon had said these words unto him he answered him saying i know that if i should slay my son that i should shed innocent blood for it is thou that hast thought to destroy him and he stretched forth his hand to slay ammon but ammon withstood his blows and also smote his arm that he could not use it now when the king saw that ammon could slay him he began to plead with ammon that he would spare his life but ammon raised his sword and said unto him behold i will smite thee except thou wilt grant unto me that my brethren may be cast out of prison 
Now the king, fearing he should lose his life, said, If thou wilt spare me, I will grant unto thee whatsoever thou wilt ask, even to half of the kingdom. Now when Ammon saw that he had wrought upon the old king according to his desire, he said unto him, If thou wilt grant that my brethren may be cast out of prison, and also that Lamoni may retain his kingdom, and that ye be not displeased with him, but grant that he may do according to his own desires in whatsoever thing he thinketh, then will I spare thee, otherwise I will smite thee to the earth. Now when Ammon had said these words, the king began to rejoice because of his life. And when he saw that Ammon had no desire to destroy him, and when he also saw the great love he had for his son Lamoni, he was astonished exceedingly, and said, Because this is all that thou hast desired, that I would release thy brethren, and suffer that my son Lamoni should retain his kingdom, Behold, I will grant unto you that my son may retain his kingdom from this time and for ever, and I will govern him no more. And I will also grant unto thee that thy brethren may be cast out of prison, and thou and thy brethren may come unto me in my kingdom, for I shall greatly desire to see thee. For the king was greatly astonished at the words which he had spoken, and also at the words which had been spoken by his son Lamoni. Therefore he was desirous to learn them. And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni proceeded on their journey towards the land of Madoni, and Lamoni found favor in the eyes of the king of the land. Therefore the brethren of Ammon were brought forth out of prison. And when Ammon did meet them, he was exceedingly sorrowful. For behold, they were naked, and their skins were worn exceedingly because of being bound with strong cords. And they also had suffered hunger, thirst, and all kinds of afflictions. Nevertheless, they were patient in all their sufferings. And as it happened, it was their lot to have fallen into the hands of a more hardened and a more stiff-necked people. Therefore they would not hearken unto their words. And they had cast them out, and had smitten them, and had driven them from house to house, and from place to place, even until they had arrived in the land of Madoni. And there they were taken and cast into prison, and bound with strong cords, and kept in prison for many days, and were delivered by Lamoni and Ammon. End of Alma, chapters 18 through 20, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 21 through 24 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 21 through 24. Alma, chapter 21. Now when Ammon and his brethren separated themselves in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, behold, Aaron took his journey towards the land which was called by the Lamanites Jerusalem, calling it after the land of their father's nativity. And it was a way joining the borders of Mormon. Now the Lamanites and the Amalekites and the people of Amulon had built a great city, which was called Jerusalem. Now the Lamanites of themselves were sufficiently hardened, but the Amalekites and the Amulonites were still harder. Therefore they did cause the Lamanites that they should harden their hearts, that they should wax strong in wickedness and their abominations. And it came to pass that Aaron came to the city of Jerusalem, and first began to preach to the Amalekites, and he began to preach to them in their synagogues, for they had built synagogues after the order of the Nehors. For many of the Amalekites and the Amulonites were after the order of the Nehors. Therefore as Aaron entered into one of their synagogues to preach unto the people, and as he was speaking unto them, behold, there arose an Amalekite, and began to contend with him, saying, What is that thou hast testified? Hast thou seen an angel? Why do not angels appear unto us? Behold, are not this people as good as thy people? Thou also sayest, except we repent, we shall perish. How knowest thou the thoughts and intents of our hearts? How knowest thou that we have cause to repent? How knowest thou that we are not a righteous people? Behold, we have built sanctuaries, and we do assemble ourselves together to worship God. We do believe that God will save all men. Now Aaron said unto him, Believest thou that the Son of God shall come to redeem mankind from their sins? 
And the man said unto him, We do not believe that thou knowest any such thing. We do not believe in these foolish traditions. We do not believe that thou knowest of things to come. Neither do we believe that thy fathers, and also that our fathers, did know concerning the things which they spake, of that which is to come. Now Aaron began to open the scriptures unto them concerning the coming of Christ, and also concerning the resurrection of the dead, and that there could be no redemption for mankind, save it were through the death and sufferings of Christ, and the atonement of his blood. And it came to pass, as he began to expound these things unto them, they were angry with him, and began to mock him, and they would not hear the words which he spake. Therefore, when he saw that they would not hear his words, he departed out of their synagogue, and came over to a village which was called Anianti. And there he found Mulekai preaching the word unto them, and also Amma and his brethren. And they contended with many about the word. And it came to pass that they saw that the people would harden their hearts. Therefore they departed, and came over into the land of Madoni. And they did preach the word unto many, and few believed on the words which they taught. Nevertheless Aaron and a certain number of his brethren were taken and cast into prison, and the remainder of them fled out of the land of Madoni unto the regions round about. And those who were cast into prison suffered many things, and they were delivered by the hand of Lamoni and Ammon, and they were fed and clothed. And they went forth again to declare the word, and thus they were delivered for the first time out of prison, and thus they had suffered. And they went forth whithersoever they were led by the Spirit of the Lord, preaching the word of God in every synagogue of the Amalekites, or in every assembly of the Lamanites where they could be admitted. And it came to pass that the Lord began to bless them, insomuch that they brought many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, they did convince many of their sins, and of the traditions of their fathers which were not correct. And it came to pass that Ammon and Lamoni returned from the land of Madoni to the land of Ishmael, which was the land of their inheritance. And King Lamoni would not suffer that Ammon should serve him, or be his servant. But he caused that there should be synagogues built in the land of Ishmael. And he caused that his people, or the people who were under his reign, should assemble themselves together. And he did rejoice over them, and he did teach them many things. And he did also declare unto them that they were a people who were under him, and that they were a free people, that they were free from the oppressions of the king his father for that his father had granted unto him that he might reign over the people who were in the land of Ishmael and in all the land round about. And he also declared unto them that they might have the liberty of worshipping the Lord their God according to their desires, in whatsoever place they were in, if it were in the land which was under the reign of King Lamoni. And Ammon did preach unto the people of King Lamoni, and it came to pass that he did teach them all things concerning things pertaining to righteousness, and he did exhort them daily with all diligence, and they gave heed unto his word, and they were zealous for keeping the commandments of God. Alma chapter 22 Now, as Ammon was thus teaching the people of Lamoni continually, we will return to the account of Aaron and his brethren. For after he returned from the land of Madoni, he was led by the Spirit to the land of Nephi, even to the house of the king which was over all the land, save it were the land of Ishmael and he was the father of Lamoni. And it came to pass that he went in unto him into the king's palace with his brethren, and bowed himself before the king, and said unto him, Behold, O king, we are the brethren of Ammon, whom thou hast delivered out of prison. And now, O king, if thou wilt spare our lives, we will be thy servants. And the king said unto them, Arise, for I will grant unto you your lives, and I will not suffer that ye shall be my servants but I will insist that ye shall administer unto me. For I have been somewhat troubled in mind because of the generosity and the greatness of the words of thy brother Ammon, and I desire to know the cause why he has not come up out of Madoni with thee. And Aaron said unto the king, Behold, the Spirit of the Lord has called him another way. He has gone to the land of Ishmael to teach the people of Lamoni. Now the king said unto them, What is this that ye have said concerning the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, this is the thing which doth trouble me. And also what is this that Ammon said? If ye will repent, ye shall be saved. And if ye will not repent, ye shall be cast off at the last day. And Aaron answered him, and said unto him, Believest thou that there is a God? And the king said, I know that the Amalekites say that there is a God, and I have granted unto them that they should build sanctuaries, 
that they may assemble themselves together to worship him. And if now thou sayest there is a God, behold, I will believe. And now when Aaron heard this, his heart began to rejoice. And he said, Behold, assuredly, as thou livest, O king, there is a God. And the king said, Is God that great spirit that brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem? And Aaron said unto him, Yea, he is that great spirit, and he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believest thou this? And he said, Yea, I believe that the great spirit created all things. And I desire that ye should tell me concerning all these things, and I will believe thy words. And it came to pass that when Aaron saw that the king would believe his words, he began from the creation of Adam, reading the scriptures unto the king, how God created man after his own image, and that God gave him commandments, and that because of transgression man had fallen. And Aaron did expound unto him the scriptures from the creation of Adam, laying the fall of man before him, and their carnal state, and also the plan of redemption, which was prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ, for all whosoever would believe on his name. And since man had fallen, he could not merit anything of himself, but the sufferings and death of Christ atone for their sins, through faith and repentance, and so forth, and that he breaketh the bands of death, that the grave shall have no victory, and that the sting of death should be swallowed up in the hopes of glory. And Aaron did expound all these things unto the king. And it came to pass that after Aaron had expounded these things unto him, the king said, What shall I do that I may have this eternal life of which thou hast spoken? Yea, what shall I do that I may be born of God, having this wicked spirit rooted out of my breast, and receive his spirit, that I may be filled with joy? that I may not be cast off at the last day. Behold, said he, I will give up all that I possess, yea, I will forsake my kingdom, that I may receive this great joy. But Aaron said unto him, If thou desirest this thing, if thou wilt bow down before God, yea, if thou wilt repent of all thy sins, and wilt bow down before God and call on his name in faith, believing that ye shall receive, then shall thou receive the hope which thou desirest. And it came to pass that when Aaron had said these words, the king did bow down before the Lord upon his knees, yea, even he did prostrate himself upon the earth, and cried mightily, saying, O God, Aaron hath told me that there is a God, and if there is a God, and if thou art God, wilt thou make thyself known unto me? And I will give away all my sins to know thee and that I may be raised from the dead, and be saved at the last day. And now when the king had said these words, he was struck as if he were dead. And it came to pass that his servants ran and told the queen all that had happened unto the king, and she came in unto the king, and when she saw him lay as if he were dead, and also Aaron and his brethren standing as though they had been the cause of his fall, she was angry with them, and commanded that her servants, or the servants of the king, should take them and slay them. Now the servants had seen the cause of the king's fall, therefore they durst not lay their hands on Aaron and his brethren. And they pled with the queen, saying, Why commandest thou that we should slay these men, when, behold, one of them is mightier than us all, and therefore we shall fall before them? Now when the queen saw the fear of the servants, she also began to fear exceedingly, lest there should some evil come upon her. And she commanded her servants that they should go and call the people, that they might slay Aaron and his brethren. Now when Aaron saw the determination of the queen, he also knowing the hardness of the hearts of the people, feared lest that a multitude should assemble themselves together, and there should be a great contention and disturbance among them. Therefore he put forth his hand, and raised the king from the earth, and said unto him, Stand. And he stood upon his feet, receiving his strength. Now this was done in the presence of the queen and many of the servants, and when they saw it, they greatly marveled, and began to fear. And the king stood forth, and began to minister unto them. And he did minister unto them, insomuch that his whole household were converted unto the Lord, now there was a multitude gathered together because of the commandment of the queen, 
and there began to be great murmurings among them because of Aaron and his brethren. But the king stood forth among them and administered unto them, and they were pacified towards Aaron and those who were with him. And it came to pass that when the king saw that the people were pacified, he caused that Aaron and his brethren should stand forth in the midst of the multitude, and that they should preach the word unto them. And it came to pass that the king sent a proclamation throughout all the land, amongst all his people who were in all his land, who were in all the regions round about, which was bordering even to the sea, on the east and on the west, and which was divided from the land of Zarahemla by a narrow strip of wilderness, which ran from the sea east even to the sea west, and round about on the borders of the seashore, and the borders of the wilderness, which was on the north by the land of Zarahemla, through the borders of Manti, by the head of the river Sidon, running from the east towards the west, and thus were the Lamanites and the Nephites divided. Now the more idle part of the Lamanites lived in the wilderness, and dwelt in tents, and they were spread through the wilderness on the west, in the land of Nephi, yea, and also on the west of the land of Zarahemla, in the borders by the seashore, and on the west in the land of Nephi, in the place of their father's first inheritance, and thus bordering along by the seashore. And also there were many Lamanites on the east by the seashore, whither the Nephites had driven them. And thus the Nephites were nearly surrounded by the Lamanites. Nevertheless, the Nephites had taken possession of all the northern parts of the land bordering on the wilderness, at the head of the river Sidon, from the east to the west, round about on the wilderness side, on the north, even until they came to the land which they called Bountiful. And it bordered upon the land which they called Desolation, it being so far northward that it came into the land which had been peopled and been destroyed, of whose bones we have spoken, which was discovered by the people of Zarahemla, it being the place of their first landing. And they came from there up into the south wilderness, thus the land on the northward was called Desolation, and the land on the southward was called Bountiful it being the wilderness which is filled with all manner of wild animals of every kind, a part of which had come from the land northward for food. And now it was only the distance of a day and a half's journey for a Nephite on the line bountiful in the land desolation from the east to the west sea. And thus the land of Nephi and the land of Zarahemla were nearly surrounded by water, there being a small neck of land between the land northward and the land southward. And it came to pass that the Nephites had inhabited the land bountiful, even from the east unto the west sea, and thus the Nephites in their wisdom, with their guards and their armies, had hemmed in the Lamanites on the south, that thereby they should have no more possession on the north, that they might not overrun the land northward. Therefore the Lamanites could have no more possessions, only in the land of Nephi and the wilderness round about. Now this was wisdom in the Nephites, as the Lamanites were an enemy to them, they would not suffer their afflictions on every hand, and also that they might have a country whither they might flee according to their desires. And now I, after having said this, return again to the account of Ammon, and Aaron, Omner, and Himni, and their brethren. Alma chapter 23 Behold, now it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites sent a proclamation among all his people, that they should not lay their hands on Ammon, or Aaron, or Omnor, or Himni, nor either of their brethren, who should go forth preaching the word of God, in whatsoever place they should be, in any part of their land. Yea, he sent a decree among them, that they should not lay their hands on them, to bind them, or to cast them into prison. Neither should they spit upon them, nor smite them, nor cast them out of their synagogues, nor scourge them, neither should they cast stones at them, but that they should have free access to their houses, and also their temples and their sanctuaries. And thus they might go forth and preach the word according to their desires. For the king had been converted unto the Lord, and all his household. Therefore he sent his proclamation throughout the land unto his people, that the word of God might have no obstruction, but that it might go forth throughout all the land, that his people might be convinced concerning the wicked traditions of their fathers, and that they might be convinced that they were all brethren, and that they ought not to murder, nor to plunder, nor to steal, nor to commit adultery, nor to commit any manner of wickedness. And now it came to pass that when the king had sent forth this proclamation, that Aaron and his brethren went forth from city to city, and from one house of worship to another, 
establishing churches and consecrating priests and teachers throughout the land among the Lamanites, to preach and to teach the word of God among them. And thus they began to have great success, and thousands were brought to the knowledge of the Lord. Yea, thousands were brought to believe in the traditions of the Nephites, and they were taught the records and prophecies which were handed down even to the present time. And as sure as the Lord liveth, so sure as many as believed, or as many as were brought to the knowledge of the truth, through the preaching of Ammon and his brethren, according to the spirit of revelation and of prophecy, and the power of God working miracles in them, yea, I say unto you, as the Lord liveth, as many of the Lamanites as believed in their preaching, and were converted unto the Lord, never did fall away. For they became a righteous people. They did lay down the weapons of their rebellion, that they did not fight against God any more, neither against any of their brethren. Now these are they who were converted unto the Lord, the people of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Ishmael, and also of the people of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Madoni, and also of the people of the Lamanites, who were in the city of Nephi, and also of the people of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Shilom, and who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the city of Lemuel, and in the city of Shimnalom. And these are the names of the cities of the Lamanites, which were converted unto the Lord. And these are they that laid down the weapons of their rebellion, yea, all their weapons of war. And they were all Lamanites. And the Amalekites were not converted, save only one. Neither were any of the Amulonites, but they did harden their hearts, and also the hearts of the Lamanites in that part of the land wheresoever they dwelt, yea, and all their villages and all their cities. Therefore we have named all the cities of the Lamanites in which they did repent, and come to the knowledge of the truth, and were converted. And now it came to pass that the king and those who were converted were desirous that they might have a name, that thereby they might be distinguished from their brethren. Therefore the king consulted with Aaron and many of their priests concerning the name that they should take upon them that they might be distinguished. And it came to pass that they called their names Anti-Nephi-Lehi's. And they were called by this name, and were no more called Lamanites. And they began to be a very industrious people. Yea, and they were friendly with the Nephites. Therefore they did open a correspondence with them, and the curse of God did no more follow them. Alma chapter 24 And it came to pass that the Amalekites and the Amulonites and the Lamanites, who were in the land of Amulon and also in the land of Helam, and who were in the land of Jerusalem, and in fine in all the land round about, who had not been converted and had not taken upon them the name of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, were stirred up by the Amalekites and by the Amulonites to anger against their brethren. And their hatred became exceedingly sore against them, even insomuch that they began to rebel against their king, insomuch that they would not that he should be their king. Therefore they took up arms against the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. Now the king conferred the kingdom upon his son, and he called his name Anti-Nephi-Lehi. And the king died in that selfsame year that the Lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of God. Now when Ammon and his brethren and all those who had come up with him saw the preparations of the Lamanites to destroy their brethren, they came forth to the land of Midian, and there Ammon met all his brethren, and from thence they came to the land of Ishmael, that they might hold a council with Lamoni and also with his brother Anti-Nephi-Lehi, what they should do to defend themselves against the Lamanites. Now there was not one soul among all the people who had been converted unto the Lord that would take up arms against their brethren. Nay, they would not even make any preparations for war. Yea, and also their king commanded them that they should not. Now these are the words which he said unto the people concerning the matter. I thank my God, my beloved people, that our great God has in goodness sent these our brethren, the Nephites, unto us, to preach unto us, and to convince us of the traditions of our wicked fathers. And behold, I thank my great God that he has given us a portion of his spirit to soften our hearts, that we have opened a correspondence with these brethren, the Nephites. And behold, I also thank my God that by opening this correspondence we have been convinced of our sins and of the many murders which we have committed. And I also thank my God, yea, my great God, that he hath granted unto us that we might repent of these things and also that he hath forgiven us of those our many sins and murders which we have committed, 
and taken away the guilt from our hearts through the merits of his Son. And now behold, my brethren, since it has been all that we could do, as we were the most lost of all mankind, to repent of all our sins, and the many murders which we have committed, and to get God to take them away from our hearts, for it was all we could do to repent sufficiently before God that he would take away our stain. Now, my best beloved brethren, since God hath taken away our stains, and our swords have become bright, then let us stain our swords no more with the blood of our brethren. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, let us retain our swords, that they may not be stained with the blood of our brethren, for perhaps if we should stain our swords again, they can no more be washed bright through the blood of the Son of our great God, which shall be shed for the atonement of our sins. And the great God has had mercy on us, and made these things known unto us, that we might not perish. Yea, and he has made these things known unto us beforehand, because he loveth our souls, as well as he loveth our children. Therefore, in his mercy he doth visit us by his angels, that the plan of salvation might be made known unto us as well as unto future generations. Oh, how merciful is our God! And now, behold, since it has been as much as we could do to get our stains taken away from us, and our swords are made bright, let us hide them away, that they may be kept bright, as a testimony to our God at the last day, or at the day that we shall be brought to stand before him to be judged, that we have not stained our swords in the blood of our brethren, since he imparted his word unto us, and has made us clean thereby. And now, my brethren, if our brethren seek to destroy us, behold, we will hide away our swords, yea, even we will bury them deep in the earth, that they may be kept bright, as a testimony that we have never used them at the last day. And if our brethren destroy us, behold, we shall go to our God, and shall be saved. And now it came to pass that when the king had made an end of these sayings, and all the people were assembled together, they took their swords, and all the weapons which were used for the shedding of man's blood, and they did bury them up deep in the earth. And this they did, it being in their view a testimony to God, and also to men, that they never would use weapons again for the shedding of man's blood. And this they did, vouching and covenanting with God, that rather than shed the blood of their brethren, they would give up their own lives, and rather than take away from a brother, they would give unto him, and rather than spend their days in idleness, they would labor abundantly with their hands. And thus we see that when these Lamanites were brought to believe and to know the truth, they were firm, and would suffer even unto death, rather than commit sin, and thus we see that they buried their weapons of peace, or they buried the weapons of war for peace. And it came to pass that their brethren, the Lamanites, made preparations for war, and came up to the land of Nephi for the purpose of destroying the king, and to place another in his stead, and also of destroying the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi out of the land. Now when the people saw that they were coming against them, they went out to meet them, and prostrated themselves before them to the earth, and began to call on the name of the Lord. And thus they were in this attitude, when the Lamanites began to fall upon them, and began to slay them with the sword. And thus, without meeting any resistance, they did slay a thousand and five of them. And we know that they are blessed, for they have gone to dwell with their God. Now when the Lamanites saw that their brethren would not flee from the sword, neither would they turn aside to the right hand nor to the left, but that they would lie down and perish, and praised God even in the very act of perishing under the sword, now when the Lamanites saw this, they did forbear from slaying them. And there were many whose hearts had swollen in them for those of their brethren who had fallen under the sword, for they repented of the things which they had done. And it came to pass that they threw down their weapons of war, and they would not take them again, for they were stung for the murders which they had committed. And they came down, even as their brethren, relying upon the mercies of those whose arms were lifted to slay them, and it came to pass that the people of God were joined that day by more than the number who had been slain. And those who had been slain were righteous people. Therefore we have no reason to doubt but what they were saved. And there was not a wicked man slain among them. But there were more than a thousand brought to the knowledge of the truth. Thus we see that the Lord worketh in many ways to the salvation of his people. 
Now the greatest number of those of the Lamanites who slew so many of their brethren were Amalekites and Amulonites, the greatest number of whom were after the order of the Nehors. Now among those who joined the people of the Lord, there were none who were Amalekites or Amulonites or who were of the order of Nehor, but they were actual descendants of Laman and Lemuel. And thus we can plainly discern that after a people have been once enlightened by the Spirit of God, and have had great knowledge of things pertaining to righteousness, and then have fallen away into sin and transgression, they become more hardened, and thus their state becomes worse than though they had never known these things. End of Alma, chapters 21 through 24. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com Alma, chapters 25 through 28 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 25 through 28. Alma, chapter 25. And behold, now it came to pass that those Lamanites were more angry because they had slain their brethren. Therefore they swore vengeance upon the Nephites, and they did no more attempt to slay the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi at that time. But they took their armies and went over into the borders of the land of Zarahemla, and fell upon the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, and destroyed them. And after that they had many battles with the Nephites, in the which they were driven and slain, and among the Lamanites who were slain were almost all the seed of Amulon and his brethren, who were the priests of Noah, and they were slain by the hands of the Nephites. And the remainder, having fled into the east wilderness, and having usurped the power and authority over the Lamanites, caused that many of the Lamanites should perish by fire because of their belief. For many of them, after having suffered much loss and so many afflictions, began to be stirred up in remembrance of the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached to them in their land. Therefore they began to disbelieve the traditions of their fathers, and to believe in the Lord, and that he gave great power unto the Nephites, and thus there were many of them converted in the wilderness. And it came to pass that those rulers who were the remnant of the children of Amulon caused that they should be put to death, yea, all those that believed in these things. Now this martyrdom caused that many of their brethren should be stirred up to anger, and there began to be contention in the wilderness, and the Lamanites began to hunt the seed of Amulon and his brethren, and began to slay them, and they fled into the east wilderness. And behold, they are hunted at this day by the Lamanites. Thus the words of Abinadi were brought to pass, which he said concerning the seed of the priests who caused that he should suffer death by fire. For he said unto them, what ye shall do unto me shall be a type of things to come. And now Abinadi was the first that suffered death by fire, because of his belief in God. Now this is what he meant, that many should suffer death by fire, according as he had suffered. And he said unto the priests of Noah that their seed should cause many to be put to death in the like manner as he was, and that they should be scattered abroad and slain, even as a sheep, having no shepherd, is driven, and slain by wild beasts. And now, behold, these words were verified, for they were driven by the Lamanites, and they were hunted, and they were smitten. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that they could not overpower the Nephites, they returned again to their own land, and many of them came over to dwell in the land of Ishmael and the land of Nephi, and did join themselves to the people of God, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. And they did also bury their weapons of war, according as their brethren had. And they began to be a righteous people. And they did walk in the ways of the Lord, and did observe to keep his commandments and his statutes. Yea, and they did keep the law of Moses, for it was expedient that they should keep the law of Moses as yet. For it was not all fulfilled. But, notwithstanding the law of Moses, they did look forward to the coming of Christ, considering that the law of Moses was a type of his coming, and believing that they must keep those outward performances until the time that he should be revealed unto them. Now they did not suppose that salvation came by the law of Moses, 
but the law of Moses did serve to strengthen their faith in Christ. And thus they did retain a hope through faith unto eternal salvation, relying upon the spirit of prophecy, which spake of those things to come. And now behold, Ammon, and Aaron, and Omner, and Himni, and their brethren did rejoice exceedingly for the success which they had had among the Lamanites, seeing that the Lord had granted unto them according to their prayers, and that he had also verified his word unto them in every particular. Alma chapter 26 And now these are the words of Ammon to his brethren, which say thus, My brothers and my brethren, behold, I say unto you, how great reason we have to rejoice, for could we have supposed when we started from the land of Zarahemla that God would have granted unto us such great blessings? And now I ask, what great blessings has he bestowed upon us? Can you tell? Behold, I answer for you. For our brethren, the Lamanites, were in darkness, yea, even in the darkest abyss. But behold, how many of them are brought to behold the marvelous light of God. And this is the blessing which hath been bestowed upon us that we have been made instruments in the hands of God to bring about this great work. Behold, thousands of them do rejoice, and have been brought into the fold of God. Behold, the field was ripe, and blessed are ye, for ye did thrust in the sickle, and did reap with your might. Yea, all the day long did ye labor, and behold the number of your sheaves, and they shall be gathered into the garners, that they are not wasted. Yea, they shall not be beaten down by the storm at the last day. Yea, neither shall they be harrowed up by the whirlwinds. But when the storm cometh, they shall be gathered together in their place, that the storm cannot penetrate to them. Yea, neither shall they be driven with fierce winds, whithersoever the enemy listeth to carry them. But behold, they are in the hands of the Lord of the harvest, and they are his. And he will raise them up at the last day. Blessed be the name of our God. Let us sing to his praise. Yea, let us give thanks to his holy name, for he doth work righteousness forever. For if we had not come up out of the land of Zarahemla, these our dearly beloved brethren, who have so dearly beloved us, would still have been racked with hatred against us. Yea, and they would also have been strangers to God. And it came to pass that when Ammon said these words, his brother Aaron rebuked him, saying, Ammon, I fear that thy joy doth carry thee away into boasting. But Ammon said unto him, I do not boast in my own strength, nor in my own wisdom. But behold, my joy is full. Yea, my heart is brim with joy, and I will rejoice in my God. Yea, I know that I am nothing. As to my strength, I am weak. Therefore I will not boast of myself, but I will boast of my God. For in his strength... I can do all things. Yea, behold, many mighty miracles we have wrought in this land, for which we will praise his name forever. Behold, how many thousands of our brethren has he loosed from the pains of hell, and they are brought to sing redeeming love, and this because of the power of his word which is in us. Therefore have we not great reason to rejoice? Yea, we have reason to praise him forever, for he is the Most High God and has loosed our brethren from the chains of hell. Yea, they were encircled about with everlasting darkness and destruction. But behold, he has brought them into his everlasting light, yea, into everlasting salvation, and they are encircled about with the matchless bounty of his love. Yea, and we have been instruments in his hands of doing this great and marvelous work. Therefore let us glory. Yea, we will glory in the Lord. Yea, we will rejoice, for our joy is full. Yea, we will praise our God forever. Behold, who can glory too much in the Lord? Yea, who can say too much of his great power, and of his mercy, and of his long suffering towards the children of men? Behold, I say unto you, I cannot say the smallest part which I feel. Who could have supposed that our God would have been so merciful? as to have snatched us from our awful, sinful, and polluted state. Behold, we went forth, even in wrath, with mighty threatenings to destroy his church. Oh, then, why did he not consign us to an awful destruction? Yea, why did he not let the sword of his justice fall upon us and doom us to eternal despair? Oh, my soul, almost as it were, fleeth at the thought. 
behold, he did not exercise his justice upon us, but in his great mercy hath brought us over that everlasting gulf of death and misery, even to the salvation of our souls. And now behold, my brethren, what natural man is there that knoweth these things? I say unto you, there is none that knoweth these things, save it be the penitent. Yea, he that repenteth, and exerciseth faith, and bringeth forth good works, and prayeth continually without ceasing. Unto such it is given to know the mysteries of God. Yea, unto such it shall be given to reveal things which never have been revealed. Yea, and it shall be given unto such to bring thousands of souls to repentance, even as it has been given unto us to bring these our brethren to repentance. Now do you remember, my brethren, that we said unto our brethren in the land of Zarahemla, We go up to the land of Nephi, to preach unto our brethren the Lamanites. And they laughed us to scorn. For they said unto us, Do ye suppose that ye can bring the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth? Do ye suppose that ye can convince the Lamanites of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers, as stiff-necked a people as they are, whose hearts delight in the shedding of blood, whose days have been spent in the grossest iniquity, whose ways have been the ways of a transgressor from the beginning? Now, my brethren, you remember that this was their language. And moreover they did say, Let us take up arms against them, that we destroy them and their iniquity out of the land, lest they overrun us and destroy us. But behold, my beloved brethren, we came into the wilderness not with the intent to destroy our brethren, but with the intent that perhaps we might save some few of their souls. Now when our hearts were depressed, and we were about to turn back, behold, the Lord comforted us, and said, Go amongst thy brethren the Lamanites, and bear with patience thine afflictions, and I will give unto you success. And now, behold, we have come, and been forth amongst them, and we have been patient in our sufferings, and we have suffered every privation. Yea, we have traveled from house to house, relying upon the mercies of the world, not upon the mercies of the world alone, but upon the mercies of God. And we have entered into their houses and taught them, and we have taught them in their streets. Yea, and we have taught them upon their hills, and we have also entered into their temples and their synagogues and taught them, and we have been cast out and mocked and spit upon and smote upon our cheeks, and we have been stoned, and taken and bound with strong cords and cast into prison, and through the power and wisdom of God we have been delivered again. And we have suffered all manner of afflictions, and all this that perhaps we might be the means of saving some soul. And we suppose that our joy would be full if perhaps we could be the means of saving some. But behold, we can look forth and see the fruits of our labors. And are they few? I say unto you, Nay, they are many. Yea, and we can witness of their sincerity, because of their love towards their brethren, and also towards us. For behold, they had rather sacrificed their lives than even to take the life of their enemy. And they have buried their weapons of war deep in the earth because of their love towards their brethren. And now, behold, I say unto you, has there been so great love in all the land? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, there has not, even among the Nephites. For behold, they would take up arms against their brethren. They would not suffer themselves to be slain. But behold, how many of these have laid down their lives. And we know that they have gone to their God because of their love and of their hatred to sin. Now have we not reason to rejoice? Yea, I say unto you, there never were men that had so great reason to rejoice as we, since the world began. Yea, and my joy is carried away even unto boasting in my God, for he has all power, all wisdom, and all understanding. He comprehendeth all things, and he is a merciful being, even unto salvation, to those who will repent and believe on his name. Now if this is boasting, even so will I boast. For this is my life, and my light, my joy, and my salvation, and my redemption from everlasting woe. Yea, blessed is the name of God, who has been mindful of this people, who are a branch of the tree of Israel, and has been lost from its body in a strange land. Yea, I say, blessed be the name of my God, who has been mindful of us, wanderers in a strange land. Now, my brethren, we see that God is mindful of every people, whatsoever land they may be in. Yea, he numbereth his people, and his bowels of mercy are over all the earth. 
now this is my joy and my great thanksgiving yea and i will give thanks unto my god forever amen alma chapter twenty seven now it came to pass that when those lamanites who had gone to war against the nephites had found after their many struggles to destroy them that it was in vain to seek their destruction they returned again to the land of nephi and it came to pass that the amalekites because of their loss were exceedingly angry and when they saw that they could not seek revenge from the nephites they began to stir up the people in anger against their brethren the people of anti nephi lehi therefore they began again to destroy them now this people again refused to take their arms and they suffered themselves to be slain according to the desires of their enemies now when ammon and his brethren saw this work of destruction among those whom they so dearly beloved and among those who had so dearly beloved them for they were treated as though they were angels sent from god to save them from everlasting destruction therefore when ammon and his brethren saw this great work of destruction they were moved with compassion and they said unto the king let us gather together this people of the lord and let us go down to the land of zarahemla to our brethren the nephites and flee out of the hands of our enemies that we be not destroyed but the king said unto them behold the nephites will destroy us because of the many murders and sins we have committed against them and ammon said i will go and inquire of the lord and if he say unto us go down unto our brethren will ye go and the king said unto him yea if the lord saith unto us go we will go down unto our brethren and we will be their slaves until we repair unto them the many murders and sins which we have committed against them but ammon said unto him it is against the law of our brethren which was established by my father that there should be any slaves among them therefore let us go down and rely upon the mercies of our brethren but the king said unto him inquire of the lord and if he saith unto us go we will go otherwise we will perish in the land and it came to pass that ammon went and inquired of the lord and the lord said unto him get this people out of this land that they perish not for satan has great hold on the hearts of the amalekites who do stir up the lamanites to anger against their brethren to slay them therefore get thee out of this land and blessed are this people in this generation for i will preserve them and now it came to pass that ammon went and told the king all the words which the lord had said unto him and they gathered together all their people yea all the people of the lord and did gather together all their flocks and herds and departed out of the land and came into the wilderness which divided the land of nephi from the land of zarahemla and came over near the borders of the land and it came to pass that ammon said unto them behold i and my brethren will go forth into the land of zarahemla and ye shall remain here until we return and we will try the hearts of our brethren whether they will that we shall come into their land and it came to pass that as ammon was going forth into the land that he and his brethren met alma over in the place of which has been spoken and behold this was a joyful meeting now the joy of ammon was so great even that he was full yea he was swallowed up in the joy of his god even to the exhausting of his strength and he fell again to the earth now was not this exceeding joy behold this is joy which none receiveth save it be the truly penitent and humble seeker of happiness now the joy of alma in meeting his brethren was truly great and also the joy of aaron of omner and himni but behold their joy was not that to exceed their strength and now it came to pass that alma conducted his brethren back to the land of zarahemla even to his own house and they went and told the chief judge all the things that had happened unto them in the land of nephi among their brethren the lamanites and it came to pass that the chief judge sent a proclamation throughout all the land desiring the voice of the people concerning the admitting their brethren who were the people of anti nephi lehi and it came to pass that the voice of the people came saying behold we will give up the land of jershon which is on the east by the sea which joins the land bountiful which is on the south of the land bountiful and this land jershon is the land which we will give unto our brethren for an inheritance 
and behold, we will set our armies between the land Jershon and the land Nephi, that we may protect our brethren in the land Jershon. And this we do for our brethren, on account of their fear to take up arms against their brethren, lest they should commit sin. And this their great fear came because of their sore repentance which they had, on account of their many murders and their awful wickedness. And now behold, this will we do unto our brethren, that they may inherit the land Jershon, and we will guard them from their enemies with our armies, on condition that they will give us a portion of their substance to assist us, that we may maintain our armies. Now it came to pass that when Ammon had heard this, he returned to the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, and also Alma with him, into the wilderness where they had pitched their tents, and made known unto them all these things. And Alma also related unto them his conversion with Ammon and Aaron and his brethren, and it came to pass that it did cause great joy among them. And they went down into the land of Jershon, and took possession of the land of Jershon. And they were called by the Nephites the people of Ammon. Therefore they were distinguished by that name ever after. And they were among the people of Nephi, and also numbered among the people who were of the church of God. And they were also distinguished for their zeal towards God, and also towards men. For they were perfectly honest and upright in all things, and they were firm in the faith of Christ, even unto the end. And they did look upon shedding the blood of their brethren with the greatest abhorrence, and they never could be prevailed upon to take up arms against their brethren, and they never did look upon death with any degree of terror for their hope and views of Christ and the resurrection. Therefore death was swallowed up to them by the victory of Christ over it. Therefore they would suffer death in the most aggravating and distressing manner which could be inflicted by their brethren, before they would take the sword or scimitar to smite them. And thus they were a zealous and a beloved people, a highly favored people of the Lord. Alma chapter 28 and now it came to pass that after the people of Ammon were established in the land of Jershon, and a church also established in the land of Jershon, and the armies of the Nephites were set round about the land of Jershon, yea, in all the borders round about the land of Zarahemla, behold, the armies of the Lamanites had followed their brethren into the wilderness, and thus there was a tremendous battle. Yea, even such an one as never had been known among all the people in the land from the time Lehi left Jerusalem. Yea, and tens of thousands of the Lamanites were slain and scattered abroad. Yea, and also there was a tremendous slaughter among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, the Lamanites were driven and scattered, and the people of Nephi returned again to their land. And now this was a time that there was a great mourning and lamentation heard throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. Yea, the cry of widows mourning for their husbands, and also of fathers mourning for their sons, and the daughter for the brother. Yea, the brother for the father. And thus the cry of mourning was heard among all of them, mourning for their kindred who had been slain. And now surely this was a sorrowful day, yea, a time of solemnity, and a time of much fasting and prayer. And thus ended the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And this is the account of Ammon and his brethren, their journeyings in the land of Nephi, their sufferings in the land, their sorrows, and their afflictions, and their incomprehensible joy, and the reception and safety of the brethren in the land of Jershon. And now may the Lord, the Redeemer of all men, bless their souls forever. And this is the account of the wars and contentions among the Nephites, and also the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites. And the fifteenth year of the reign of the judges is ended. And from the first year to the fifteenth has brought to pass the destruction of many thousand lives. Yea, it has brought to pass an awful scene of bloodshed. And the bodies of many thousands are laid low in the earth, while the bodies of many thousands are moldering in heaps upon the face of the earth, Yea, and many thousands are mourning for the loss of their kindred, because they have reason to fear, according to the promises of the Lord, that they are consigned to a state of endless woe. While many thousands of others truly mourn for the loss of their kindred, yet they rejoice and exult in the hope, and even know, according to the promises of the Lord, that they are raised to dwell at the right hand of God in a state of never-ending happiness. 
and thus we see how great the inequality of man is because of sin and transgression and the power of the devil which comes by the cunning plans which he hath devised to ensnare the hearts of men and thus we see the great call of diligence of men to labor in the vineyards of the lord and thus we see the great reason of sorrow and also of rejoicing sorrow because of death and destruction among men and joy because of the light of christ unto life End of Alma chapters twenty five through twenty eight. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. The Book of Alma, chapters twenty nine through thirty two of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Corey Osborne. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 29 through 32. Chapter 29. Oh, that I were an angel and could have the wish of mine heart, that I might go forth and speak with the trump of God, with a voice to shake the earth and cry repentance unto every people yea i would declare unto every soul as with the voice of thunder repentance and the plan of redemption that they should repent and come unto our god that there might not be more sorrow upon all the face of the earth but behold i am a man and do sin in my wish for i ought to be content with the things which the lord hath allotted unto me i ought not to harrow up in my desires the firm decree of a just god for i know that he granteth unto men according to their desire whether it be unto death or unto life yea i know that he allotteth unto men yea decreeth unto them decrees which are unalterable according to their wills whether they be unto salvation or unto destruction yea and i know that good and evil hath come before all men he that knoweth not good from evil is blameless but he that knoweth good and evil to him it is given according to his desires whether he desireth good or evil life or death joy or remorse of conscience now seeing that i know these things why should i desire more than to perform the work to which i have been called why should i desire that i were an angel that i could speak unto all the ends of the earth for behold the lord doth grant unto all nations of their own nation and tongue to teach his word yea in wisdom all that he seeth fit that they should have Therefore we see that the Lord doth counsel in wisdom, according to that which is just and true. I know that which the Lord hath commanded me, and I glory in it. I do not glory of myself, but I glory in that which the Lord hath commanded me. Yea, and this is my glory, that perhaps I may be an instrument in the hands of God to bring some soul to repentance, and this is my joy. And behold, when I see many of my brethren truly penitent and coming to the Lord their God, then is my soul filled with joy. Then do I remember what the Lord has done for me, yea, even that he hath heard my prayer. Yea, then do I remember his merciful arm, which he extended towards me. Yea, and I also remember the captivity of my fathers. For I surely do know that the Lord did deliver them out of bondage, and by this did establish his church, yea the lord god the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob did deliver them out of bondage yea i have always remembered the captivity of my fathers and that same god who delivered them out of the hands of the egyptians did deliver them out of bondage yea and that same god did establish his church among them yea and that same god hath called me by a holy calling to preach the word unto this people and hath given me much success, in the which my joy is full. But I do not joy in my own success alone, but my joy is more full because of the success of my brethren, who have been up to the land of Nephi. Behold, they have labored exceedingly, and have brought forth much fruit, and how great shall be their reward! Now when I think of the success of these my brethren, my soul is carried away, even to the separation of it from the body, as it were, so great is my joy. And now may God grant unto these my brethren, that they may sit down in the kingdom of God. 
yea and also all those who are the fruit of their labors that they may go no more out but that they may praise him for ever and may god grant that it may be done according to my words even as i have spoken amen alma chapter thirty behold now it came to pass that after the people of ammon were established in the land of jershon yea and also after the lamanites were driven out of the land and their dead were buried by the people of the land now their dead were not numbered because of the greatness of their numbers neither were the dead of the nephites numbered but it came to pass after they had buried their dead and also after the days of fasting and mourning and prayer and it was in the sixteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi there began to be continual peace throughout all the land yea and the people did observe to keep the commandments of the lord and they were strict in observing the ordinances of god according to the law of moses for they were taught to keep the law of moses until it should be fulfilled and thus the people did have no disturbance in all the sixteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and it came to pass in the commencement of the seventeenth year of the reign of the judges there was continual peace but it came to pass in the latter end of the seventeenth year there came a man into the land of zarahemla and he was antichrist for he began to preach unto the people against the prophecies which had been spoken by the prophets concerning the coming of christ now there was no law against a man's belief for it was strictly contrary to the commands of god that there should be a law which should bring men on to unequal grounds for thus saith the scripture choose ye this day whom ye will serve now if a man desired to serve god it was his privilege or rather if he believed in god it was his privilege to serve him but if he did not believe in him there was no law to punish him but if he murdered he was punished unto death and if he robbed he was also punished and if he stole he was also punished and if he committed adultery he was also punished yea for all this wickedness they were punished for there was a law that men should be judged according to their crimes nevertheless there was no law against a man's belief therefore a man was punished only for the crimes which he had done therefore all men were on equal grounds and this antichrist whose name was korihor and the law could have no hold upon him began to preach unto the people that there should be no christ and after this manner did he preach saying o ye that are bound down under a foolish and a vain hope why do ye yoke yourselves with such foolish things why do ye look for a christ for no man can know of anything which is to come behold these things which ye call prophecies which ye say are handed down by holy prophets behold they are foolish traditions of your fathers how do ye know of their surety behold ye cannot know of things which ye do not see therefore ye cannot know that there shall be a christ ye look forward and say that ye see a remission of your sins but behold it is the effect of a frenzied mind and this derangement of your minds comes because of the traditions of your fathers which lead you away into a belief of things which are not so and many more such things did he say unto them telling them that there could be no atonement made for the sins of men but every man fared in this life according to the management of the creature therefore every man prospered according to his genius and that every man conquered according to his strength and whatsoever a man did was no crime and thus he did preach unto them leading away the hearts of many causing them to lift up their heads in their wickedness yea leading away many women and also men to commit whoredoms telling them that when a man was dead that was the end thereof now this man went over to the land of jershon also to preach these things among the people of ammon who were once the people of the lamanites but behold they were more wise than many of the nephites for they took him and bound him and carried him before ammon who was a high priest over that people and it came to pass that he caused that he should be carried out of the land and he came over into the land of gideon and began to preach unto them also and here he did not have much success for he was taken and bound and carried before the high priest and also the chief judge over the land and it came to pass that the high priest said unto him why do ye go about perverting the ways of the lord 
why do ye teach this people that there shall be no christ to interrupt their rejoicings why do ye speak against all the prophecies of the holy prophets now the high priest's name was gedona and korihor said unto him because i do not teach the foolish traditions of your fathers and because i do not teach this people to bind themselves down under the foolish ordinances and performances which are laid down by ancient priests to usurp power and authority over them to keep them in ignorance that they may not lift up their heads but be brought down according to thy words ye say this people is a free people behold i say they are in bondage ye say that these ancient prophecies are true behold i say that ye do not know that they are true ye say that this people is a guilty and a fallen people because of the transgression of a parent behold i say that a child is not guilty because of its parents and ye also say that christ shall come but behold i say that ye do not know that there shall be a christ and ye say also that he shall be slain for the sins of the world and thus ye lead away this people after the foolish traditions of your fathers and according to your own desires and ye keep them down even as it were in bondage that ye may glut yourselves with the labours of their hands that they durst not look up with boldness that they durst not enjoy their rights and privileges yea they durst not make use of that which is their own lest they should offend their priests who do yoke them according to their desires and have brought them to believe by their traditions and their dreams and their whims and their visions and their pretended mysteries that they should if they did not according to their words offend some unknown being who they say is god a being who has never been seen or known who never was nor ever will be now when the high priest and the chief judge saw the hardness of his heart yea when they saw that he would revile even against god they would not make any reply to his words but they caused that he should be bound and they delivered him up into the hands of the officers and sent him to the land of zarahemla that he might be brought before alma and the chief judge who was governor over all the land and it came to pass that when he was brought before alma and the chief judge he did go on in the same manner as he did in the land of gideon yea he went on to blaspheme and he did rise up in great swelling words before alma and did revile against the priests and teachers accusing them of leading away the people after the silly traditions of their fathers for the sake of glutting on the labors of the people now alma said unto him thou knowest that we do not glut ourselves upon the labors of this people for behold i have labored even from the commencement of the reign of the judges until now with mine own hands for my support notwithstanding my many travels round about the land to declare the word of god unto my people and notwithstanding the many labors which i have performed in the church i have never received so much as even one senine for my labor neither has any of my brethren save it were in the judgment seat and then we have received only according to law for our time and now if we do not receive anything for our labors in the church what doth it profit us to labor in the church save it were to declare the truth that we may have rejoicings in the joy of our brethren then why sayest thou that we preach unto this people to get gain when thou of thyself knowest that we receive no gain and now believest thou that we deceive this people that causes such joy in their hearts and korihor answered him yea and then alma said unto him believest thou that there is a god and he answered nay now alma said unto him will ye deny again that there is a god and also deny the christ for behold i say unto you i know there is a god and also that christ shall come and now what evidence have ye that there is no god or that christ cometh not i say unto you that ye have none save it be your word only but behold i have all things as a testimony that these things are true and ye also have all things as a testimony unto you that they are true and will ye deny them believest thou that these things are true behold i know that thou believest but thou art possessed with a lying spirit and ye have put off the spirit of god that it may have no place in you but the devil has power over you and he doth carry you about 
working devices that he may destroy the children of god and now korihor said unto alma if thou wilt show unto me a sign that i may be convinced that there is a god yea show unto me that he hath power then will i be convinced of the truth of thy words but alma said unto him thou hast had signs enough will ye tempt your god will ye say show unto me a sign when ye have the testimony of all these thy brethren and also all the holy prophets the scriptures are laid before thee yea and all things denote that there is a god yea even the earth and all things that are upon the face of it yea and its motion yea and also the planets which move in their regular form do witness that there is a supreme creator and yet do ye go about leading away the hearts of this people testifying unto them that there is no god and yet will ye deny against all these witnesses and he said yea i will deny except ye show me a sign and now it came to pass that alma said unto him behold i am grieved because of the hardness of your heart yea that ye will still resist the spirit of the truth that thy soul may be destroyed but behold it is better that thy soul should be lost than thou shouldst be the means of bringing many souls down to destruction by thy lying and by thy flattering words therefore if thou shalt deny again behold god shall smite thee that thou shalt become dumb that thou shalt never open thy mouth any more that thou shalt not deceive this people any more now korihor said unto him i do not deny the existence of a god but i do not believe that there is a god and i say also that ye do not know that there is a god and except ye show me a sign i will not believe now alma said unto him this will i give unto thee for a sign thou shalt be struck dumb according to my words and i say that in the name of god ye shall be struck dumb that ye shall have no more utterance now when alma had said these words korihor was struck dumb that he could not have utterance according to the words of alma and now when the chief judge saw this he put forth his hand and wrote unto korihor saying art thou convinced of the power of god and whom did ye desire that alma should show forth his sign would ye that he should afflict others to show unto thee a sign behold he has showed unto you a sign and now will ye dispute more and korihor put forth his hand and wrote saying i know that i am dumb for i cannot speak and i know that nothing save it were the power of god could bring this upon me yea and i always knew that there was a god but behold the devil hath deceived me for he appeared unto me in the form of an angel and said unto me go and reclaim this people for they have all gone astray after an unknown god and he said unto me there is no god yea and he taught me that which i should say and i have taught his words and i taught them because they were pleasing unto the carnal mind and i taught them even until i had much success insomuch that i verily believed that they were true and for this cause i withstood the truth even until i have brought this great curse upon me and now when he had said this he besought that alma should pray unto god that the curse might be taken from him but alma said unto him if this curse should be taken from thee thou wouldst again lead away the hearts of this people therefore it shall be unto thee even as the lord will and it came to pass that the curse was not taken off of korihor but he was cast out and he went about from house to house begging for his food now the knowledge of what had happened unto korihor was immediately published throughout all the land yea the proclamation was sent forth by the chief judge to all the people in the land declaring unto those who had believed in the words of korihor that they must speedily repent lest the same judgments should come upon them and it came to pass that they were all convinced of the wickedness of korihor therefore they were all converted again unto the lord and this put an end to the iniquity after the manner of korihor and korihor did go about from house to house begging food for his support and it came to pass that as he went forth among the people yea among a people who had separated themselves from the nephites and called themselves zoramites being led by a man whose name was zoram and as he went forth amongst them behold he was run upon and trodden down 
even until he was dead. And thus we see the end of him who perverteth the ways of the Lord. And thus we see that the devil will not support his children at the last day, but doth speedily drag them down to hell. Alma chapter 31 Now it came to pass that after the end of Korihor, Alma, having received tidings that the Zoramites were perverting the ways of the Lord, and that Zoram, who was their leader, was leading the hearts of the people to bow down to dumb idols, his heart again began to sicken because of the iniquity of the people. For it was the cause of great sorrow to Alma to know of iniquity among his people. Therefore his heart was exceedingly sorrowful because of the separation of the Zoramites from the Nephites. Now the Zoramites had gathered themselves together in the land which they called Antionum, which was east of the land of Zarahemla, which lay nearly bordering upon the seashore, which was south of the land of Jershon, which also bordered upon the wilderness south, which wilderness was full of the Lamanites. Now the Nephites greatly feared that the Zoramites would enter into a correspondence with the Lamanites, and that it would be the means of great loss on the part of the Nephites. And now, as the preaching of the word had a great tendency to lead the people to do that which was just, yea, it had more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword, or anything else which had happened unto them, therefore Alma thought it was expedient that they should try the virtue of the word of God. Therefore he took Ammon and Aaron and Omner, and him nigh he did leave in the church in Zarahemla, but the former three he took with him, and also Amulek and Zeezrom, who were at Melech, and he also took two of his sons. Now the eldest of his sons he took not with him, and his name was Helaman. But the names of those he took with him were Shiblon and Coriantin, and these are the names of those who went with him among the Zoramites, to preach unto them the word. Now the Zoramites were dissenters from the Nephites. Therefore they had had the word of God preached unto them, but they had fallen into great errors, for they would not observe to keep the commandments of God, and his statutes, according to the law of Moses. Neither would they observe the performances of the church, to continue in prayer and supplication to God daily, that they might not enter into temptation. Yea, in fine, they did pervert the ways of the Lord in very many instances. Therefore, for this cause, Alma and his brethren went into the land to preach the word unto them, now when they had come into the land, behold, to their astonishment, they found that the Zoramites had built synagogues, and that they did gather themselves together on one day of the week, which day they did call the day of the Lord, and they did worship after a manner which Alma and his brethren had never beheld. For they had a place built up in the center of their synagogue, a place for standing, which was high above the head, and the top thereof would only admit one person, Therefore whosoever desired to worship must go forth and stand upon the top thereof, and stretch forth his hands towards heaven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Holy, holy God, we believe that thou art God, and we believe that thou art holy, and that thou wast a spirit, and that thou art a spirit, and that thou wilt be a spirit for ever. Holy God, we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the tradition of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers. But we believe that thou hast elected us to be thy holy children, and also that thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ. But thou art the same yesterday, today, and for ever, and thou hast elected us that we shall be saved, whilst all around us are elected to be cast by thy wrath down to hell. For the which holiness, O God, we thank thee, and we also thank thee that thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, which doth bind them down to a belief of Christ, which doth lead their hearts to wander far from thee, our God. And again we thank thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. Now the place was called by them Ramiumptum, which, being interpreted, is the holy stand. Now from this stand they did offer up, every man, the selfsame prayer unto God, 
thinking their god that they were chosen of him and that he did not lead them away after the tradition of their brethren and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come which they knew nothing about now after the people had all offered up thanks after this manner they returned to their homes never speaking of their god again until they had assembled themselves together again to the holy stand to offer up thanks after their manner now when alma saw this his heart was grieved for he saw that they were a wicked and a perverse people yea he saw that their hearts were set upon gold and upon silver and upon all manner of fine goods yea and he also saw that their hearts were lifted up unto great boasting in their pride and he lifted up his voice to heaven and cried saying o oh, how long o lord wilt thou suffer that thy servants shall dwell here below in the flesh to behold such gross wickedness among the children of men behold o god they cry unto thee and yet their hearts are swallowed up in their pride behold o god they cry unto thee with their mouths while they are puffed up even to greatness with the vain things of the world behold o my god their costly apparel and their ringlets and their bracelets and their ornaments of gold and all their precious things which they are ornamented with and behold their hearts are set upon them and yet they cry unto thee and say we thank thee o god for we are a chosen people unto thee while others shall perish yea and they say that thou hast made it known unto them that there shall be no christ o lord god how long wilt thou suffer that such wickedness and infidelity shall be among this people o lord wilt thou give me strength that i may bear with mine infirmities for i am infirm and such wickedness among this people doth pain my soul o lord my heart is exceedingly sorrowful wilt thou comfort my soul in christ o lord wilt thou grant unto me that i may have strength that i may suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me because of the iniquity of this people o lord wilt thou comfort my soul and give them to me success and also my fellow laborers who are with me yea ammon and aaron and omner and also amulek and zeezrom and also my two sons yea even all these wilt thou comfort o lord yea wilt thou comfort their souls in christ wilt thou grant unto them that they may have strength that they may bear their afflictions which shall come upon them because of the iniquities of this people o lord wilt thou grant unto us that we may have success in bringing them again unto thee in christ behold o lord their souls are precious and many of them are our brethren therefore give unto us o lord power and wisdom that we may bring these our brethren again unto thee now it came to pass that when alma had said these words that he clapped his hands upon all them who were with him and behold as he clapped his hands upon them they were filled with the holy spirit and after that they did separate themselves one from another taking no thought for themselves what they should eat or what they should drink or what they should put on and the lord provided for them that they should hunger not neither should they thirst yea and he also gave unto them strength that they should suffer no manner of afflictions save it were swallowed up in the joy of christ now this was according to the prayer of alma and this because he prayed in faith alma chapter thirty two and it came to pass that they did go forth and began to preach the word of god unto the people entering into their synagogues and into their houses yea and even they did preach the word in their streets and it came to pass that after much labor among them they began to have success among the poor class of the people for behold they were cast out of the synagogues because of the coarseness of their apparel therefore they were not permitted to enter into their synagogues to worship god being esteemed as filthiness therefore they were poor yea they were esteemed by their brethren as dross therefore they were poor as to the things of the world and also they were poor in heart now as alma was teaching and speaking unto the people upon the hill oneida there came a great multitude unto him who are those of whom we have been speaking of whom were poor in heart because of their poverty as to the things of the world and they came unto alma and the one who was foremost among them said unto him behold what shall these my brethren do for they are despised of all men because of their poverty yea and more especially by our priests 
for they have cast us out of our synagogues which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands and they have cast us out because of our exceeding poverty and we have no place to worship our god and behold what shall we do and now when alma heard this he turned him about his face immediately towards him and he beheld with great joy for he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them and that they were in a preparation to hear the word therefore he did say no more to the other multitude but he stretched forth his hand and cried unto those whom he beheld who were truly penitent and said unto them i behold that ye are lowly in heart and if so blessed are ye behold thy brother hath said what shall we do for we are cast out of our synagogues that we cannot worship our god behold i say unto you do ye suppose that ye cannot worship god save it be in your synagogues only moreover i would ask do ye suppose that ye must not worship god only once in a week i say unto you it is well that ye are cast out of your synagogues that ye may be humble and that ye may learn wisdom for it is necessary that ye should learn wisdom for it is because that ye are cast out that ye are despised of your brethren because of your exceeding poverty that ye are brought to a lowliness of heart for ye are necessarily brought to be humble and now because ye are compelled to be humble blessed are ye for a man sometimes if he is compelled to be humble seeketh repentance and now surely whosoever repenteth shall find mercy and he that findeth mercy and endureth to the end the same shall be saved and now as i said unto you that because you are compelled to be humble you are blessed do you not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humble themselves because of the word yea he that humbleth himself and repenteth of his sins and endureth to the end the same shall be blessed yea much more blessed than they who are compelled to be humble because of their exceeding poverty therefore blessed are they who humble themselves without being compelled to be humble or rather in other words blessed is he that believeth in the word of god and is baptized without stubbornness of heart yea without being brought to know the word or even compelled to know before they will believe yea there are many who do say if thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven then we shall know of a surety then we shall believe now i ask is this faith behold i say unto you nay for if a man knoweth a thing he hath no cause to believe for he knoweth it and now how much more cursed is he that knoweth the will of god and doeth it not than he that only believeth or only hath cause to believe and falleth into transgression now of this thing ye must judge behold i say unto you that it is on the one hand even as it is on the other and it shall be unto every man according to his work and now as i said concerning faith faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things therefore if ye have faith ye hope for things which are not seen which are true and now behold i say unto you and i would that ye should remember that god is merciful unto all who believe on his name therefore he desireth in the first place that ye should believe yea even on his word and now he imparteth his word by angels unto men yea not only men but women also now this is not all little children do have words given unto them many times which confound the wise and the learned and now my beloved brethren as ye have desired to know of me what ye shall do because ye are afflicted and cast out now i do not desire that ye should suppose that i mean to judge you only according to that which is true for i do not mean that ye all of you have been compelled to humble yourselves for i verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves let them be in whatsoever circumstances they might now as i said concerning faith that it was not a perfect knowledge even so it is with my words ye cannot know of their surety at first unto perfection any more than faith is a perfect knowledge but behold if you will awake and arouse your faculties even to an experiment upon my words and exercise a particle of faith yea even if you can no more than desire to believe let this desire work in you even until you believe in a manner that ye can give place for a portion of my words now we will compare the word unto a seed now if ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart behold if it be a true seed or a good seed 
if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief, that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, you will begin to say within yourselves, It must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul. Yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. And behold, would not this increase your faith? I say unto you, Yea, nevertheless it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge. But behold, as the seed swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, then you must needs say that the seed is good. For behold, it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now behold, will not this strengthen your faith? Yea, it will strengthen your faith. For ye will say, I know that this is a good seed. For behold, it sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, are ye sure that this is a good seed? I say unto you, Yea, for every seed bringeth forth after its own likeness. Therefore, if a seed groweth, it is good. But if it groweth not, behold, it is not good. Therefore it is cast away. And now, behold, because ye have tried the experiment, and planted the seed, and it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, ye must needs know that the seed is good. And now, behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing, and your faith is dormant. And this because ye know, for ye know that the word hath swelled your souls, and ye also know that it hath sprouted up, that your understanding doth begin to be enlightened, and your mind doth begin to expand. O oh, then, is not this real? I say unto you, yea, because it is light, and whatsoever is light is good, because it is discernible. Therefore ye must know that it is good. And now, behold, after ye have tasted this light, is your knowledge perfect? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, neither must ye lay aside your faith, for ye have only exercised your faith to plant the seed, that ye may try the experiment to know if the seed was good. And behold, as a tree beginneth to grow, ye will say, Let us nourish it with great care, that it may get root, that it may grow up, and bring forth fruit unto us. And now, if ye nourish it with much care, it will get root, and grow up, and bring forth fruit. But if ye neglect the tree, and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh, and scorcheth it, because it hath no root, it withers away. And ye pluck it up, and cast it out. Now this is not because the seed was not good, neither is it because the fruit thereof would not be desirable. But it is because your ground is barren, and you will not nourish the tree. Therefore ye cannot have the fruit thereof. And thus, if you will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, ye can never pluck the fruit of the tree of life. But if you will nourish the word, yea, nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root, and behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word in nourishing it, that it may take root in you, behold, by and by ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, which is most precious, which is sweet above all that is sweet, and which is white above all that is white, yea, and pure above all that is pure, and ye shall feast upon this fruit, even until ye are filled, that ye hunger not, neither shall ye thirst. Then, my brethren, ye shall reap the rewards of your faith, and your diligence, and patience, and long-suffering, waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. End of the Book of Alma, chapters 29-32《Alma》Chapters 33 through 34 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, Chapters 33 through 34. Alma, Chapter 33. Now after Alma had spoken these words, they sent forth unto him, desiring to know whether they should believe in one God, that they might obtain this fruit of which he had spoken, 
or how they should plant the seed or the word of which he had spoken which he said must be planted in their hearts or in what manner they should begin to exercise their faith and alma said unto them behold ye have said that ye could not worship your god because ye are cast out of your synagogues but behold i say unto you if ye suppose that ye cannot worship god ye do greatly err and ye ought to search the scriptures if ye suppose that they have taught you this ye do not understand them do you remember to have read what zenos the prophet of old has said concerning prayer or worship for he said thou art merciful o god for thou hast heard my prayer even when i was in the wilderness yea thou wast merciful when i prayed concerning those who were mine enemies and thou didst turn them to me yea o god and thou wast merciful unto me when i did cry unto thee in my field when i did cry unto thee in my prayer and thou didst hear me and again o god when i did turn to my house thou didst hear me in my prayer and when i did turn unto my closet o lord and prayed unto thee thou didst hear me yea thou art merciful unto thy children when they cry unto thee to be heard of thee and not of men and thou wilt hear them yea o god thou hast been merciful unto me and heard my cries in the midst of thy congregations yea and thou hast also heard me when i have been cast out and have been despised by mine enemies yea thou didst hear my cries and wast angry with mine enemies and thou didst visit them in thine anger with speedy destruction and thou didst hear me because of mine afflictions and my sincerity and it is because of thy son that thou hast been thus merciful unto me therefore i will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions for in thee is my joy for thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy son and now alma said unto them do you believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old behold if ye do ye must believe what zenos said for behold he said thou hast turned away thy judgments because of thy son and behold my brethren i would ask if ye have read the scriptures if ye have how can ye disbelieve on the son of god for it is not written that zenos alone spake of these things but zenoch also spake of these things for behold he said thou art angry o lord with this people because they will not understand thy mercies which thou hast bestowed upon them because of thy son and now my brethren ye see that a second prophet of old has testified of the son of god and because the people would not understand his words they stoned him to death but behold this is not all these are not the only ones who have spoken concerning the son of god behold he was spoken of by moses yea and behold a type was raised up in the wilderness that whosoever would look upon it might live and many did look and live but few understood the meaning of those things and this because of the hardness of their hearts but there were many who were so hardened that they would not look therefore they perished now the reason they would not look is because they did not believe that it would heal them o oh, my brethren if ye could be healed by merely casting about your eyes that ye might be healed would ye not behold quickly or would ye rather harden your hearts in unbelief and be slothful that ye would not cast about your eyes that ye might perish if so woe shall come upon you but if not so then cast about your eyes and begin to believe in the son of god that he will come to redeem his people and that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins and that he shall rise again from the dead which shall bring to pass the resurrection that all men shall stand before him to be judged at the last and judgment day according to their works and now my brethren i desire that ye shall plant this word in your hearts and as it beginneth to swell even so nourish it by your faith and behold it will become a tree springing up in you unto everlasting life and then may god grant unto you that your burdens may be light through the joy of his son and even all this can ye do if ye will amen alma chapter thirty four 
And now it came to pass that after Alma had spoken these words unto them, he sat down upon the ground. And Amulek arose and began to teach them, saying, My brethren, I think that it is impossible that ye should be ignorant of the things which have been spoken concerning the coming of Christ, who is taught by us to be the Son of God. Yea, I know that these things were taught unto you bountifully before your dissension from among us. And as ye have desired of my beloved brother, that he should make known unto you what ye should do because of your afflictions, and he hath spoken somewhat unto you, to prepare your minds, yea, and he hath exhorted you unto faith and to patience, yea, even that ye would have so much faith as even to plant the word in your hearts, that ye may try the experiment of its goodness. And we have beheld that the great question which is in your minds is whether the word be in the Son of God, or whether there shall be no Christ. And ye also beheld that my brother hath proved unto you in many instances that the word is in Christ unto salvation. My brother has called upon the words of Zenos, that redemption cometh through the Son of God, and also upon the words of Zenoch. And also he has appealed unto Moses to prove that these things are true. And now, behold, I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. Behold, I say unto you that I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to take upon him the transgressions of his people, and that he shall atone for the sins of the world, for the Lord God hath spoken it. For it is expedient that an atonement should be made, for according to the great plan of the eternal God there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are hardened, yea, all are fallen, and are lost, and must perish except it be through the atonement which it is expedient should be made. For it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, yea, not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl, for it shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. Now there is not any man that can sacrifice his own blood, which will atone for the sins of another, now if a man murdereth, behold, will our law, which is just, take the life of his brother? I say unto you, Nay, but the law requireth the life of him who hath murdered. Therefore there can be nothing which is short of an infinite atonement, which will suffice for the sins of the world. Therefore it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice, and then shall there be or it is expedient there should be a stop to the shedding of blood. Then shall the law of Moses be fulfilled, yea, it shall be all fulfilled, every jot and tittle, and none shall have passed away. And behold, this is the whole meaning of the law, every whit pointing to the great and last sacrifice, and that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God, yea, infinite and eternal. And thus he shall bring salvation to all those who shall believe on his name, this being the intent of this last sacrifice, to bring about the bowels of mercy, which overpowereth justice, and bringeth about means unto men, that they may have faith unto repentance. And thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice, and encircles them in the arms of safety, while he that exercises no faith unto repentance is exposed to the whole law of the demands of justice. Therefore only unto him that has faith unto repentance is brought about the great and eternal plan of redemption. Therefore may God grant unto you, my brethren, that ye may begin to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye begin to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. Yea, cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to save. Yea, humble yourselves, and continue in prayer unto him. Cry unto him when ye are in your fields. Yea, over all your flocks. Cry unto him in your houses. Yea, over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. Yea, cry unto him against the power of your enemies. Yea, cry unto him against the devil, who is an enemy to all righteousness. Cry unto him over the crops of your fields, that ye may prosper in them. Cry over the flocks of your fields, that they may increase. But this is not all. Ye must pour out your souls in your closets, and your secret places, and in your wilderness. Yea, and when ye do not cry unto the Lord, let your hearts be full, 
drawn out in prayer unto him continually for your welfare, and also for the welfare of those who are around you. And now behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose that this is all, for after ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy, and the naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance, if ye have, to those who stand in need, I say unto you, If ye do not any of these things, behold, your prayer is vain, and availeth you nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who do deny the faith. Therefore, if ye do not remember to be charitable, ye are as dross, which the refiners do cast out, it being of no worth, and is trodden under the foot of men. And now, my brethren, I would that after ye have received so many witnesses, seeing that the holy scriptures testify of these things, ye come forth and bring fruit unto repentance. Yea, I would that ye would come forth and harden not your hearts any longer, for behold, now is the time and the day of your salvation, and therefore, if ye will repent and harden not your hearts, immediately shall the great plan of redemption be brought about unto you. For behold, this life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Yea, behold, the day of this life is the day for men to perform their labors. And now, as I said unto you before, as ye have had so many witnesses, therefore I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, then cometh the night of darkness, wherein there can be no labor performed. Ye cannot say, when ye are brought to that awful crisis, that I will repent, that I will return to my God. Nay, ye cannot say this, for that same spirit which doth possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. For behold, if ye have procrastinated the day of your repentance, even until death, behold, ye have become subjected to the spirit of the devil, and he doth seal you his. Therefore the spirit of the Lord hath withdrawn from you, and hath no place in you, and the devil hath all power over you, and this is the final state of the wicked. And this I know, because the Lord hath said, He dwelleth not in unholy temples, but in the hearts of the righteous doth he dwell. Yea, and he has also said that the righteous shall sit down in his kingdom to go no more out, but their garments should be made white through the blood of the Lamb. And now, my beloved brethren, I desire that ye should remember these things, and that ye should work out your salvation with fear before God, and that ye should no more deny the coming of Christ, that ye contend no more against the Holy Ghost, but that ye receive it, and take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble yourselves even to the dust, and worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you. Yea, and I also exhort you, my brethren, that ye be watchful unto prayer continually, that ye may not be led away by the temptations of the devil, that he may not overpower you, that ye may not become his subjects at the last day. For behold, he rewardeth you no good thing. And now, my beloved brethren, I would exhort you to have patience, and that ye bear with all manner of afflictions, that ye do not revile against those who do cast you out because of your exceeding poverty, lest ye become sinners like unto them, but that ye have patience, and bear with those afflictions, with a firm hope, that ye shall one day rest from all your afflictions. End of Alma, chapters 33 through 34. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 35 through 37 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, 
chapters thirty five through thirty seven alma chapter thirty five now it came to pass that after amulek had made an end of these words they withdrew themselves from the multitude and came over into the land of jershon yea and the rest of the brethren after they had preached the word unto the zoramites also came over into the land of jershon and it came to pass that after the more popular part of the zoramites had consulted together concerning the words which had been preached unto them they were angry because of the word for it did destroy their craft therefore they would not hearken unto the words and they sent and gathered together throughout all the land all the people and consulted with them concerning the words which had been spoken now their rulers and their priests and their teachers did not let the people know concerning their desires therefore they found out privily the minds of all the people and it came to pass that after they had found out the minds of all the people those who were in favor of the words which had been spoken by alma and his brethren were cast out of the land and they were many and they came over also into the land of jershon and it came to pass that alma and his brethren did minister unto them now the people of the zoramites were angry with the people of ammon who were in jershon and the chief ruler of the zoramites being a very wicked man sent over unto the people of ammon desiring them that they should cast out of their land all those who came over from them into their land and he breathed out many threatenings against them and now the people of ammon did not fear their words therefore they did not cast them out but they did receive all the poor of the zoramites that came over unto them and they did nourish them and did clothe them and did give unto them lands for their inheritance and they did administer unto them according to their wants now this did stir up the zoramites to anger against the people of ammon and they began to mix with the lamanites and to stir them up also to anger against them and thus the zoramites and the lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of ammon and also against the nephites and thus ended the seventeenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and the people of ammon departed out of the land of jershon and came over into the land of melech and gave place in the land of jershon for the armies of the nephites that they might contend with the armies of the lamanites and the armies of the zoramites and thus commenced a war betwixt the lamanites and the nephites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges and an account shall be given of their wars hereafter and alma and ammon and their brethren and also the two sons of alma returned to the land of zarahemla after having been instruments in the hands of god of bringing many of the zoramites to repentance and as many as were brought to repentance were driven out of their land but they have lands for their inheritance in the land of jershon and they have taken up arms to defend themselves and their wives and children and their lands now alma being grieved for the iniquity of his people yea for the wars and the bloodsheds and the contentions which were among them and having been to declare the word or sent to declare the word among all the people in every city and seeing that the hearts of the people began to wax hard and that they began to be offended because of the strictness of the word his heart was exceedingly sorrowful therefore he caused that his sons should be gathered together that he might give unto them every one his charge separately concerning the things pertaining unto righteousness and we have an account of his commandments which he gave unto them according to his own record alma chapter thirty six my son give ear to my words for i swear unto you that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of god ye shall prosper in the land i would that ye should do as i have done in remembering the captivity of our fathers for they were in bondage and none could deliver them except it was the god of abraham and the god of isaac and the god of jacob and he surely did deliver them in their afflictions and now o my son helaman behold thou art in thy youth and therefore i beseech of thee that thou wilt hear my words and learn of me for i do know that whosoever shall put their trust in god shall be supported in their trials and their troubles and their afflictions and shall be lifted up at the last day and i would not that ye think that i know of myself not of the temporal but of the spiritual not of the carnal mind but of god now behold i say unto you if i had not been born of god i should not have known these things but god has by the mouth of his holy angel made these things known unto me not of any worthiness of myself 
for I went about with the sons of Mosiah seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, God sent his holy angel to stop us by the way. And behold, he spake unto us, as it were, the voice of thunder, and the whole earth did tremble beneath our feet. And we all fell to the earth, for the fear of the Lord came upon us. But behold, the voice said unto me, Arise. And I arose, and stood up, and beheld the angel. And he said unto me, If thou wilt of thyself be destroyed, seek no more to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that I fell to the earth, and it was for the space of three days and three nights that I could not open my mouth, neither had I the use of my limbs. And the angel spake more things unto me, which were heard by my brethren, but I did not hear them. For when I heard the words, If thou wilt be destroyed of thyself, seek no more to destroy the church of God, I was struck with such great fear and amazement, lest perhaps I should be destroyed, that I fell to the earth, and I did hear no more. But I was racked with eternal torment, for my soul was harrowed up to the greatest degree, and racked with all my sins. Yea, I did remember all my sins and iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God, and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, and I had murdered many of his children, or rather, led them away unto destruction. Yea, and in fine, so great had been my iniquities, that the very thought of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. Oh, thought I, that I could be banished and become extinct both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and for three nights was I racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that as I was thus racked with torment, while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, O oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who am in the gall of bitterness, and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. And now, behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And, oh, what joy, and what marvelous light I did behold! Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. Yea, methought I saw, even as our father Lehi saw, God sitting upon his throne, surrounded with numberless concourses of angels, in the attitude of singing and praising their God. Yea, and my soul did long to be there. But, behold, my limbs did receive their strength again, and I stood upon my feet, and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. Yea, and from that time, even until now, I have labored without ceasing, that I might bring souls unto repentance, that I might bring them to taste of the exceeding joy of which I did taste, that they might also be born of God, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yea, and now behold, O my son, the Lord doth give me exceedingly great joy in the fruit of my labors. For because of the word which he has imparted unto me, behold, many have been born of God, and have tasted as I have tasted, and have seen eye to eye as I have seen. Therefore they do know of these things of which I have spoken, as I do know. And the knowledge which I have is of God and I have been supported under trials and troubles of every kind. Yea, and in all manner of afflictions, yea, God has delivered me from prison, and from bonds, and from death. Yea, and I do put my trust in him, and he will still deliver me. And I know that he will raise me up at the last day to dwell with him in glory. Yea, and I will praise him forever, for he has brought our fathers out of Egypt, 
and he has swallowed up the Egyptians in the Red Sea. And he led them by his power into the promised land. Yea, and he has delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time. Yea, and he has also brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem. And he has also by his everlasting power delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time, even down to the present day. And I have always retained in remembrance their captivity. Yea, and ye also ought to retain in remembrance, as I have done, their captivity. But behold, my son, this is not all. For ye ought to know, as I do know, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And ye ought to know also that inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. Now this is according to his word. Alma, chapter 37. And now, my son Helaman, I command you that ye take the records which have been entrusted with me. And I also command you that ye keep a record of this people according as I have done upon the plates of Nephi, and keep all these things sacred which I have kept, even as I have kept them. For it is for a wise purpose that they are kept. And these plates of brass, which contain these engravings, which have the records of the holy scriptures upon them, which have the genealogy of our forefathers even from the beginning, behold, it has been prophesied by our fathers that they should be kept and handed down from one generation to another, and be kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord until they should go forth unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, that they shall know of the mysteries contained thereon. And now, behold, if they are kept, they must retain their brightness. Yea, and they will retain their brightness. Yea, and also shall all the plates, which do contain that which is holy writ. Now ye may suppose that this is foolishness in me. But behold, I say unto you, that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. And small means in many instances doth confound the wise. And the Lord God doth work by means to bring about his great and eternal purposes. And by very small means the Lord doth confound the wise, and bringeth about the salvation of many souls. And now it has hitherto been wisdom in God that these things should be preserved. For behold, they have enlarged the memory of this people, yea, and convinced many of the error of their ways, and brought them to the knowledge of their God unto the salvation of their souls. Yea, I say unto you, were it not for these things that these records do contain, which are on these plates, Ammon and his brethren could not have convinced so many thousands of the Lamanites of the incorrect tradition of their fathers. Yea, these records and their words brought them unto repentance. That is, they brought them to the knowledge of the Lord their God, and to rejoice in Jesus Christ their Redeemer. And who knoweth but what they will be the means of bringing many thousands of them, yea, and also many thousands of our stiff-necked brethren, the Nephites, who are now hardening their hearts in sin and iniquities, to the knowledge of their Redeemer? Now these mysteries are not yet fully made known unto me, therefore I shall forbear. And it may suffice if I only say they are preserved for a wise purpose, which purpose is known unto God. For he doth counsel in wisdom over all his works, and his paths are straight, and his course is one eternal round. O oh, remember, remember, my son Helaman, how strict are the commandments of God. And he said, If ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But if ye keep not his commandments, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now remember, my son, that God hath entrusted you with these things which are sacred, which he has kept sacred, and also which he will keep and preserve for a wise purpose in him, that he may show forth his power unto future generations. And now, behold, I tell you by the spirit of prophecy, that if ye transgress the commandments of God, behold, these things which are sacred shall be taken away from you by the power of God, and ye shall be delivered up unto Satan, that he may sift you as chaff before the wind. But if ye keep the commandments of God, and do with these things which are sacred according to that which the Lord doth command you, for you must appeal unto the Lord for all things whatsoever ye must do with them, behold, no power of earth or hell can take them from you, for God is powerful to the fulfilling of all his words for he will fulfill all his promises which he shall make unto you. 
for he has fulfilled his promises which he has made unto our fathers for he promised unto them that he would preserve these things for a wise purpose in him that he might show forth his power unto future generations and now behold one purpose hath he fulfilled even to the restoration of many thousands of the lamanites to the knowledge of the truth and he hath shown forth his power in them and he will also still show forth his power in them unto future generations therefore they shall be preserved therefore i command you my son helaman that ye be diligent in fulfilling all my words and that ye be diligent in keeping the commandments of god as they are written and now i will speak unto you concerning those twenty-four plates that ye keep them that the mysteries and the works of darkness and their secret works or the secret works of those people who have been destroyed may be made manifest unto this people yea all their murders and robbings and their plunderings and all their wickedness and abominations may be made manifest unto this people yea and that ye preserve these interpreters for behold the lord saw that his people began to work in darkness yea work secret murders and abominations therefore the lord said if they did not repent they should be destroyed from off the face of the earth and the lord said i will prepare unto my servant gazelum a stone which shall shine forth in darkness unto light that i may discover unto my people who serve me that i may discover unto them the works of their brethren yea their secret works their works of darkness and their wickedness and abominations and now my son these interpreters were prepared that the word of god might be fulfilled which he spake saying i will bring forth out of darkness unto light all their secret works and their abominations and except they repent i will destroy them from off the face of the earth and i will bring to light all their secrets and abominations unto every nation that shall hereafter possess the land and now my son we see that they did not repent therefore they have been destroyed and thus far the word of god has been fulfilled yea their secret abominations have been brought out of darkness and made known unto us and now my son i command you that ye retain all their oaths and their covenants and their agreements and their secret abominations yea and all their signs and their wonders ye shall keep from this people that they know them not lest peradventure they should fall into darkness also and be destroyed for behold there is a curse upon all this land that destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness according to the power of god when they are fully ripe therefore i desire that this people might not be destroyed therefore ye shall keep these secret plans of their oaths and their covenants from this people and only their wickedness and their murders and their abominations shall ye make known unto them and ye shall teach them to abhor such wickedness and abominations and murders and ye shall also teach them that these people were destroyed on account of their wickedness and abominations and their murders for behold they murdered all the prophets of the lord who came among them to declare unto them concerning their iniquities and the blood of those whom they murdered did cry unto the lord their god for vengeance upon those who were their murderers and thus the judgments of god did come upon these workers of darkness and secret combinations yea and cursed be the land for ever and ever unto those workers of darkness and secret combinations even unto destruction except they repent before they are fully ripe and now my son remember the words which i have spoken unto you trust not those secret plans unto this people but teach them an everlasting hatred against sin and iniquity preach unto them repentance and faith on the lord jesus christ teach them to humble themselves and to be meek and lowly in heart teach them to withstand every temptation of the devil with their faith on the lord jesus christ teach them to never be weary of good works but to be meek and lowly in heart for such shall find rest to their souls o oh, remember my son and learn wisdom in thy youth yea learn in thy youth to keep the commandments of god yea and cry unto god for all thy support yea let all thy doings be unto the lord and whithersoever thou goest let it be in the lord yea let all thy thoughts be directed unto the lord yea let the affections of thy heart be placed upon the lord for ever
counsel with the Lord in all thy doings, and he will direct thee for good. Yea, when thou liest down at night, lie down unto the Lord, that he may watch over you in your sleep. And when thou risest in the morning, let thy heart be full of thanks unto God. And if ye do these things, ye shall be lifted up at the last day. And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the thing which our fathers call a ball, or director, or our fathers called it Liahona, which is, being interpreted, a compass. And the Lord prepared it. And behold, there cannot any man work after the manner of so curious a workmanship. And behold, it was prepared to show unto our fathers the course which they should travel in the wilderness. And it did work for them according to their faith in God. Therefore, if they had faith to believe that God could cause that those spindles should point the way they should go, behold, it was done. Therefore they had this miracle, and also many other miracles wrought by the power of God day by day. Nevertheless, because those miracles were worked by small means, it did show unto them marvelous works. They were slothful, and forgot to exercise their faith and diligence, and then those marvelous works ceased, and they did not progress in their journey. Therefore they tarried in the wilderness, or did not travel a direct course, and were afflicted with hunger and thirst because of their transgressions. And now, my son, I would that ye should understand that these things are not without a shadow. For as our fathers were slothful to give heed to this compass, now these things were temporal, they did not prosper, even so it is with things which are spiritual. For behold, it is as easy to give heed to the word of Christ, which will point to you a straight course to eternal bliss, as it was for our fathers to give heed to this compass, which would point unto them a straight course to the promised land. And now I say, is there not a type in this thing? For just as surely as this director did bring our fathers by following its course to the promised land, shall the words of Christ, if we follow their course, carry us beyond this veil of sorrow into a far better land of promise. O oh, my son, do not let us be slothful because of the easiness of the way. For so was it with our fathers. For so was it prepared for them that if they would look, they might live. Even so it is with us. The way is prepared. And if we will look, we may live forever. And now, my son, see that ye take care of these sacred things. Yea, see that ye look to God and live. Go unto this people, and declare the word, and be sober. My son, farewell. End of Alma, chapters 35 through 37. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 38 through 41 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 38 through 41. Alma, chapter 38. My son, give ear to my words, for I say unto you, even as I said unto Helaman, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now, my son, I trust that I shall have great joy in you, because of your steadiness and your faithfulness unto God. For as you have commenced in your youth to look to the Lord your God, even so I hope that you will continue in keeping his commandments, for blessed is he that endureth to the end. I say unto you, my son, that I have had great joy in thee already, because of thy faithfulness and thy diligence and thy patience and thy long-suffering among the people of the Zoramites. For I know that thou wast in bonds, yea, and I also know that thou wast stoned for the word's sake, and thou didst bear all these things with patience, because the Lord was with thee. And now thou knowest that the Lord did deliver thee. And now, my son, Shiblon, I would that ye should remember that as much as ye shall put your trust in God, 
even so much ye shall be delivered out of your trials, and your troubles, and your afflictions, and ye shall be lifted up at the last day. Now, my son, I would not that ye should think that I know these things of myself, but it is the Spirit of God which is in me, which maketh these things known unto me. For if I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But behold, the Lord in his great mercy sent his angel to declare unto me that I must stop the work of destruction among his people. Yea, and I have seen an angel face to face, and he spake with me, and his voice was as thunder, and it shook the whole earth. And it came to pass that I was three days and three nights in the most bitter pain and anguish of soul, and never until I did cry out unto the Lord Jesus Christ for mercy did I receive a remission of my sins. But, behold, I did cry unto him, and I did find peace to my soul. And now, my son, I have told you this, that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn of me that there is no other way or means whereby man can be saved, only in and through Christ. Behold, he is the life and the light of the world. Behold, he is the word of truth and righteousness. And now, as ye have begun to teach the word, even so I would that ye should continue to teach, and I would that ye would be diligent and temperate in all things. See that ye are not lifted up unto pride. Yea, see that ye do not boast in your own wisdom, nor of your much strength. Use boldness, but not overbearance. And also see that ye bridle all your passions, that ye may be filled with love. See that ye refrain from idleness. Do not pray as the Zoramites do, for ye have seen that they pray to be heard of men and to be praised for their wisdom. Do not say, O God, I thank thee that we are better than our brethren, but rather say, O Lord, forgive my unworthiness, and remember my brethren in mercy. Yea, acknowledge your unworthiness before God at all times. And may the Lord bless your soul, and receive you at the last day into his kingdom, to sit down in peace. Now go, my son, and teach the word unto this people. Be sober, my son. Farewell. Alma chapter 39 And now, my son, I have somewhat more to say unto thee than what I said unto thy brother. For behold, have ye not observed the steadiness of thy brother, his faithfulness, and his diligence in keeping the commandments of God? Behold, has he not set a good example for thee? For thou didst not give so much heed unto my words as did thy brother among the people of the Zoramites. Now this is what I have against thee. Thou didst go on unto boasting in thy strength and thy wisdom. And this is not all, my son. Thou didst do that which was grievous unto me. For thou didst forsake the ministry, and did go over into the land of Siren, among the borders of the Lamanites, after the harlot Isabel. Yea, she did still away the hearts of many. But this was no excuse for thee, my son. Thou shouldst have tended to the ministry wherewith thou wast entrusted. Know ye not, my son, that these things are an abomination in the sight of the Lord? Yea, most abominable above all sins, save it be the shedding of innocent blood, or denying the Holy Ghost. For behold, if ye deny the Holy Ghost, when it once has had place in you, and ye know that ye deny it, behold, this is a sin which is unpardonable, Yea, and whosoever murdereth against the light and knowledge of God, it is not easy for him to obtain forgiveness. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that it is not easy for him to obtain a forgiveness. And now, my son, I would to God that ye had not been guilty of so great a crime. I would not dwell upon your crimes to harrow up your soul, if it were not for your good. But, behold, ye cannot hide your crimes from God and except you repent, they will stand as a testimony against you at the last day. Now, my son, I would that ye should repent, and forsake your sins, and go no more after the lusts of your eyes, but cross yourself in all these things. For except ye do this, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. O oh, remember, and take it upon you, and cross yourself in these things. And I command you, to take it upon you to counsel with your elder brothers in your undertakings. For behold, thou art in thy youth, and ye stand in need to be nourished by your brothers, and give heed to their counsel. Suffer not yourself to be led away by any vain or foolish thing. Suffer not the devil to lead away your heart again after those wicked harlots. 
Behold, O my son, how great iniquity ye brought upon the Zoramites, for when they saw your conduct, they would not believe in my words. And now the Spirit of the Lord doth say unto me, Command thy children to do good, lest they lead away the hearts of many people to destruction. Therefore I command you, my son, in the fear of God, that ye refrain from your iniquities, that ye turn to the Lord with all your mind, might, and strength, that ye lead away the hearts of no more to do wickedly, but rather return unto them, and acknowledge your faults, and that wrong which ye have done. Seek not after riches, nor the vain things of this world, for behold, you cannot carry them with you. And now, my son, I would say somewhat unto you concerning the coming of Christ. Behold, I say unto you, that it is he that surely shall come to take away the sins of the world. Yea, he cometh to declare glad tidings of salvation unto his people. And now, my son, this was the ministry unto which ye were called, to declare these glad tidings unto this people, to prepare their minds, or rather that salvation might come unto them, that they may prepare the minds of their children to hear the word at the time of his coming. And now I will ease your mind somewhat on this subject. Behold, you marvel why these things should be known so long beforehand. Behold, I say unto you, Is not a soul at this time as precious unto God as a soul will be at the time of his coming? Is it not as necessary that the plan of redemption should be made known unto this people as well as unto their children? Is it not as easy at this time for the Lord to send his angel to declare these glad tidings unto us as unto our children, or as after the time of his coming? Alma chapter 40 now, my son, here is somewhat more I would say unto thee, for I perceive that thy mind is worried concerning the resurrection of the dead. Behold, I say unto you that there is no resurrection, or I would say in other words, that this mortal does not put on immortality, this corruption does not put on incorruption, until after the coming of Christ. Behold, he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. But behold, my son, the resurrection is not yet. Now I unfold unto you a mystery, nevertheless there are many mysteries which are kept, that no one knoweth them save God himself. But I show unto you one thing which I have inquired diligently of God that I might know, that is, concerning the resurrection. Behold, there is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. Now when this time cometh no one knows, but God knoweth the time which is appointed. Now whether there shall be one time, or a second time, or a third time, that men shall come forth from the dead, it mattereth not. For God knoweth all these things, and it sufficeth me to know that this is the case, that there is a time appointed, that all shall rise from the dead. Now there must needs be a space betwixt the time of death and the time of the resurrection. And now I would inquire what becometh of the souls of men from this time of death to the time appointed for the resurrection? Now whether there is more than one time appointed for men to rise, it mattereth not. For all do not die at once, and this mattereth not. All is as one day with God, and time only is measured unto men. Therefore there is a time appointed unto men, that they shall rise from the dead. And there is a space between the time of death and the resurrection. And now concerning this space of time, what becometh of the souls of men is the thing which I have inquired diligently of the Lord to know, and this is the thing of which I do know. And when the time cometh, when all shall rise, then shall they know that God knoweth all the times which are appointed unto man. Now concerning the state of the soul between death and the resurrection, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, Yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow. And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of the wicked, yea, who are evil, for behold, they have no part nor portion of the Spirit of the Lord. For behold, they chose evil works rather than good. Therefore the Spirit of the devil did enter into them, and take possession of their house. And these shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping, and wailing, and gnashing of teeth. 
and this because of their own iniquity, being led captive by the will of the devil. Now this is the state of the souls of the wicked, yea, in darkness, and a state of awful, fearful looking for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God upon them. Thus they remain in this state, as well as the righteous in paradise, until the time of their resurrection. Now there are some who have understood that this state of happiness and this state of misery of the soul before the resurrection was a first resurrection. Yea, I admit it may be termed a resurrection, the raising of the spirit or the soul and their consignation to happiness or misery, according to the words which have been spoken. And behold again, it hath been spoken, that there is a first resurrection, a resurrection of all those who have been, or who are, or who shall be, down to the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now we do not suppose that this first resurrection, which is spoken of in this manner, can be the resurrection of the souls in their consignation to happiness or misery. You cannot suppose that this is what it meaneth. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, but it meaneth the reuniting of the soul with the body, of those from the days of Adam down to the resurrection of Christ. Now whether the souls and the bodies of those of whom has been spoken shall all be reunited at once, the wicked as well as the righteous, I do not say. Let it suffice that I say that they all come forth. Or in other words, their resurrection cometh to pass before the resurrection of those who die after the resurrection of Christ. Now, my son, I do not say that their resurrection cometh at the resurrection of Christ, but, behold, I give it as my opinion that the souls and the bodies are reunited of the righteous at the resurrection of Christ and his ascension into heaven. But whether it be at his resurrection or after, I do not say, but this much I say, that there is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and a state of the soul in happiness or in misery until the time which is appointed of God, that the dead shall come forth and be reunited both soul and body, and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Yea, this bringeth about the restoration of those things of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. Yea, and every limb and joint shall be restored to its body. Yea, even a hair of the head shall not be lost. But all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame, and now, my son, this is the restoration of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. And then shall the righteous shine forth in the kingdom of God. But, behold, an awful death cometh upon the wicked, for they die as to things pertaining to things of righteousness, for they are unclean, and no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of God. But they are cast out, and consigned to partake of the fruits of their labors, or their works, which have been evil, and they drink the dregs of a bitter cup. Alma chapter 41 And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the restoration of which has been spoken. For behold, some have wrested the scriptures, and have gone far astray because of this thing. And I perceive that thy mind has been worried also concerning this thing. But behold, I will explain it unto thee. I say unto thee, my son, that the plan of restoration is requisite with the justice of God, for it is requisite that all things should be restored to their proper order. Behold, it is requisite and just, according to the power and resurrection of Christ, that the soul of man should be restored to its body, and that every part of the body should be restored to itself. And it is requisite with the justice of God that men should be judged according to their works. And if their works were good in this life, and the desires of their hearts were good, that they should also at the last day be restored unto that which is good. And if their works are evil, they shall be restored unto them for evil. Therefore all things shall be restored to their proper order, everything to its natural frame, mortality raised to immortality, corruption to incorruption, raised to endless happiness to inherit the kingdom of God, or to endless misery to inherit the kingdom of the devil, the one on the one hand, the other on the other. The one raised to happiness according to his desires of happiness, or good according to his desires of good, and the other to evil according to his desires of evil. For as he has desired to do evil all the day long, 
even so shall he have his reward of evil when the night cometh. And so it is, on the other hand, if he hath repented of his sins, and desired righteousness until the end of his days, even so he shall be rewarded unto righteousness. These are they that are redeemed of the Lord. Yea, these are they that are taken out, that are delivered from that endless night of darkness. And thus they stand or fall, for behold, they are their own judges, whether to do good or do evil. Now the decrees of God are unalterable. Therefore the way is prepared that whosoever will may walk therein and be saved. And now, behold, my son, do not risk one more offense against your God upon those points of doctrine which ye have hitherto risked to commit sin. Do not suppose, because it has been spoken concerning restoration, that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. Behold, I say unto you, wickedness never was happiness. And now, my son, all men that are in a state of nature, or I would say in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness, and in the bonds of iniquity. They are without God in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of God. Therefore they are in a state contrary to the nature of happiness. And now behold, is the meaning of the word restoration to take a thing of a natural state, and place it in an unnatural state, or to place it in a state opposite to its nature? O oh, my son, this is not the case. But the meaning of the word restoration is to bring back again evil for evil, or carnal for carnal, or devilish for devilish, good for that which is good, righteous for that which is righteous, just for that which is just, merciful for that which is merciful. Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren, deal justly, judge righteously, and do good continually. And if ye do all these things, then shall ye receive your reward. Yea, ye shall have mercy restored unto you again. Ye shall have justice restored unto you again. Ye shall have a righteous judgment restored unto you again. And ye shall have good rewarded unto you again. For that which ye do send out shall return unto you again and be restored. Therefore the word restoration more fully condemneth the sinner and justifieth him not at all. End of Alma, chapters 38 through 41. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma 42 through 45 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sarah Luann. The Book of Mormon translated by Joseph Smith. Alma chapter 42. And now, my son, I perceive there is somewhat more which doth worry your mind, which ye cannot understand, which is concerning the justice of God in the punishment of the sinner. For ye do try to suppose that it is injustice that the sinner should be consigned to a state of misery. Now behold, my son, I will explain this thing unto thee. For behold, after the Lord God sent our first parents forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground, from whence they were taken, yea, he drew out the man, and he placed at the east end of the garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the tree of life. Now we see that the man had become as God, knowing good and evil, unless he should put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live for ever, the Lord God placed cherubim in a flaming sword, that he should not partake of the fruit. And thus we see that there was a time granted unto man to repent, yea, a probationary time, a time to repent and serve God. For behold, if Adam had put forth his hand immediately, and partaken of the tree of life, he would have lived for ever, according to the word of God, having no space for repentance, yea, and also the word of God would have been void, and the great plan of salvation would have been frustrated. But behold, it was appointed unto man to die. Therefore, as they were cut off from the tree of life, they should be cut off from the face of the earth, and man became lost for ever, yea, they became fallen man. And now ye see by this that our first parents were cut off both temporally and spiritually from the presence of the Lord, and thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will. Now behold, it was not expedient that man should be reclaimed from this temporal death, for that would destroy the great plan of happiness. 
Therefore, as the soul could never die, and the fall had brought upon all mankind a spiritual death as well as a temporal, that is, they were cut off from the presence of the Lord, it was expedient that mankind should be reclaimed from this spiritual death. Therefore, as they had become carnal, sensual, and devilish, by nature, this probationary state became a state for them to prepare, it became a preparatory state. And now remember, my son, if it were not for the plan of redemption, laying it aside, as soon as they were dead their souls were miserable, being cut off from the presence of the Lord. And now there was no means to reclaim men from this fallen state, which man had brought upon himself because of his own disobedience. Therefore, according to justice, the plan of redemption could not be brought about, only on conditions of repentance of men in this probationary state, yea, this preparatory state, for except it were for these conditions, mercy could not take effect except it should destroy the work of justice. Now the work of justice could not be destroyed. If so, God would cease to be God. And thus we see that all mankind were fallen, and they were in the grasp of justice, yea, the justice of God, which consigned them for ever to be cut off from his presence. And now the plan of mercy could not be brought about, except an atonement should be made. Therefore God himself atoneth for the sins of the world, to bring about the plan of mercy, to appease the demands of justice, that God might be a perfect, just God, and a merciful God also. Now repentance could not come unto men except there were a punishment, which also was eternal as the life of the soul should be, affixed opposite to the plan of happiness, which was as eternal also as the life of the soul. Now how could a man repent except he should sin? How could he sin if there was no law? How could there be a law save there was a punishment? Now there was a punishment affixed, and a just law given, which brought remorse of conscience unto man. Now if there was no law given, if a man murdered he should die, would he be afraid he would die if he should murder? And also if there was no law given against sin, men would not be afraid to sin. And if there was no law given, if men sin, what could justice do or mercy either, for they would have no claim upon the creature? But there is a law given, and a punishment affixed, and a repentance granted, which repentance mercy claimeth. Otherwise, justice claimeth the creature, and executeth the law, and the law inflicteth the punishment. If not so, the works of justice would be destroyed, and God would cease to be God. But God ceaseth not to be God, and mercy claimeth the penitent, and mercy cometh because of the atonement, and the atonement bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back men into the presence of God, and thus they are restored into his presence to be judged according to their works, according to the law and justice. For behold, justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy claimeth all which is her own, and thus none but the truly penitent are saved. What, do ye suppose that mercy can rob justice? I say unto you, Nay, not one whit. If so, God would cease to be God. And thus God bringeth about his great and eternal purposes, which were prepared from the foundation of the world and thus cometh about the salvation and the redemption of men, and also their destruction and misery. Therefore, O my son, whosoever will come may come, and partake of the waters of life freely, and whosoever will not come, the same is not compelled to come, but in the last day it shall be restored unto him according to his deeds. If he has desired to do evil, and has not repented in his days, behold, evil shall be done unto him, according to the restoration of God. And now, my son, I desire that ye should let these things trouble you no more, and only let your sins trouble you, with that trouble which shall bring you down unto repentance. O oh, my son, I desire that ye should deny the justice of God no more. Do not endeavor to excuse yourself, in the least point because of your sins, by denying the justice of God. But do you let the justice of God, and his mercy, and his long-suffering have full sway in your heart, and let it bring you down to the dust in humility. And now, my son, ye are called of God to preach the word unto this people. And now, my son, go thy way, declare the word with truth and soberness, that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance, and that the great plan of mercy may have claim upon them. And may God grant unto you, even according to my words. Amen. Chapter 43 And now it came to pass that the sons of Alma did go forth among the people to declare the word unto them, and Alma also himself could not rest, and he also went forth. Now we shall say no more concerning their preaching, except that they preached the word, and the truth, according to the spirit of prophecy and revelation, and they preached after the holy order of God, by which they were called. 
And now I return to an account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges. For behold, it came to pass that the Zoramites became Lamanites. Therefore, in the commencement of the eighteenth year, the people of the Nephites saw that the Lamanites were coming upon them. Therefore they made preparations for war. Yea, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came with their thousands, and they came into the land of Antionum, which is the land of the Zoramites. And a man by the name of Zarahemna was their leader. And now, as the Amalekites were of a more wicked and murderous disposition than the Lamanites were, in and of themselves, therefore Zarahemna appointed chief captains over the Lamanites, and they were all Amalekites and Zoramites. Now this he did that he might preserve their hatred towards the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjection to the accomplishment of his designs. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did that he might usurp great power over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by bringing them into bondage. Now the design of the Nephites was to support their lands, and their houses, and their wives, and their children, that they might preserve them from the hands of their enemies, and also that they might preserve their rights and their privileges, yea, and also their liberty, that they might worship God according to their desires. For they knew that if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, that whosoever should worship God in spirit and in truth, the true and living God, the Lamanites would destroy. Yea, and they also knew the extreme hatred of the Lamanites towards their brethren, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, who were called the people of Ammon, and they would not take up arms, they had entered into a covenant, and they would not break it. Therefore, if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, they would be destroyed. And the Nephites would not suffer that they should be destroyed. Therefore they gave them lands for their inheritance. And the people of Ammon did give unto the Nephites a large portion of their substance to support their armies. And thus the Nephites were compelled, alone, to withstand against the Lamanites, who were a compound of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael, and all those who had descended from the Nephites, who were Amalekites and Zoramites, and the descendants of the priests of Noah. Now those descendants were as numerous, nearly, as were the Nephites, and thus the Nephites were obliged to contend with their brethren, even unto bloodshed. And it came to pass, as the armies of the Lamanites had gathered together in the land of Antionum, behold, the armies of the Nephites were prepared to meet them in the land of Jershon. Now the leader of the Nephites, or the man who had been appointed to be the chief captain over the Nephites, now the chief captain took command of all the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Moroni. And Moroni took all the command, and the government of their wars, and he was only twenty and five years old when he was appointed chief captain over the armies of the Nephites. And it came to pass that he met the Lamanites in the borders of Jershon, and his people were armed with swords and with scimitars and all manner of weapons of war. And when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of Nephi, or that Moroni, had prepared his people with breastplates and with arm shields, yea, and also shields to defend their heads, and also they were dressed with thick clothing, now the army of Zarahemna was not prepared with any such thing. They had only their swords and their scimitars, their bows and their arrows, their stones and their slings, and they were naked, save it were a skin which was girded about their loins. Yea, all were naked, save it were the Zoramites and the Amalekites. But they were not armed with breastplates, nor shields. Therefore they were exceedingly afraid of the armies of the Nephites because of their armor, notwithstanding their number being so much greater than the Nephites. Behold, it now came to pass that they durst not come against the Nephites in the borders of Jershon. Therefore they departed out of the land of Antionum into the wilderness, and took their journey round about in the wilderness, away by the head of the river Sidon, that they might come into the land of Manti and take possession of the land. For they did not suppose that the armies of Moroni would know whither they had gone. But it came to pass, as soon as they had departed into the wilderness, Moroni sent spies into the wilderness to watch their camp. And Moroni, also, knowing of the prophecies of Alma, sent certain men unto him, desiring him that he should inquire of the Lord whither the armies of the Nephites should go to defend themselves against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the word of the Lord came unto Alma, and Alma informed the messengers of Moroni that the armies of the Lamanites were marching round about in the wilderness, that they might come over into the land of Manti that they might commence an attack on the weaker part of the people. And those messengers went and delivered the message unto Moroni. Now Moroni, leaving a part of his army in the land of Jershon, lest by any means a part of the Lamanites should come into that land and take possession of the city, 
took the remaining part of his army and marched over into the land of Manti. And he caused that all the people in that quarter of the land should gather themselves together to battle against the Lamanites, to defend their lands and their country, their rights and their liberties. Therefore they were prepared against the time of the coming of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should be secreted in the valley which was near the bank of the river Sidon, which was on the west of the river Sidon in the wilderness. And Moroni placed spies round about, that he might know when the camp of the Lamanites should come. And now, as Moroni knew the intention of the Lamanites, that it was their intention to destroy their brethren, or to subject them and bring them into bondage, that they might establish a kingdom unto themselves over all the land, and he also knowing that it was the only desire of the Nephites to preserve their lands, and their liberty, and their church. Therefore he thought it no sin that he should defend them by stratagem. Therefore he found by his spies which course the Lamanites were to take. Therefore he divided his army, and brought a part over into the valley, and concealed them on the east, and on the south of the hill Ripla. And the remainder he concealed in the west valley, on the west of the river Sidon, and so down into the borders of the land Manti. And thus having placed his army according to his desire, he was prepared to meet them. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came up on the north of the hill, where a part of the army of Moroni was concealed. And as the Lamanites had passed the hill Ripla, and came into the valley, and began to cross the river Sidon, the army which was concealed on the south of the hill, which was led by a man whose name was Lehi, and he led his army forth and encircled the Lamanites about on the east in their rear. And it came to pass that the Lamanites, when they saw the Nephites coming upon them in their rear, turned them about and began to contend with the army of Lehi. And the work of death commenced on both sides, but it was more dreadful on the part of the Lamanites, for their nakedness was exposed to the heavy blows of the Nephites with their swords and their scimitars, which brought death almost at every stroke. While on the other hand, there was now and then a man fell among the Nephites, by their swords and the loss of blood, they being shielded from the more vital parts of the body, or the more vital parts of the body being shielded from the strokes of the Lamanites, by their breastplates, and their arm shields, and their head plates, and thus the Nephites did carry on the work of death among the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites became frightened, because of the great destruction among them, even until they began to flee towards the river Sidon and they were pursued by Lehi and his men, and they were driven by Lehi into the waters of Sidon, and they crossed the waters of Sidon. And Lehi retained his armies upon the bank of the river Sidon, that they should not cross. And it came to pass that Moroni and his army met the Lamanites in the valley, on the other side of the river Sidon, and began to fall upon them, and to slay them. And the Lamanites did flee again before them, towards the land of Manti, and they were met again by the armies of Moroni. Now in this case the Lamanites did fight exceedingly, yea, never had the Lamanites been known to fight with such exceedingly great strength and courage, no, not even from the beginning. And they were inspired by the Zoramites and the Amalekites, who were their chief captains and leaders, and by Zarahemna, who was their chief captain, or their chief leader and commander. Yea, they did fight like dragons, and many of the Nephites were slain by their hands. Yea, for they did smite in two many of their headplates, and they did pierce many of their breastplates, and they did smite off many of their arms, and thus the Lamanites did smite in their fierce anger. Nevertheless, the Nephites were inspired by a better cause, for they were not fighting for monarchy nor power, but they were fighting for their homes and their liberties, their wives and their children, and their all, yea, for their rights of worship and their church and they were doing that which they felt was the duty which they owed to their God. For the Lord had said unto them, and also unto their fathers, that inasmuch as ye are not guilty of the first offence, neither the second, ye shall not suffer yourselves to be slain by the hands of your enemies. And again, the Lord has said that, ye shall defend your families even unto bloodshed. Therefore, for this cause were the Nephites contending with the Lamanites, to defend themselves, and their families, and their lands, their country, and their rights, and their religion. And it came to pass that when the men of Moroni saw the fierceness and the anger of the Lamanites, they were about to shrink and flee from them. And Moroni, perceiving their intent, sent forth and inspired their hearts with these thoughts, yea, the thoughts of their lands, their liberty, yea, their freedom from bondage. And it came to pass that they turned upon the Lamanites, and they cried with one voice unto the Lord their God, for their liberty and their freedom from bondage. And they began to stand against the Lamanites with power, and in that selfsame hour 
that they cried unto the Lord for their freedom, the Lamanites began to flee before them, and they fled even to the waters of Sidon. Now the Lamanites were more numerous, yea, by more than double the number of the Nephites. Nevertheless, they were driven, insomuch that they were gathered together in one body in the valley upon the bank of the river Sidon. Therefore the armies of Moroni encircled them about, yea, even on both sides of the river, for behold, on the east were the men of Lehi. Therefore, when Zarahemna saw the men of Lehi on the east of the river Sidon, and the armies of Moroni on the west of the river Sidon, that they were encircled about by the Nephites, they were struck with terror. Now Moroni, when he saw their terror, commanded his men that they should stop shedding their blood. Chapter 44 And it came to pass that they did stop and withdraw a pace from them. And Moroni said unto Zarahemna, Behold, Zarahemna, that we do not desire to be men of blood. Ye know that ye are in our hands, yet we do not desire to slay you. Behold, we have not come out to battle against you that we might shed your blood for power, neither do we desire to bring any one to the yoke of bondage. But this is the very cause for which ye have come against us, yea, and ye are angry with us because of our religion. But now ye behold that the Lord is with us, and ye behold that he has delivered you into our hands. And now I would that ye should understand that this is done unto us because of our religion and our faith in Christ. And now ye see that you cannot destroy this our faith. Now ye see that this is the true faith of God. Yea, ye see that God will support and keep and preserve us, so long as we are faithful unto him and unto our faith and our religion, and never will the Lord suffer that we shall be destroyed, except we should fall into transgression and deny our faith. And now, Zarahemna, I command you, in the name of that all-powerful God, who has strengthened our arms that we have gained power over you, by our faith, by our religion, and by our rites of worship, and by our church, and by the sacred support which we owe to our wives and our children, by that liberty which binds us to our lands and our country, yea, and also by the maintenance of the sacred word of God, to which we owe all our happiness, and by all that is most dear unto us. Yea, and this is not all, I command you by all the desires which ye have for life, that ye deliver up your weapons of war unto us, and we will seek not your blood, but we will spare your lives, if ye will go your way, and come not again into war against us. Now, if ye do not do this, behold, ye are in our hands, and I will command my men that they shall fall upon you, and inflict the wounds of death in your bodies, that ye may become extinct, and then we will see who shall have power over this people. Yea, we will see who shall be brought into bondage. And now it came to pass that when Zarahemna had heard these sayings, he came forth and delivered up his sword and his scimitar and his bow into the hands of Moroni, and said unto him, Behold, here are our weapons of war. We will deliver them up unto you, but we will not suffer ourselves to take an oath unto you, which we know that we shall break, and also our children, but take our weapons of war, and suffer that we may depart into the wilderness. Otherwise we will retain our swords, and we will perish or conquer. Behold, we are not of your faith, and we do not believe that it is God that has delivered us into your hands, but we believe that it is your cunning that has preserved you from our swords. Behold, it is your breastplates and your shields that have preserved you. And now when Zarahemna had made an end of speaking these words, Moroni returned the sword and the weapons of war, which he had received unto Zarahemna, saying, Behold, we will end the conflict. Now I cannot recall the words which I have spoken. Therefore, as the Lord liveth, ye shall not depart, except ye depart with an oath, that ye will not return again against us to war. Now as ye are in our hands, we will spill your blood upon the ground, or ye shall submit to the conditions which I have proposed. And now when Moroni had said these words, Zarahemna retained his sword, and he was angry with Moroni, and he rushed forward that he might slay Moroni. But as he raised his sword, behold, one of Moroni's soldiers smote it even to the earth, and it broke by the hilt, and he also smote Zarahemna that he took off his scalp, and it fell to the earth. And Zarahemna withdrew from before them into the midst of his soldiers. And it came to pass that the soldier who stood by, who smote off the scalp of Zarahemna, took up the scalp from off the ground by the hair, and laid it upon the point of his sword, and stretched it forth unto them, saying unto them with a loud voice, Even as this scalp has fallen to the earth, which is the scalp of your chief, 
so shall ye fall to the earth except ye will deliver up your weapons of war and depart with a covenant of peace now there were many when they heard these words and saw the scalp which was on the sword that were struck with fear and many came forth and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of moroni and entered into a covenant of peace and as many as entered into a covenant they suffered to depart into the wilderness now it came to pass that zarahemna was exceedingly wroth and he did stir up the remainder of his soldiers to anger to contend more powerfully against the nephites and now moroni was angry because of the stubbornness of the lamanites therefore he commanded his people that they should fall upon them and slay them and it came to pass that they began to slay them yea and the lamanites did contend with their swords and their might but behold their naked skins and their bare heads were exposed to the sharp swords of the nephites yea behold they were pierced and smitten yea and did fall exceedingly fast before the swords of the nephites and they began to be swept down even as the soldier of moroni had prophesied now zarahemna when he saw that they were all about to be destroyed cried mightily unto moroni promising that he would covenant and also his people with him if they would spare the remainder of their lives that they never would come to war again against them and it came to pass that moroni caused that the work of death should cease again among the people and he took the weapons of war from the lamanites and after they had entered into a covenant with him of peace they were suffered to depart into the wilderness now the number of their dead was not numbered because of the greatness of the number yea and the number of the dead was exceedingly great both on the nephites and on the lamanites and it came to pass that they did cast their dead into the waters of sidon and they have gone forth and are buried in the depths of the sea and the armies of the nephites or of moroni returned and came to their houses and their lands and thus ended the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and thus ended the record of alma which was written upon the plates of nephi chapter forty five behold now it came to pass that the people of nephi were exceedingly rejoiced because the lord had again delivered them out of the hands of their enemies therefore they gave thanks unto the lord their god yea and they did fast much and pray much and they did worship god with exceedingly great joy and it came to pass in the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi that alma came unto his son helaman and said unto him believest thou the words which i spake unto thee concerning those records which have been kept and helaman said unto him yea i believe and alma said again believest thou in jesus christ who shall come and he said yea i believe all the words which thou hast spoken and alma said unto him again will ye keep my commandments and he said yea i will keep thy commandments with all my heart then alma said unto him blessed art thou and the lord shall prosper thee in this land but behold i have somewhat to prophesy unto thee but what i prophesy unto thee ye shall not make known yea what i prophesy unto thee shall not be made known even until the prophecy is fulfilled therefore write the words which i shall say and these are the words behold i perceive that this very people the nephites according to the spirit of revelation which is in me in four hundred years from the time that jesus christ shall manifest himself unto them shall dwindle in unbelief yea and then shall they see the wars and pestilences yea famines and bloodshed even until the people of nephi shall become extinct yea and this because they shall dwindle in unbelief and fall into the works of darkness and lasciviousness and all manner of iniquities yea i say unto you that because they shall sin against so great light and knowledge yea i say unto you that from that day even the fourth generation shall not pass away before this great iniquity shall come and when that great day cometh behold the time very soon cometh that those who are now or the seed of those who are now numbered among the people of nephi shall no more be numbered among the people of nephi but whosoever remaineth and is not destroyed in that great and dreadful day shall be numbered among the lamanites and shall become like unto them all save it be a few who shall be called the disciples of the lord and them shall the lamanites pursue even until they shall become extinct and now because of iniquity this prophecy shall be fulfilled and now it came to pass that after alma had said these things to helaman he blessed him and also his other sons and he also blessed the earth for the righteous's sake and he said thus saith the lord god cursed shall be the land yea this land unto every nation kindred tongue and people unto destruction which do wickedly when they are fully ripe and as i have said so shall it be 
for this is the cursing and the blessing of god upon the land for the lord cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance and now when alma had said these words he blessed the church yea all those who should stand fast in the faith from that time henceforth and when alma had done this he departed out of the land of zarahemla as if to go into the land of melech and it came to pass that he was never heard of more as to his death or burial we know not of behold this we know that he was a righteous man and the same went abroad in the church that he was taken up by the spirit or buried by the hand of the lord even as moses but behold the scriptures saith the lord took moses unto himself and we suppose that he has also received alma in the spirit unto himself therefore for this cause we know nothing concerning his death and burial and now it came to pass in the commencement of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi that helaman went forth among the people to declare the word unto them for behold because of their wars with the lamanites and the many little dissensions and disturbances which had been among the people it became expedient that the word of god should be declared among them yea and that a regulation should be made throughout the church therefore helaman and his brethren went forth to establish the church again in all the land yea in every city throughout all the land which was possessed by the people of nephi and it came to pass that they did appoint priests and teachers throughout all the land over all the churches and now it came to pass that after helaman and his brethren had appointed priests and teachers over the churches that there arose a dissension among them and they would not give heed to the words of helaman and his brethren but they grew proud being lifted up in their hearts because of their exceedingly great riches therefore they grew rich in their own eyes and would not give heed to their words to walk uprightly before god end of alma chapter forty two through forty five Recording by Sarah Luann Alma chapters 46 through 48 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma chapters 46 through 48. Alma chapter 46 and it came to pass that as many as would not hearken to the words of helaman and his brethren were gathered together against their brethren and now behold they were exceedingly wroth insomuch that they were determined to slay them now the leader of those who were wroth against their brethren was a large and a strong man and his name was amalickiah and amalickiah was desirous to be a king and those people who were wroth were also desirous that he should be their king and they were the greater part of them the lower judges of the land and they were seeking for power and they had been led by the flatteries of amalickiah that if they would support him and establish him to be their king that he would make them rulers over the people thus they were led away by amalickiah to dissensions notwithstanding the preaching of helaman and his brethren yea notwithstanding their exceedingly great care over the church for they were high priests over the church and there were many in the church who believed in the flattering words of amalickiah therefore they dissented even from the church and thus were the affairs of the people of nephi exceedingly precarious and dangerous notwithstanding their great victory which they had had over the lamanites and their great rejoicings which they had had because of their deliverance by the hand of the lord thus we see how quick the children of men do forget the lord their god yea how quick to do iniquity and to be led away by the evil one yea and we also see the great wickedness one very wicked man can cause to take place among the children of men yea we see that amalickiah because he was a man of cunning device and a man of many flattering words that he led away the hearts of many people to do wickedly yea and to seek to destroy the church of god and to destroy the foundation of liberty which god had granted unto them or which blessing god had sent upon the face of the land for the righteous sake and now it came to pass that when moroni who was the chief commander of the armies of the nephites had heard of these dissensions he was angry with the malachiah and it came to pass that he rent his coat and he took a piece thereof and wrote upon it in memory of our god our religion and freedom and our peace our wives 
and our children, and he fastened it upon the end of a pole. And he fastened on his headplate, and his breastplate, and his shields, and girded on his armor about his loins, and he took the pole which had on the end thereof his rent coat, and he called it the title of liberty, and he bowed himself to the earth, and he prayed mightily unto his God for the blessings of liberty to rest upon his brethren, so long as there should a band of Christians remain to possess the land. For thus were all the true believers of Christ who belonged to the church of God called by those who did not belong to the church. And those who did belong to the church were faithful. Yea, all those who were true believers in Christ took upon them gladly the name of Christ, or Christians, as they were called, because of their belief in Christ who should come. And therefore at this time Moroni prayed that the cause of the Christians and the freedom of the land might be favored. And it came to pass that when he had poured out his soul to God, he named all the land which was south of the land desolation. Yea, and in fine all the land, both on the north and on the south, a chosen land, and a land of liberty. And he said, Surely God shall not suffer that we who are despised, because we take upon us the name of Christ, shall be trodden down and destroyed, until we bring it upon us by our own transgressions. And when Moroni had said these words, he went forth among the people, waving the rent part of his garment in the air, that all might see the writing which he had written upon the rent part, and crying with a loud voice, saying, Behold, whosoever will maintain this title upon the land, let them come forth in the strength of the Lord, and enter into a covenant that they will maintain their rights and their religion, that the Lord God may bless them. And it came to pass that when Moroni had proclaimed these words, Behold, the people came running together with their armor girded about their loins, rending their garments in token, or as a covenant that they would not forsake the Lord their God. Or, in other words, if they should transgress the commandments of God, or fall into transgression, and be ashamed to take upon them the name of Christ, the Lord should rend them even as they had rent their garments. Now this was the covenant which they made. And they cast their garments at the feet of Moroni, saying, We covenant with our God that we shall be destroyed even as our brethren in the land northward, if we shall fall into transgression. Yea, he may cast us at the feet of our enemies, even as we have cast our garments at the feet to be trodden under foot, if we shall fall into transgression. Moroni said unto them, Behold, we are a remnant of the seed of Jacob. Yea, we are a remnant of the seed of Joseph, whose coat was rent by his brethren into many pieces. Yea, and now behold, let us remember to keep the commandments of God, or our garments shall be rent by our brethren, and we be cast into prison, or be sold, or be slain. Yea, let us preserve our liberty as a remnant of Joseph. Yea, let us remember the words of Jacob before his death. For behold, he saw that a part of the remnant of the coat of Joseph was preserved and had not decayed. And he said, Even as this remnant of garment of my son hath been preserved, so shall a remnant of the seed of my son be preserved by the hand of God, and be taken unto himself, while the remainder of the seed of Joseph shall perish, even as the remnant of his garment. Now behold, this giveth my soul sorrow, nevertheless my soul hath joy in my son, because of that part of his seed which shall be taken unto God. Now behold, this was the language of Jacob. And now who knoweth but that the remnant of the seed of Joseph, which shall perish as his garment, are those who have dissented from us? Yea, and even it shall be ourselves, if we do not stand fast in the faith of Christ. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he went forth, and also sent forth in all the parts of the land where there were dissensions, and gathered together all the people who were desirous to maintain their liberty, to stand against Amalekiah, and those who had dissented, who were called Amalekiahites. And it came to pass that when Amalekiah saw that the people of Moroni were more numerous than the Amalekiahites, and he also saw that his people were doubtful concerning the justice of the cause in which they had undertaken, Therefore, fearing that he should not gain the point, he took those of his people who would, and departed into the land of Nephi. Now Moroni thought it was not expedient that the Lamanites should have any more strength. Therefore he thought to cut off the people of Amalickiah, or to take them and bring them back, and put Amalickiah to death. 
yea, for he knew that he would stir up the Lamanites to anger against them, and cause them to come to battle against them. And this he knew that Amalickiah would do, that he might obtain his purposes. Therefore Moroni thought it was expedient that he should take his armies, who had gathered themselves together, and armed themselves, and entered into a covenant to keep the peace. And it came to pass that he took his army, and marched out with his tents into the wilderness, to cut off the course of Amalickiah in the wilderness. And it came to pass that he did according to his desires, and marched forth into the wilderness, and headed the armies of Amalickiah. And it came to pass that Amalickiah fled with a small number of his men, and the remainder were delivered up into the hands of Moroni, and were taken back into the land of Zarahemla. Now Moroni, being a man who was appointed by the chief judges and the voice of the people, therefore he had power, according to his will with the armies of the Nephites, to establish and to exercise authority over them. And it came to pass that whomsoever of the Amalickiahites that would not enter into a covenant to support the cause of freedom, that they might maintain a free government, he caused to be put to death, and there were but few who denied the covenant of freedom. And it came to pass also that he caused the title of liberty to be hoisted upon every tower which was in all the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And thus Moroni planted the standard of liberty among the Nephites. And they began to have peace again in the land. And thus they did maintain peace in the land until nearly the end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges. And Helaman and the high priests did also maintain order in the church. Yea, even for the space of four years did they have much peace and rejoicing in the church. And it came to pass that there were many who died, firmly believing that their souls were redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus they went out of the world rejoicing. And there were some who died with fevers, which at some seasons of the year were very frequent in the land, but not so much so with fevers, because of the excellent qualities of the many plants and roots which God had prepared to remove the cause of diseases, to which men were subject by the nature of the climate. But there were many who died with old age, and those who died in the faith of Christ are happy in him, as we must needs suppose. Alma chapter 47 now we will return in our record to Amalickiah and those who had fled with him into the wilderness. For behold, he had taken those who went with him, and went up in the land of Nephi among the Lamanites, and did stir up the Lamanites to anger against the people of Nephi, insomuch that the king of the Lamanites sent a proclamation throughout all his land among all his people, that they should gather themselves together again to go to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that when the proclamation had gone forth among them, they were exceedingly afraid, yea, they feared to displease the king, and they also feared to go to battle against the Nephites, lest they should lose their lives. And it came to pass that they would not, or the more part of them, would not obey the commandments of the king. And now it came to pass that the king was wroth because of their disobedience, therefore he gave Amalickiah the command of that part of his army which was obedient unto his commands, and commanded him that he should go forth and compel them to arms. Now behold, this was the desire of Amalickiah, for he, being a very subtle man to do evil, therefore he laid the plans in his heart to dethrone the king of the Lamanites. And now he had got the command of those parts of the Lamanites who were in favor of the king, and he sought to gain the favor of those who were not obedient. Therefore he went forward to the place which was called Oneida, for thither had all the Lamanites fled. For they discovered the army coming, and, supposing that they were coming to destroy them, therefore they fled to Oneida, to the place of arms. And they had appointed a man to be a king and a leader over them, being fixed in their minds with a determined resolution that they would not be subjected to go against the Nephites. And it came to pass that they had gathered themselves together upon the top of the mount which was called Antipas, in preparation to battle. Now it was not Amalickiah's intention to give them battle according to the commandments of the king, but behold, it was his intention to gain favor with the armies of the Lamanites, that he might place himself at their head and dethrone the king and take possession of the kingdom. And behold, it came to pass that he caused his army to pitch their tents in the valley which was near the Mount Antipas. And it came to pass that when it was night, he sent a secret embassy into the Mount Antipas, desiring that the leader of those who were upon the mount, whose name was 
Lehontai, that he should come down to the foot of the mount, for he desired to speak with him. And it came to pass that when Lehontai received the message, he durst not go down to the foot of the mount. And it came to pass that Amalickiah sent again the second time, desiring him to come down. And it came to pass that Lehontai would not, and he sent again the third time. And it came to pass that when Amalickiah found that he could not get Lehontai to come down off from the mount, he went up into the mount, nearly to Lehontai's camp, and he sent again the fourth time his message unto Lehontai, desiring that he would come down, and that he would bring his guards with him. And it came to pass that when Lehontai had come down with his guards to Amalickiah, that Amalickiah desired him to come down with his army in the night time, and surround those men in their camps over whom the king had given him command, and that he would deliver them up into Lehontai's hands, if he would make him, Amalickiah, a second leader over the whole army. And it came to pass that Lehontai came down with his men and surrounded the men of Amalickiah, so that before they awoke at the dawn of day they were surrounded by the armies of Lehontai. And it came to pass that when they saw that they were surrounded, they pled with Amalickiah, that he would suffer them to fall in with their brethren, that they might not be destroyed. Now this was the very thing which Amalickiah desired. And it came to pass that he delivered his men contrary to the commands of the king. Now this was the thing that Amalickiah desired, that he might accomplish his designs in dethroning the king. Now it was the custom among the Lamanites, if their chief leader was killed, to appoint the second leader to be their chief leader. And it came to pass that Amalickiah caused that one of his servants should administer poison by degrees to Lehontai, that he died. Now when Lehontai was dead, the Lamanites appointed Amalickiah to be their leader and their chief commander. And it came to pass that Amalickiah marched with his armies, for he had gained his desires, to the land of Nephi, to the city of Nephi, which was the chief city. And the king came out to meet him with his guards, for he supposed that Amalickiah had fulfilled his commands, and that Amalickiah had gathered together so great an army to go against the Nephites to battle. But behold, as the king came out to meet him, Amalickiah caused that his servants should go forth to meet the king, and they went and bowed themselves before the king, as if to reverence him because of his greatness. And it came to pass that the king put forth his hand to raise them, as was the custom with the Lamanites, as a token of peace, which custom they had taken from the Nephites. And it came to pass that when he had raised the first from the ground, behold, he stabbed the king to the heart, and he fell to the earth. Now the servants of the king fled, and the servants of Amalickiah raised a cry, saying, Behold, the servants of the king have stabbed him to the heart, and he has fallen, and they have fled. Behold, come and see. And it came to pass that Amalickiah commanded that his army should march forth and see what had happened to the king. And when they had come to the spot and found the king lying in his gore, Amalickiah pretended to be wroth and said, Whosoever loved the king, let him go forth and pursue his servants that they may be slain. And it came to pass that all they who loved the king, when they heard these words, came forth and pursued after the servants of the king. Now when the servants of the king saw an army pursuing after them, they were frightened again, and fled into the wilderness, and came over into the land of Zarahemla, and joined the people of Ammon. And the army which pursued after them returned, having pursued after them in vain. And thus Amalickiah by his fraud gained the hearts of the people. And it came to pass on the morrow he entered the city Nephi with his armies and took possession of the city. And now it came to pass that the queen, when she had heard that the king was slain, for Amalickiah had sent an embassy to the queen informing her that the king had been slain by his servants, that he had pursued them with his army, but it was in vain, and they had made their escape. Therefore, when the queen had received this message, she sent unto Amalickiah, desiring him that he would spare the people of the city and she also desired him that he should come in unto her, and she also desired him that he should bring witnesses with him to testify concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah took the same servant who slew the king and all them who were with him, and went in unto the queen, unto the place where she sat, and they all testified unto her that the king was slain by his own servants. And they said also, They have fled. Does not this testify against them? And thus they satisfied the queen concerning the death of the king. 
and it came to pass that Amalickiah sought the favor of the queen, and took her unto him to wife, and thus by his fraud, and by the assistance of his cunning servants, he obtained the kingdom. Yea, he was acknowledged king throughout all the land among all the people of the Lamanites, who were composed of the Lamanites, and the Lemuelites, and the Ishmaelites, and all the dissenters of the Nephites from the reign of Nephi down to the present time. Now these dissenters, having the same instruction, then the same information of the Nephites, yea, having been instructed in the same knowledge of the Lord, nevertheless it is strange to relate, not long after their dissensions, they became more hardened and impenitent, and more wild, wicked, and ferocious than the Lamanites, drinking in with the traditions of the Lamanites, giving way to indolence and all manner of lasciviousness, yea, entirely forgetting the Lord their God. Alma, chapter 48. And now it came to pass that as soon as Amalickiah had obtained the kingdom, he began to inspire the hearts of the Lamanites against the people of Nephi. Yea, he did appoint men to speak unto the Lamanites from their towers against the Nephites. And thus he did inspire their hearts against the Nephites, insomuch that in the latter end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges, he having accomplished his designs thus far, yea, having been made king over the Lamanites, he sought also to reign over all the land, yea, and all the people who were in the land, the Nephites as well as the Lamanites. Therefore he had accomplished his design, for he had hardened the hearts of the Lamanites, and blinded their minds, and stirred them up to anger, insomuch that he had gathered together a numerous host to go to battle against the Nephites. For he was determined, because of the greatness of the number of his people, to overpower the Nephites, and to bring them into bondage. And thus he did appoint chief captains of the Zoramites, they being the most acquainted with the strength of the Nephites, and their places of resort, and the weakest parts of their cities. Therefore he appointed them to be chief captains over his armies, and it came to pass that they took their camp, and moved forth toward the land of Zarahemla in the wilderness. Now it came to pass that while Amalickiah had thus been obtaining power, by fraud and deceit, Moroni, on the other hand, had been preparing the minds of the people to be faithful unto the Lord their God. Yea, he had been strengthening the armies of the Nephites, and erecting small forts or places of resort, throwing up banks of earth round about to enclose his armies, and also building walls of stone to encircle them about, round about their cities and the borders of their lands, yea, all round about the land. And in their weakest fortifications he did place the greater number of men, and thus he did fortify and strengthen the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And thus he was preparing to support their liberty, their lands, their wives, and their children, and their peace, that they might live unto the Lord their God, and that they might maintain that which was called by their enemies the cause of Christians. And Moroni was a strong and a mighty man. He was a man of a perfect understanding, yea, a man that did not delight in bloodshed, a man whose soul did joy in the liberty and the freedom of his country and his brethren from bondage and slavery. Yea, a man whose heart did swell with thanksgiving to his God for the many privileges and blessings which he bestowed upon his people, a man who did labor exceedingly for the welfare and safety of his people. Yea, and he was a man who was firm in the faith of Christ, and he had sworn with an oath to defend his people, his rights, and his country, and his religion even to the loss of his blood. Now the Nephites were taught to defend themselves against their enemies even to the shedding of blood, if it were necessary. Yea, and they were also taught never to give an offense. Yea, and never to raise the sword, except it were against an enemy, except it were to preserve their lives. And this was their faith, that by so doing God would prosper them in the land. Or in other words, if they were faithful in keeping the commandments of God, that he would prosper them in the land. Yea, warn them to flee, or to prepare for war, according to their danger and also that God would make it known unto them whither they should go to defend themselves against their enemies, and by so doing the Lord would deliver them. And this was the faith of Moroni, and his heart did glory in it, not in the shedding of blood, but in doing good, in preserving his people, yea, in keeping the commandments of God, yea, and resisting iniquity. Yea, verily, verily, I say unto you, if all men had been and were and ever would be like unto Moroni, Behold, the very powers of hell would have been shaken forever, 
yea, the devil would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. Behold, he was a man like unto Ammon, the son of Mosiah, yea, and even the other sons of Mosiah, yea, and also Alma and his sons, for they were all men of God. Now behold, Helaman and his brethren were no less serviceable unto the people than was Moroni, for they did preach the word of God, and they did baptize unto repentance all men whosoever would hearken unto their words. And thus they went forth, and the people did humble themselves because of their words, insomuch that they were highly favored of the Lord. And thus they were free from wars and contentions among themselves, yea, even for the space of four years. But as I have said, in the latter end of the nineteenth year, yea, notwithstanding their peace amongst themselves, they were compelled reluctantly to contend with their brethren the Lamanites. Yea, and in fine, their wars never did cease for the space of many years with the Lamanites, notwithstanding their much reluctance. Now they were sorry to take up arms against the Lamanites, because they did not delight in the shedding of blood. Yea, and this was not all. They were sorry to be the means of sending so many of their brethren out of this world into an eternal world, unprepared to meet their God. Nevertheless, they could not suffer to lay down their lives, that their wives and their children should be massacred by the barbarous cruelty of those who were once their brethren, yea, and had dissented from their church, and had left them and had gone to destroy them by joining the Lamanites. Yea, they could not bear that their brethren should rejoice over the blood of the Nephites, so long as there were any who should keep the commandments of God. For the promise of the Lord was, if they should keep his commandments, they would prosper in the land. End of Alma, chapters 46 through 48. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 49 through 51 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 49 through 51. Alma, chapter 49. And now it came to pass, in the eleventh month of the nineteenth year, on the tenth day of the month, the armies of the Lamanites were seen approaching towards the land of Ammonihah. And behold, the city had been rebuilt, and Moroni had stationed an army by the borders of the city, and they had cast up dirt round about to shield them from the arrows and the stones of the Lamanites. For behold, they fought with stones and arrows. Behold, I said, that the city of Ammonihah had been rebuilt. I say unto you, yea, that it was in part rebuilt, and because the Lamanites had destroyed it once because of the iniquity of the people, they supposed that it would again become an easy prey for them. But behold, how great was their disappointment. For behold, the Nephites had dug up a ridge of earth round about them, which was so high that the Lamanites could not cast their stones and their arrows at them, that they might take effect. Neither could they come upon them, save it was, by their place of entrance. Now at this time the chief captains of the Lamanites were astonished exceedingly because of the wisdom of the Nephites in preparing their places of security. Now the leaders of the Lamanites had supposed, because of the greatness of their numbers, yea, they supposed that they should be privileged to come upon them as they had hitherto done, Yea, and they had also prepared themselves with shields, and with breastplates, and they had also prepared themselves with garments of skins, yea, very thick garments, to cover their nakedness. And being thus prepared, they supposed that they should easily overpower and subject their brethren to the yoke of bondage, or slay and massacre them according to their pleasure. But behold, to their uttermost astonishment, they were prepared for them, in a manner which never had been known among the children of Lehi. Now they were prepared for the Lamanites to battle after the manner of the instructions of Moroni. And it came to pass that the Lamanites, or the Amalekiahites, were exceedingly astonished at their manner of preparation for war. Now if King Amalekiah had come down out of the land of Nephi at the head of his army, perhaps he would have caused the Lamanites to have attacked the Nephites at the city of Ammonihah. For behold, he did care not for the blood of his people. But, behold, Amalickiah did not come down himself to battle. 
and behold, his chief captains durst not attack the Nephites at the city of Ammonihah, for Moroni had altered the management of affairs among the Nephites, insomuch that the Lamanites were disappointed in their places of retreat, and they could not come upon them. Therefore they retreated into the wilderness, and took their camp, and marched towards the land of Noah, supposing that to be the next best place for them to come against the Nephites. For they knew not that Moroni had fortified, or had built forts of security, for every city in all the land round about. Therefore they marched forward to the land of Noah with a firm determination. Yea, their chief captains came forward and took an oath that they would destroy the people of that city. But behold, to their astonishment, the city of Noah, which had hitherto been a weak place, had now by the means of Moroni become strong, yea, even to exceed the strength of the city Ammonihah. And now behold, this was wisdom in Moroni for he had supposed that they would be frightened at the city Ammonihah, and as the city of Noah had hitherto been the weakest part of the land, therefore they would march thither to battle, and thus it was according to his desires. And behold, Moroni had appointed Lehi to be chief captain over the men of that city. And it was that same Lehi who fought with the Lamanites in the valley on the east of the river Sidon. And now behold, it came to pass that when the Lamanites had found that Lehi commanded the city, they were again disappointed, for they feared Lehi exceedingly. Nevertheless, their chief captains had sworn with an oath to attack the city. Therefore they brought up their armies. Now behold, the Lamanites could not get into their forts of security by any other way save by the entrance, because of the highness of the bank which had been thrown up, and the depth of the ditch which had been dug round about, save it were by the entrance. And thus were the Nephites prepared to destroy all such as should attempt to climb up to enter the fort by any other way, by casting over stones and arrows at them. Thus they were prepared, yea, a body of their strongest men, with their swords and their slings, to smite down all who should attempt to come into their place of security by the place of entrance. And thus were they prepared to defend themselves against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the captains of the Lamanites brought up their armies before the place of entrance, and began to contend with the Nephites to get into their place of security. But, behold, they were driven back from time to time, insomuch that they were slain with an immense slaughter. And when they found that they could not obtain power over the Nephites by the pass, they began to dig down their banks of earth, that they might obtain a pass to their armies, that they might have an equal chance to fight. But, behold, in these attempts they were swept off by the stones and arrows which were thrown at them, and instead of filling up their ditches by pulling down the banks of earth, they were filled up in a measure with their dead and wounded bodies. Thus the Nephites had all power over their enemies, and thus the Lamanites did attempt to destroy the Nephites until their chief captains were all slain. Yea, and more than a thousand of the Lamanites were slain, while on the other hand, there was not a single soul of the Nephites which was slain. There were about fifty who were wounded, who had been exposed to the arrows of the Lamanites through the pass. But they were shielded by their shields and their breastplates and their headplates, insomuch that their wounds were upon their legs, many of which were very severe. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that their chief captains were all slain, they fled into the wilderness. And it came to pass that they returned to the land of Nephi to inform their king Amalickiah, who was a Nephite by birth, concerning their great loss. And it came to pass that he was exceedingly angry with his people, because he had not obtained his desire over the Nephites, he had not subjected them to the yoke of bondage. Yea, he was exceedingly wroth, and he did curse God and also Moroni, swearing with an oath that he would drink his blood and this because Moroni had kept the commandments of God in preparing for the safety of his people. And it came to pass that on the other hand the people of Nephi did thank the Lord their God, because of his matchless power in delivering them from the hands of their enemies. And thus ended the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Yea, and there was continual peace among them, and exceedingly great prosperity in the church because of their heed and diligence which they gave unto the word of God which was declared unto them by Helaman, and Shiblon, and Corianton, and Ammon, and his brethren, yea, and by all those who had been ordained by the holy order of God, being baptized unto repentance, and sent forth to preach among the people.
Alma chapter 50 And now it came to pass that Moroni did not stop making preparations for war, or to defend his people against the Lamanites. For he caused that his armies should commence in the commencement of the twentieth year of the reign of the judges, that they should commence in digging up heaps of earth round about all the cities throughout all the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And upon the top of these ridges of earth he caused that there should be timbers, yea, works of timbers, built up to the height of a man, round about the cities. And he caused that upon those works of timbers there should be a frame of pickets, built upon the timbers round about, and they were strong and high. And he caused towers to be erected, that overlooked those works of pickets. And he caused places of security to be built upon those towers, that the stones and the arrows of the Lamanites could not hurt them. And they were prepared that they could cast stones from the top thereof according to their pleasure and their strength, and slay him who should attempt to approach near the walls of the city. Thus Moroni did prepare strongholds against the coming of their enemies round about every city in all the land. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should go forth into the east wilderness. Yea, and they went forth and drove all the Lamanites who were in the east wilderness into their own lands, which were south of the lands of Zarahemla. And the land of Nephi did run in a straight course from the east sea to the west. And it came to pass that when Moroni had driven all the Lamanites out of the east wilderness, which was north of the lands of their own possessions, he caused that the inhabitants who were in the land of Zarahemla and in the land round about should go forth into the east wilderness, even to the borders by the seashore, and possess the land. And he also placed armies on the south in the borders of their possessions, and caused them to erect fortifications that they might secure their armies and their people from the hands of their enemies. And thus he cut off all the strongholds of the Lamanites in the east wilderness, yea, and also on the west, fortifying the line between the Nephites and the Lamanites, between the land of Zarahemla and the land of Nephi, from the west sea, running by the head of the river Sidon, the Nephites possessing all the land northward, yea, even all the land which was northward of the land bountiful, according to their pleasure. Thus Moroni, with his armies, which did increase daily because of the assurance of protection which his works did bring forth unto them, did seek to cut off the strength and the power of the Lamanites from off the lands of their possessions, that they should have no power upon the lands of their possession. And it came to pass that the Nephites began the foundation of a city, and they called the name of the city Moroni, and it was by the East Sea, and it was on the south by the line of the possessions of the Lamanites. And they also began a foundation for a city between the city of Moroni and the city of Aaron, joining the borders of Aaron and Moroni. And they called the name of the city, or the land, Nephihah. And they also began in that same year to build many cities on the north, one in a particular manner which they called Lehi, which was in the north by the borders of the seashore. And thus ended the twentieth year. And in these prosperous circumstances were the people of Nephi in the commencement of the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And they did prosper exceedingly, and they became exceedingly rich. Yea, and they did multiply and wax strong in the land. And thus we see how merciful and just are all the dealings of the Lord to the fulfilling of all his words unto the children of men. Yea, we can behold that his words are verified, even at this time which he spake unto Lehi, saying, Blessed art thou, and thy children, and they shall be blessed, inasmuch as they shall keep my commandments, they shall prosper in the land. But remember, inasmuch as they will not keep my commandments, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And we see that these promises have been verified to the people of Nephi. For it has been their quarrelings and their contentions, yea, their murderings and their plunderings, their idolatry, their whoredoms and their abominations which were among themselves, which brought upon them their wars and their destructions. And those who were faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord were delivered at all times, whilst thousands of their wicked brethren have been consigned to bondage, or to perish by the sword, or to dwindle in unbelief and mingle with the Lamanites. But behold, there never was a happier time among the people of Nephi since the days of Nephi than in the days of Moroni, yea, even at this time, in the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that the twenty and second year of the reign of the judges also ended in peace, yea, and also the twenty and third year. 
and it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges there would also have been peace among the people of nephi had it not been for a contention which took place among them concerning the land of lehi and the land of morianton which joined upon the borders of lehi both of which were on the borders by the seashore for behold the people who possessed the land of morianton did claim a part of the land of lehi therefore there began to be a warm contention between them insomuch that the people of morianton took up arms against their brethren and they were determined by the sword to slay them but behold the people who possessed the land of lehi fled to the camp of moroni and appealed unto him for assistance for behold they were not in the wrong and it came to pass that when the people of morianton who were led by a man whose name was morianton found that the people of lehi had fled to the camp of moroni they were exceedingly fearful lest the army of moroni should come upon them and destroy them therefore morianton put it into their hearts that they should flee to the land which was northward which was covered with large bodies of water and take possession of the land which was northward and behold they would have carried this plan into effect which would have been a cause to have been lamented but behold morianton being a man of much passion therefore he was angry with one of his maid servants and he fell upon her and beat her much and it came to pass that she fled and came over to the camp of moroni and told moroni all things concerning the matter and also concerning their intentions to flee into the land northward now behold the people who were in the land bountiful or rather moroni feared that they would hearken to the words of morianton and unite with his people and thus he would obtain possession of those parts of the land which would lay a foundation for serious consequences among the people of nephi yea which consequences would lead to the overthrow of their liberty therefore moroni sent an army with their camp to head the people of morianton to stop their flight into the land northward and it came to pass that they did not head them until they had come to the borders of the land desolation and there they did head them by the narrow pass which led by the sea into the land northward yea by the sea on the west and on the east and it came to pass that the army which was sent by moroni which was led by a man whose name was teancum did meet the people of morianton and so stubborn were the people of morianton being inspired by his wickedness and his flattering words that a battle commenced between them in the which teancum did slay morianton and defeat his army and took them prisoners and returned to the camp of moroni and thus ended the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and thus were the people of morianton brought back and upon their covenanting to keep the peace they were restored to the land of morianton and a union took place between them and the people of lehi and they were also restored to their lands and it came to pass that in the same year that the people of nephi had peace restored unto them that nephiha the second chief judge died having filled the judgment seat with perfect uprightness before god nevertheless he had refused alma to take possession of those records and those things which were esteemed by alma and his fathers to be most sacred therefore alma had conferred them upon his son helaman behold it came to pass that the son of nephiha was appointed to fill the judgment seat in the stead of his father yea he was appointed chief judge and governor over the people with an oath and sacred ordinance to judge righteously and to keep the peace and the freedom of the people and to grant unto them their sacred privileges to worship the lord their god yea to support and maintain the cause of god all his days and to bring the wicked to justice according to their crime now behold his name was pehoran and pehoran did fill the seat of his father and did commence his reign in the end of the twenty and fourth year over the people of nephi alma chapter fifty one and now it came to pass in the commencement of the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi they having established peace between the people of lehi and the people of morianton concerning their laws and having commenced the twenty and fifth year in peace nevertheless they did not long maintain an entire peace in the land for there began to be a contention among the people concerning the chief judge pahoran for behold there were a part of the people who desired that a few particular points of the law should be altered 
But behold, Pehoran would not alter nor suffer the law to be altered. Therefore he did not hearken to those who had sent in their voices with their petitions concerning the altering of the law. Therefore those who were desirous that the law should be altered were angry with him, and desired that he should no longer be chief judge over the land. Therefore there arose a warm dispute concerning the matter, but not unto bloodshed. And it came to pass that those who were desirous that Pehoran should be dethroned from the judgment seat were called king men, for they were desirous that the law should be altered in a manner to overthrow the free government and to establish a king over the land. And those who were desirous that Pehoran should remain chief judge over the land took upon them the name of freemen, and thus was the division among them, for the freemen had sworn or covenanted to maintain their rights and the privileges of their religion by a free government. And it came to pass that this matter of their contention was settled by the voice of the people. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came in favor of the freemen. And Pehoran retained the judgment seat, which caused much rejoicing among the brethren of Pehoran, and also many of the people of liberty, who also put the king men to silence, that they durst not oppose, but were obliged to maintain the cause of freedom. Now those who were in favor of kings were those of high birth, and they sought to be kings, and they were supported by those who sought power and authority over the people. But behold, this was a critical time for such contentions to be among the people of Nephi. For behold, Amalickiah had again stirred up the hearts of the people of the Lamanites against the people of the Nephites. And he was gathering together soldiers from all parts of his land, and arming them, and preparing for war with all diligence, for he had sworn to drink the blood of Moroni. But behold, we shall see that his promise which he made was rash. Nevertheless, he did prepare himself and his armies to come to battle against the Nephites. Now his armies were not so great as they had hitherto been, because of the many thousands who had been slain by the hand of the Nephites. But notwithstanding their great loss, Amalickiah had gathered together a wonderfully great army, insomuch that he feared not to come down to the land of Zarahemla. Yea, even Amalickiah did himself come down at the head of the Lamanites, and it was in the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges, and it was at the same time that they had begun to settle the affairs of their contentions concerning the chief judge Pehoran. And it came to pass that when the men who were called king men had heard that the Lamanites were coming down to battle against them, they were glad in their hearts, and they refused to take up arms, for they were so wroth with the chief judge and also with the people of liberty that they would not take up arms to defend their country. And it came to pass that when Moroni saw this, and also saw that the Lamanites were coming into the borders of the land, he was exceedingly wroth because of the stubbornness of those people whom he had labored with so much diligence to preserve. Yea, he was exceedingly wroth, his soul was filled with anger against them. And it came to pass that he sent a petition with the voice of the people unto the governor of the land, desiring that he should read it, and give him, Moroni, power to compel those dissenters to defend their country or to put them to death for it was his first care to put an end to such contentions and dissensions among the people for behold this had been hitherto a cause of all their destruction and it came to pass that it was granted according to the voice of the people and it came to pass that moroni commanded that his army should go against those king men to pull down their pride and their nobility and to level them with the earth or they should take up arms and support the cause of liberty. And it came to pass that the armies did march forth against them, and they did pull down their pride and their nobility, insomuch that as they did lift their weapons of war to fight against the men of Moroni, they were hewn down and leveled to the earth. And it came to pass that there were four thousand of those dissenters who were hewn down by the sword, and those of their leaders who were not slain in battle were taken and cast into prison, for there was no time for their trials at this period. And the remainder of those dissenters, rather than be smitten down to the earth by the sword, yielded to the standard of liberty, and were compelled to hoist the title of liberty upon their towers and in their cities, and to take up arms in defense of their country. And thus Moroni put an end to those king men, that there were not any known by the appellation of king men, and thus he put an end to the stubbornness and the pride of those people who professed the blood of nobility. 
but they were brought down to humble themselves like unto their brethren and to fight valiantly for their freedom from bondage behold it came to pass that while moroni was thus breaking down the wars and contentions among his own people and subjecting them to peace and civilization and making regulations to prepare for war against the lamanites behold the lamanites had come into the land of moroni which was in the borders by the seashore and it came to pass that the nephites were not sufficiently strong in the city of moroni therefore amalickiah did drive them slaying many and it came to pass that amalickiah took possession of the city yea possession of all their fortifications and those who fled out of the city of moroni came to the city of nephiha and also the people of the city of lehi gathered themselves together and made preparations and were ready to receive the lamanites to battle but it came to pass that amalickiah would not suffer the lamanites to go against the city of nephiha to battle but kept them down by the seashore leaving men in every city to maintain and defend it and thus he went on taking possession of many cities the city of nephiha and the city of lehi and the city of morianton and the city of omner and the city of gid and the city of mulek all of which were on the east borders by the seashore and thus had the lamanites obtained by the cunning of amalickiah so many cities by their numberless hosts all of which were strongly fortified after the manner of the fortifications of moroni all of which afforded strongholds for the lamanites and it came to pass that they marched to the borders of the land bountiful driving the nephites before them and slaying many but it came to pass that they were met by teancum who had slain morianton and had headed his people in his flight and it came to pass that he headed amalickiah also as he was marching forth with his numerous army that he might take possession of the land bountiful and also the land northward but behold he met with a disappointment by being repulsed by teancum and his men for they were great warriors for every man of teancum did exceed the lamanites in their strength and in their skill of war insomuch that they did gain advantage over the lamanites and it came to pass that they did harass them insomuch that they did slay them even until it was dark and it came to pass that teancum and his men did pitch their tents in the borders of the land bountiful and amalickiah did pitch his tents in the borders on the beach by the seashore and after this manner were they driven and it came to pass that when the night had come teancum and his servant stole forth and went out by night and went into the camp of amalickiah and behold sleep had overpowered them because of their much fatigue which was caused by the labors and heat of the day and it came to pass that teancum stole privily into the tent of the king and put a javelin to his heart and he did cause the death of the king immediately that he did not awake his servants and he returned again privily to his own camp and behold his men were asleep and he awoke them and told them all the things which he had done and he caused that his army should stand in readiness lest the lamanites had awakened and should come upon them and thus ended the twenty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi and thus endeth the days of amalickiah End of Alma chapters 49 through 51. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma chapters 52 through 55 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 52 through 55. Alma, chapter 52. And now it came to pass, in the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, over the people of Nephi, behold, when the Lamanites awoke on the first morning of the first month, behold they found amalickiah was dead in his own tent and they also saw that teancum was ready to give them battle on that day and now when the lamanites saw this they were affrighted and they abandoned their design and marching into the land northward and retreated with all their army into the city of mulek and sought protection in their fortifications 
And it came to pass that the brother of Amalickiah was appointed king over the people, and his name was Amaron. Thus King Amaron, the brother of King Amalickiah, was appointed to reign in his stead. And it came to pass that he did command that his people should maintain those cities which they had taken by the shedding of blood, for they had not taken any cities, save they had lost much blood. And now Teancum saw that the Lamanites were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken, and those parts of the land which they had obtained possession of. And also seeing the enormity of their number, Teancum thought it was not expedient that he should attempt to attack them in their forts. But he kept his men round about, as if making preparations for war. Yea, and truly, he was preparing to defend himself against them, by casting up walls round about and preparing places of resort. And it came to pass that he kept thus preparing for war, until Moroni had sent a large number of men to strengthen his army. And Moroni also sent orders unto him, that he should retain all the prisoners who fell into his hands. For as the Lamanites had taken many prisoners, that he should retain all the prisoners of the Lamanites as a ransom for those whom the Lamanites had taken. And he also sent orders unto him that he should fortify the land bountiful, and secure the narrow pass which led into the land northward, lest the Lamanites should obtain that point, and should have power to harass them on every side. And Moroni also sent unto him, desiring him that he would be faithful in maintaining that quarter of the land, and that he would seek every opportunity to scourge the Lamanites in that quarter, as much as was in his power, that perhaps he might take again by stratagem, or some other way those cities which had been taken out of their hands, and that he also would fortify and strengthen the cities round about which had not fallen into the hands of the Lamanites. And he also said unto him, I would come unto you, but behold, the Lamanites are upon us in the borders of the land by the west sea, and behold, I go against them, therefore I cannot come unto you. Now the king, Amaron, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and had made known unto the queen concerning the death of his brother, and had gathered together a large number of men, and had marched forth against the Nephites on the borders by the West Sea. And thus he was endeavoring to harass the Nephites, and to draw away a part of their forces to that part of the land, while he had commanded those whom he had left to possess the cities which he had taken, that they should also harass the Nephites on the borders by the East Sea and should take possession of their lands as much as was in their power according to the power of their armies. And thus were the Nephites in those dangerous circumstances in the ending of the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. But behold, it came to pass in the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges that Teancum, by the command of Moroni, who had established armies to protect the south and the west borders of the land, and had begun his march towards the land bountiful, that he might assist Teancum with his men in retaking the cities which they had lost. And it came to pass that Teancum had received orders to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and retake it, if it were possible. And it came to pass that Teancum made preparations to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and march forth with his army against the Lamanites. But he saw that it was impossible, that he could overpower them while they were in their fortifications, Therefore he abandoned his designs, and returned again to the city bountiful, to wait for the coming of Moroni, that he might receive strength to his army. And it came to pass that Moroni did arrive with his army at the land bountiful, in the latter end of the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And in the commencement of the twenty and eighth year, Moroni and Teancum, and many of the chief captains, held a council of war, what they should do to cause the Lamanites to come out against them to battle, or that they might by some means flatter them out of their strongholds, that they might gain advantage over them and take again the city of Mulek. And it came to pass they sent embassies to the army of the Lamanites, which protected the city of Mulek to their leader, whose name was Jacob, desiring him that he would come out with his armies to meet them upon the plains between the two cities. But behold, Jacob, who was a Zoramite, would not come out with his army to meet them upon the plains. And it came to pass that Moroni, having no hopes of meeting them upon fair grounds, therefore he resolved upon a plan that he might decoy the Lamanites out of their strongholds. 
Therefore he caused that Teancum should take a small number of men and march down near the seashore, and Moroni and his army by night marched in the wilderness on the west of the city Mulek, and thus on the morrow, when the guards of the Lamanites had discovered Teancum, they ran and told it unto Jacob their leader. And it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites did march forth against Teancum, supposing by their numbers to overpower Teancum, because of the smallness of his numbers. And as Teancum saw the armies of the Lamanites coming out against him, he began to retreat down by the seashore northward. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that he began to flee, they took courage and pursued them with vigor. And while Teancum was thus leading away the Lamanites who were pursuing them in vain, behold, Moroni commanded that a part of his army who were with him should march forth into the city and take possession of it. And thus they did, and slew all those who had been left to protect the city, yea, all those who would not yield up their weapons of war. And thus Moroni had obtained possession of the city Mulek, with a part of his army, while he marched with the remainder to meet the Lamanites, when they should return from the pursuit of Teancum. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue Teancum until they came near the city Bountiful. And then they were met by Lehi and a small army, which had been left to protect the city Bountiful. And now behold, when the chief captains of the Lamanites had beheld Lehi with his army coming against them, they fled in much confusion, lest perhaps they should not obtain the city Mulek before Lehi should overtake them, for they were wearied because of their march, and the men of Lehi were fresh. Now the Lamanites did not know that Moroni had been in their rear with his army, and all they feared was Lehi and his men. Now Lehi was not desirous to overtake them till they should meet Moroni and his army. And it came to pass that before the Lamanites had retreated far, they were surrounded by the Nephites, by the men of Moroni on one hand, and the men of Lehi on the other, all of whom were fresh and full of strength, but the Lamanites were wearied because of their long march. And Moroni commanded his men that they should fall upon them, until they had given up their weapons of war. And it came to pass that Jacob, being their leader, being also a Zoramite, and having an unconquerable spirit, he led the Lamanites forth to battle with exceeding fury against Moroni. Moroni being in their course of march, therefore, Jacob was determined to slay them and cut his way through to the city of Mulek. But behold, Moroni and his men were more powerful. Therefore they did not give way before the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they fought on both hands with exceeding fury. And there were many slain on both sides. Yea, and Moroni was wounded, and Jacob was killed. And Lehi pressed upon their rear with such fury with his strong men that the Lamanites in the rear delivered up their weapons of war, and the remainder of them, being much confused, knew not whither to go or to strike. Now Moroni, seeing their confusion, he said unto them, If you will bring forth your weapons of war and deliver them up, behold, we will forbear shedding your blood. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had heard these words, their chief captains, all those who were not slain, came forth and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of Moroni, and also commanded their men that they should do the same. But behold, there were many who would not, and those who would not deliver up their swords were taken and bound, and their weapons of war were taken from them, and they were compelled to march with their brethren forth into the land bountiful. And now the number of prisoners who were taken exceeded more than the number of those who had been slain, yea, more than those who had been slain on both sides. Alma chapter 53 And it came to pass that they did set guards over the prisoners of the Lamanites, and did compel them to go forth and bury their dead, yea, and also the dead of the Nephites who were slain. And Moroni placed men over them to guard them while they should perform their labors. And Moroni went to the city of Mulek with Lehi, and took command of the city, and gave it unto Lehi. Now behold, this Lehi was a man who had been with Moroni in the war part of all his battles, and he was a man like unto Moroni, and they rejoiced in each other's safety. Yea, they were beloved by each other, and also beloved by all the people of Nephi. And it came to pass 
that after the Lamanites had finished burying their dead and also the dead of the Nephites, they were marched back into the land bountiful, and Teancum, by the orders of Moroni, caused that they should commence laboring and digging a ditch round about the land or the city bountiful. And he caused that they should build a breastwork of timbers upon the inner bank of the ditch, and they cast up dirt out of the ditch against the breastwork of timbers. And thus they did cause the Lamanites to labor until they had encircled the city of Bountiful round about with a strong wall of timbers and earth to an exceeding height. And this city became an exceeding stronghold ever after. And in this city they did guard the prisoners of the Lamanites, yea, even within a wall which they had caused them to build with their own hands. And now Moroni was compelled to cause the Lamanites to labor, because it was easy to guard them while at their labor. And he desired all his forces when he should make an attack upon the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni had thus gained a victory over one of the greatest of the armies of the Lamanites, and had obtained possession of the city of Mulek, which was one of the strongest holds of the Lamanites in the land of Nephi. And thus he had also built a stronghold to retain his prisoners. And it came to pass that he did no more attempt a battle with the Lamanites in that year, but he did employ his men in preparing for war, yea, and in making fortifications to guard against the Lamanites, yea, and also delivering their women and their children from famine and affliction, and providing food for their armies. And now it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites on the west sea south while in the absence of moroni on account of some intrigue amongst the nephites which caused dissensions amongst them had gained some ground over the nephites yea insomuch that they had obtained possession of a number of their cities in that part of the land and thus because of iniquity amongst themselves yea because of dissensions and intrigue among themselves they were placed in the most dangerous circumstances and now behold I have somewhat to say concerning the people of Ammon, who in the beginning were Lamanites, but by Ammon and his brethren, or rather by the power and word of God, they had been converted unto the Lord, and they had been brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and had ever since been protected by the Nephites. And because of their oath, they had been kept from taking up arms against their brethren, for they had taken an oath that they never would shed blood more, and according to their oath they would have perished. Yea, they would have suffered themselves to have fallen into the hands of their brethren, had it not been for the pity and the exceeding love which Ammon and his brethren had had for them. And for this cause they were brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and they ever had been protected by the Nephites. But it came to pass that when they saw the danger and the many afflictions and tribulations which the Nephites bore for them. They were moved with compassion, and were desirous to take up arms in the defense of their country. But behold, as they were about to take their weapons of war, they were overpowered by the persuasions of Helaman and his brethren, for they were about to break the oath which they had made, and Helaman feared lest by so doing they should lose their souls. Therefore all those who had entered into this covenant were compelled to behold their brethren wade through their afflictions in their dangerous circumstances at this time. But behold, it came to pass they had many sons who had not entered into a covenant that they would not take their weapons of war to defend themselves against their enemies. Therefore they did assemble themselves together at this time as many as were able to take up arms, and they called themselves Nephites. And they entered into a covenant to fight for the liberty of the Nephites yea, to protect the land unto the laying down of their lives. Yea, even they covenanted that they never would give up their liberty, but they would fight in all cases to protect the Nephites and themselves from bondage. Now behold, there were two thousand of those young men who entered into this covenant, and took their weapons of war to defend their country. And now behold, as they never had hitherto been a disadvantage to the Nephites, they became now at this period of time also a great support. For they took their weapons of war, and they would that Helaman should be their leader. And they were all young men, and they were exceedingly valiant for courage, and also for strength and activity. But behold, this was not all. They were men who were true at all times in whatsoever thing they were entrusted. 
yea, they were men of truth and soberness, for they had been taught to keep the commandments of God and to walk uprightly before him. And now it came to pass that Helaman did march at the head of his two thousand stripling soldiers to the support of the people in the borders of the land on the south by the west sea. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Alma chapter 54 And now it came to pass, in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year of the judges, that Amaron sent unto Moroni, desiring that he would exchange prisoners. And it came to pass that Moroni felt to rejoice exceedingly at this request, for he desired the provisions which were imparted for the support of the Lamanite prisoners for the support of his own people, and he also desired his own people for the strengthening of his army. Now the Lamanites had taken many women and children, and there was not a woman nor a child among all the prisoners of Moroni or the prisoners whom Moroni had taken. Therefore Moroni resolved upon a stratagem to obtain as many prisoners of the Nephites from the Lamanites as it were possible. Therefore he wrote an epistle, and sent it by the servant of Amaron, the same who had brought an epistle to Moroni. Now these are the words which he wrote unto Amaron, saying, Behold, Amaron, I have written unto you somewhat concerning this war which ye have waged against my people, or rather which thy brother hath waged against them and which ye are still determined to carry on after his death. Behold, I would tell you somewhat concerning the justice of God, and the sword of his almighty wrath, which doth hang over you except ye repent, and withdraw your armies into your own lands, or the lands of your possessions, which is the land of Nephi. Yea, I would tell you these things if ye were capable of hearkening unto them. Yea, I would tell you concerning that awful hell that awaits to receive such murderers as thou and thy brother have been, except ye repent and withdraw your murderous purposes and return with your armies to your own lands. But as ye have once rejected these things, and have fought against the people of the Lord, even so I may expect you will do it again. And now, behold, we are prepared to receive you. Yea, and except you withdraw your purposes, behold, ye will pull down the wrath of that God whom you have rejected upon you, even to your utter destruction. But, as the Lord liveth, our armies shall come upon you, except ye withdraw, and ye shall soon be visited with death, for we will retain our cities and our lands. Yea, and we will maintain our religion and the cause of our God. But behold, it supposeth me that I talk to you concerning these things in vain. Or it supposeth me that thou art a child of hell. Therefore I will close my epistle by telling you that I will not exchange prisoners, save it be on conditions that ye will deliver up a man and his wife and his children for one prisoner. If this be the case, that ye will do it, I will exchange. And behold, if you do not this, I will come against you with my armies. Yea, even I will arm my women and my children and I will come against you, and I will follow you even into your own land, which is the land of our first inheritance. Yea, and it shall be blood for blood, yea, life for life, and I will give you battle, even until you are destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold, I am in my anger, and also my people. Ye have sought to murder us, and we have only sought to defend ourselves. But behold, if ye seek to destroy us more, we will seek to destroy you. Yea, and we will seek our land, the land of our first inheritance. Now I close my epistle. I am Moroni. I am a leader of the people of the Nephites. Now it came to pass that Amaron, when he had received this epistle, was angry, and he wrote another epistle unto Moroni. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, I am Amaron, the king of the Lamanites, I am the brother of Amalickiah, whom ye have murdered. Behold, I will avenge his blood upon you. Yea, and I will come upon you with my armies, for I fear not your threatenings. For behold, your fathers did wrong their brethren, insomuch that they did rob them of their right to the government when it rightfully belonged unto them. And now, behold, if ye will lay down your arms, and subject yourselves to be governed by those to whom the government doth rightly belong, then will I cause that my people shall lay down their weapons and shall be at war no more. Behold, ye have breathed out many threatenings against me and my people. But behold, we fear not your threatenings. 
Nevertheless, I will grant to exchange prisoners according to your request, gladly, and that I may preserve my food for my men of war, and we will wage a war which shall be eternal, either to the subjecting the Nephites to our authority or to their eternal extinction. And as concerning that God whom ye say we have rejected, behold, we know not such a being, neither do ye. But if it so be that there is such a thing, we know not but that he hath made us as well as you. And if it so be that there is a devil and a hell, behold, will he not send you there to dwell with my brother whom ye have murdered, whom ye have hinted that he hath gone to such a place? But behold, these things matter not. I am Amaron, and a descendant of Zoram, whom your fathers pressed and brought out of Jerusalem. And behold, now I am a bold Lamanite. Behold, this war hath been waged to avenge their wrongs, and to maintain and to obtain their rights to the government. And I close my epistle to Moroni. Alma, chapter 55 now it came to pass that when Moroni had received this epistle he was more angry, because he knew that Amaron had a perfect knowledge of his fraud. Yea, and he knew that Amaron knew that it was not a just cause that had caused him to wage a war against the people of Nephi. And he said, Behold, I will not exchange prisoners with Amaron, save he will withdraw his purpose, as I have stated in my epistle. For I will not grant unto him that he shall have any more power than what he hath got. Behold, I know the place where the Lamanites do guard my people, whom they have taken prisoners, and as Amaron would not grant unto me mine epistle, behold, I will give unto him according to my words. Yea, I will seek death among them, until they shall sue for peace. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he caused that a search should be made among his men, that perhaps he might find a man who was a descendant of Laman among them. And it came to pass that they found one whose name was Laman, and he was one of the servants of the king who was murdered by Amalickiah. Now Moroni caused that Laman and a small number of his men should go forth unto the guards who were over the Nephites. Now the Nephites were guarded in the city of Gid. Therefore Moroni appointed Laman, and caused that a small number of men should go with him. And when it was evening, Laman went to the guards who were over the Nephites, and behold, they saw him coming, and they hailed him, but he saith unto them, Fear not, behold, I am a Lamanite. Behold, we have escaped from the Nephites, and they sleep. And behold, we have taken of their wine, and brought with us. Now when the Lamanites heard these words, they received him with joy. And they said unto him, Give us of your wine, that we may drink. We are glad that ye have thus taken wine with you, for we are weary. But Laman said unto them, Let us keep our wine till we go against the Nephites to battle. But this saying only made them more desirous to drink of the wine. For, said they, We are weary, therefore let us take of the wine, and by and by we shall receive wine for our rations, which will strengthen us to go against the Nephites. And Laman said unto them, You may do according to your desires. And it came to pass that they did take of the wine freely, and it was pleasant to their taste, therefore they took of it more freely and it was strong, having been prepared in its strength. And it came to pass, they did drink, and were merry, and by and by they were all drunken. And now when Laman and his men saw that they were all drunken, and were in a deep sleep, they returned to Moroni and told him all the things that had happened. And now this was according to the design of Moroni, and Moroni had prepared his men with weapons of war, and he went to the city Gid, while the Lamanites were in a deep sleep and drunken, and cast in weapons of war unto the prisoners, insomuch that they were all armed, yea, even to their women, and all those of their children, as many as were able to use a weapon of war, when Moroni had armed all those prisoners, and all those things were done in a profound silence. But had they awakened the Lamanites, behold, they were drunken, and the Nephites could have slain them. But behold, this was not the desire of Moroni, he did not delight in murder or bloodshed, but he delighted in the saving of his people from destruction, and for this cause he might not bring upon him injustice. He would not fall upon the Lamanites and destroy them in their drunkenness. But he had obtained his desires, for he had armed those prisoners of the Nephites who were within the wall of the city, and had given them power to gain possession of those parts which were within the walls. And then he caused the men who were with him to withdraw a pace from them, 
and surround the armies of the Lamanites. Now behold, this was done in the night time, so that when the Lamanites awoke in the morning, they beheld that they were surrounded by the Nephites without, and that their prisoners were armed within. And thus they saw that the Nephites had power over them, and in these circumstances they found that it was not expedient that they should fight with the Nephites. Therefore their chief captains demanded their weapons of war, and they brought them forth and cast them at the feet of the Nephites, pleading for mercy. Now behold, this was the desire of Moroni. He took them prisoners of war, and took possession of the city, and caused that all the prisoners should be liberated who were Nephites. And they did join the army of Moroni, and were a great strength to his army. And it came to pass that he did cause the Lamanites, whom he had taken prisoners, that they should commence a labor in strengthening the fortifications round about the city Gid. And it came to pass that when he had fortified the city Gid according to his desires, he caused that his prisoners should be taken to the city Bountiful, and he also guarded that city with an exceedingly strong force. And it came to pass that they did, notwithstanding all the intrigues of the Lamanites, keep and protect all the prisoners whom they had taken, and also maintain all the ground and the advantage which they had retaken. And it came to pass that the Nephites began again to be victorious and to reclaim their rights and their privileges. Many time did the Lamanites attempt to encircle them about by night, but in these attempts they did lose many prisoners. And many times did they attempt to administer of their wine to the Nephites, that they might destroy them with poison or with drunkenness. But, behold, the Nephites were not slow to remember the Lord their God in this their time of affliction. They could not be taken in their snares. Yea, they would not partake of their wine, save they had first given to some of the Lamanite prisoners. And they were thus cautious that no poison should be administered among them. For if their wine would poison a Lamanite, it would also poison a Nephite, and thus they did try all their liquors. And now it came to pass that it was expedient for Moroni to make preparations to attack the city Morianton. For behold, the Lamanites had, by their labors, fortified the city Morianton until it had become an exceeding stronghold, and they were continually bringing new forces into that city, and also new supplies of provisions. And thus ended the twenty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. End of Alma chapters 52 through 55. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Alma chapters 56 through 58 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 56 through 58. Alma, chapter 56. And now it came to pass, in the commencement of the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges, on the second day, in the first month, Moroni received an epistle from Helaman, stating the affairs of the people in that quarter of the land. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, My dearly beloved brother Moroni, as well in the Lord as in the tribulations of our warfare. Behold, my beloved brother, I have somewhat to tell you concerning our warfare in this part of the land. Behold, two thousand of the sons of those men whom Ammon brought down out of the land of Nephi, now ye have known that these were descendants of Laman, who was the eldest son of our father Lehi. Now I need not rehearse unto you concerning their traditions or their unbelief, for thou knowest concerning all these things. Therefore it sufficeth me that I tell you that two thousand of these young men have taken their weapons of war, and would that I should be their leader, and we have come forth to defend our country. And now ye also know concerning the covenant which their fathers made, that they would not take up their weapons of war against their brethren to shed blood. But in the twenty and sixth year, when they saw our afflictions, and our tribulations for them, they were about to break the covenant which they had made, and take up their weapons of war in our defense. But I would not suffer them that they should break this covenant which they had made, supposing that God would strengthen us, insomuch that we should not suffer more because of the fulfilling the oath which they had taken. 
but behold here is one thing in which we may have great joy for behold in the twenty and sixth year i helaman did march at the head of these two thousand young men to the city of judea to assist antipas whom ye had appointed a leader over the people of that part of the land and i did join my two thousand sons for they are worthy to be called sons to the army of antipas in which strength antipas did rejoice exceedingly for behold his army had been reduced by the lamanites because their forces had slain a vast number of our men, for which cause we have to mourn. Nevertheless, we may console ourselves in this point, that they have died in the cause of their country and of their God, yea, and they are happy. And the Lamanites had also retained many prisoners, all of whom are chief captains, for none other have they spared alive. And we suppose that they are now at this time in the land of Nephi. It is so if they are not slain. And now these are the cities of which the Lamanites have obtained possession by the shedding of the blood of so many of our valiant men, the land of Manti, or the city of Manti, and the city of Zizrum, and the city of Cumani, and the city of Antipara. And these are the cities which they possessed when I arrived at the city of Judea, and I found Antipas and his men toiling with their might to fortify the city. Yea, and they were depressed in body as well as in spirit. For they had fought valiantly by day, and toiled by night to maintain their cities, and thus they had suffered great afflictions of every kind. And now they were determined to conquer in this place or die. Therefore you may well suppose that this little force which I brought with me, yea, those sons of mine, gave them great hopes and much joy. And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that Antipas had received greater strength to his army, they were compelled by the orders of Ammaron to not come against the city of Judea or against us to battle. And thus were we favored of the Lord, for had they come upon us in this our weakness, they might have perhaps destroyed our little army. But thus were we preserved. They were commanded by Ammaron to maintain those cities which they had taken, and thus ended the twenty and sixth year. And in the commencement of the twenty and seventh year we had prepared our city and ourselves for defense. Now we were desirous that the Lamanites should come upon us, for we were not desirous to make an attack upon them in their strongholds. And it came to pass that we kept spies out round about, to watch the movements of the Lamanites, that they might not pass us by night nor by day to make an attack upon our other cities, which were on the northward. For we knew in those cities they were not sufficiently strong to meet them. Therefore we were desirous, if they should pass by us, to fall upon them in their rear, and thus bring them up in the rear at the same time they were met in the front. We supposed that we could overpower them, but, behold, we were disappointed in this our desire. They durst not pass by us with their whole army, neither durst they with a part, lest they should not be sufficiently strong, and they should fall. Neither durst they march down against the city of Zarahemla, neither durst they cross the head of Sidon over to the city of Nephiha. And thus, with their forces, they were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken. And now it came to pass, in the second month of this year, there was brought unto us many provisions from the fathers of those my two thousand sons. And also there were sent two thousand men unto us from the land of Zarahemla. And thus we were prepared with ten thousand men and provisions for them, and also for their wives and their children. And the Lamanites, thus seeing our forces increase daily, and provisions arrived for our support, they began to be fearful, and began to sally forth, if it were possible, to put an end to our receiving provisions and strength. Now when we saw that the Lamanites began to grow uneasy on this wise, we were desirous to bring a stratagem into effect upon them. Therefore Antipas ordered that I should march forth with my little sons to a neighboring city, as if we were carrying provisions to a neighboring city. And we were to march near the city of Antipara, as if we were going to the city beyond in the borders by the seashore. And it came to pass that we did march forth, as if with our provisions, to go to that city. And it came to pass that Antipas did march forth with a part of his army, leaving the remainder to maintain the city. But he did not march forth until I had gone forth with my little army and came near the city Antipara. And now in the city Antipara were stationed the strongest army of the Lamanites, yea, the most numerous. And it came to pass that when they had been informed by their spies, they came forth with their army and marched against us. And it came to pass that we did flee before them northward, and thus we did lead away the most powerful army of the Lamanites. 
yea, even to a considerable distance, insomuch that when they saw the army of Antipas pursuing them with their might, they did not turn to the right nor to the left, but pursued their march in a straight course after us. And, as we suppose, it was their intent to slay us before Antipas could overtake them, in this that they might not be surrounded by our people. And now Antipas, beholding our danger, did speed the march of his army, but behold, it was night. Therefore they did not overtake us, neither did Antipas overtake them. Therefore we did camp for the night. And it came to pass that before the dawn of the morning, behold, the Lamanites were pursuing us. Now we were not sufficiently strong to contend with them. Yea, I would not suffer that my little son should fall into their hands. Therefore we did continue our march, and we took our march into the wilderness. Now they durst not turn to the right nor to the left, lest they should be surrounded. Neither would I turn to the right nor to the left, lest they should overtake me. And we could not stand against them, but be slain, and they would make their escape. And thus we did flee all that day into the wilderness, even until it was dark. And it came to pass, that again, when the light of the morning came, we saw the Lamanites upon us, and we did flee before them. But it came to pass that they did not pursue us far before they halted, and it was in the morning of the third day of the seventh month. And now, whether they were overtaken by Antipas, we knew not. But I said unto my men, Behold, we know not, but they have halted for the purpose that we should come against them, that they might catch us in their snare. Therefore what say ye, my sons? Will ye go against them to battle? And now I say unto you, my beloved brother Moroni, that never had I seen so great courage, nay, not amongst all the Nephites, for as I have ever called them my sons, for they were all of them very young, even so they said unto me, Father, behold, our God is with us, and he will not suffer that we should fall. Then let us go forth. We would not slay our brethren if they would let us alone. Therefore let us go, lest they should overpower the army of Antipas. Now they never had fought, yet they did not fear death, and they did think more upon the liberty of their fathers than they did upon their lives. Yea, they had been taught by their mothers that if they did not doubt, God would deliver them. And they rehearsed unto me the words of their mothers, saying, we do not doubt our mothers knew it. And it came to pass that I did return with my two thousand against these Lamanites who had pursued us. And now behold, the armies of Antipas had overtaken them, and a terrible battle had commenced. The army of Antipas, being weary because of their long march in so short a space of time, were about to fall into the hands of the Lamanites. And had I not returned with my two thousand, they would have obtained their purpose. For Antipas had fallen by the sword, and many of his leaders, because of their weariness, which was occasioned by the speed of their march. Therefore the men of Antipas, being confused because of the fall of their leaders, began to give way before the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the Lamanites took courage and began to pursue them, and thus were the Lamanites pursuing them with great vigor when Helaman came upon their rear with his two thousand, and began to slay them exceedingly, insomuch that the whole army of the Lamanites halted and turned upon Helaman. Now when the people of Antipas saw that the Lamanites had turned them about, they gathered together their men and came again upon the rear of the Lamanites. And now it came to pass that we, the people of Nephi, the people of Antipas, and I with my two thousand, did surround the Lamanites and did slay them. Yea, insomuch that they were compelled to deliver up their weapons of war, and also themselves as prisoners of war. And now it came to pass that when they had surrendered themselves up unto us, behold, I numbered those young men who had fought with me, fearing lest there were many of them slain. But behold, to my great joy, there was not one soul of them fallen to the earth. Yea, and they had fought as if with the strength of God. Yea, never were men known to have fought with such miraculous strength, and with such mighty power did they fall upon the Lamanites that they did frighten them. And for this cause did the Lamanites deliver themselves up as prisoners of war. And as we had no place for our prisoners, that we could guard them to keep them from the armies of the Lamanites, therefore we sent them to the land of Zarahemla, and a part of those men who were not slain of Antipas with them, 
and the remainder I took and joined them to my stripling Ammonites, and took our march back to the city of Judea. Alma chapter 57 And now it came to pass that I received an epistle from Ammon the king, stating that if I would deliver up those prisoners of war whom we had taken, that he would deliver up the city of Antipara unto us. But I sent an epistle unto the king, that we were sure our forces were sufficient to take the city of Antipara by our force, and by delivering up the prisoners for that city we should suppose ourselves unwise, and that we would only deliver up our prisoners on exchange. And Amaron refused mine epistle, for he would not exchange prisoners. Therefore we began to make preparations to go against the city of Antipara. But the people of Antipara did leave the city, and fled to their other cities, which they had possession of, to fortify them, and thus the city of Antipara fell into our hands. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year we received a supply of provisions, and also in addition to our army from the land of Zarahemla, and from the land round about to the number of six thousand men, besides sixty of the sons of the Ammonites, who had come to join their brethren, my little band of two thousand. And now, behold, we were strong. Yea, and we had also plenty of provisions brought unto us. And it came to pass that it was our desire to wage a battle with the army which was placed to protect the city Cumani. And now, behold, I will show unto you that we soon accomplished our desire. Yea, with our strong force, or with a part of our strong force, we did surround by night the city Cumani a little before they were to receive a supply of provisions. And it came to pass that we did camp round about the city for many nights, but we did sleep upon our swords and keep guards that the Lamanites could not come upon us by night and slay us, which they attempted many times. But as many times as they attempted this, their blood was spilt. At length their provisions did arrive, and they were about to enter the city by night. And we, instead of being Lamanites, were Nephites. Therefore we did take them and their provisions. And notwithstanding the Lamanites being cut off from their support after this manner, they were still determined to maintain the city. Therefore it became expedient that we should take those provisions and send them to Judea, and our prisoners to the land of Zarahemla. And it came to pass that not many days had passed away before the Lamanites began to lose all hopes of succor. Therefore they yielded up the city unto our hands, and thus we had accomplished our designs in obtaining the city Cumani. But it came to pass that our prisoners were so numerous that notwithstanding the enormity of our numbers, we were obliged to employ all our force to keep them, or to put them to death. For behold, they would break out in great numbers and would fight with stones and with clubs, or whatsoever thing they could get into their hands, insomuch that we did slay upwards of two thousand of them after they had surrendered themselves prisoners of war. Therefore it became expedient for us that we should put an end to their lives, or guard them, sword in hand, down to the land of Zarahemla. And also our provisions were not any more than sufficient for our own people, notwithstanding that which we had taken from the Lamanites. And now in those critical circumstances it became a very serious matter to determine concerning these prisoners of war. Nevertheless, we did resolve to send them down to the land of Zarahemla. Therefore we selected a part of our men and gave them charge over our prisoners to go down to the land of Zarahemla. But it came to pass that on the morrow they did return. And now, behold, we did not inquire of them concerning the prisoners, for behold, the Lamanites were upon us and they returned in season to save us from falling into their hands. For behold, Amaron had sent to their support a new supply of provisions, and also a numerous army of men. And it came to pass that those men whom we sent with the prisoners did arrive in season to check them, as they were about to overpower us. But behold, my little band of two thousand and sixty fought most desperately. Yea, they were firm before the Lamanites, and did administer death unto all those who opposed them. And as the remainder of our army were about to give way before the Lamanites, behold, those two thousand and sixty were firm and undaunted. Yea, and they did obey and observe to perform every word of command with exactness. Yea, and even according to their faith it was done unto them. And I did remember the words which they said unto me that their mothers had taught them. And now, behold, it was these my sons and those men who had been selected to convey the prisoners to whom we owe this great victory. For it was they who did beat the Lamanites. Therefore they were driven back to the city of Manti. And we retained our city Cumani, and were not all destroyed by the sword. 
nevertheless we had suffered great loss and it came to pass that after the lamanites had fled i immediately gave orders that my men who had been wounded should be taken from among the dead and caused that their wounds should be dressed and it came to pass that there were two hundred out of my two thousand and sixty who had fainted because of the loss of blood nevertheless according to the goodness of god and to our great astonishment and also the joy of our whole army there was not one soul of them who did perish yea and neither was there one soul among them who had not received many wounds and now their preservation was astonishing to our whole army yea that they should be spared while there was a thousand of our brethren who were slain and we do justly ascribe it to the miraculous power of god because of their exceeding faith in that which they had been taught to believe that there was a just god and whosoever did not doubt that they should be preserved by his marvellous power now this was the faith of these of whom i have spoken they are young and their minds are firm and they do put their trust in god continually and now it came to pass that after we had thus taken care of our wounded men and had buried our dead and also the dead of the lamanites who were many behold we did inquire of gid concerning the prisoners whom they had started to go down to the land of zarahemla with now gid was the chief captain over the band who was appointed to guard them down to the land and now these are the words which gid said unto me behold we did start to go down to the land of zarahemla with our prisoners and it came to pass that we did meet the spies of our armies who had been sent out to watch the camp of the lamanites and they cried unto us saying behold the armies of the lamanites are marching towards the city of cumani and behold they will fall upon them yea and will destroy our people and it came to pass that our prisoners did hear their cries which caused them to take courage and they did rise up in rebellion against us and it came to pass because of their rebellion we did cause that our swords should come upon them and it came to pass that they did in a body run upon our swords in the which the greater number of them were slain and the remainder of them broke through and fled from us and behold when they had fled and we could not overtake them we took our march with speed towards the city cumani and behold we did arrive in time that we might assist our brethren in preserving the city and behold we are again delivered out of the hands of our enemies and blessed is the name of our god for behold it is he that has delivered us yea that has done this great thing for us now it came to pass that when i helaman had heard these words of gid i was filled with exceeding joy because of the goodness of god in preserving us that we might not all perish yea and i trust that the souls of them who have been slain have entered into the rest of their god alma chapter fifty eight and behold now it came to pass that our next object was to obtain the city of manti but behold there was no way that we could lead them out of the city by our small bands for behold they remembered that which we had hitherto done therefore we could not decoy them away from their strongholds and they were so much more numerous than was our army that we durst not go forth and attack them in their strongholds yea and it became expedient that we should employ our men to the maintaining those parts of the land which we had regained of our possessions therefore it became expedient that we should wait that we might receive more strength from the land of zarahemla and also a new supply of provisions and it came to pass that i thus did send an embassy to the governor of our land to acquaint him concerning the affairs of our people and it came to pass that we did wait to receive provisions and strength from the land of zarahemla but behold this did profit us but little for the lamanites were also receiving great strength from day to day and also many provisions and thus were our circumstances at this period of time and the lamanites were sallying forth against us from time to time resolving by stratagem to destroy us nevertheless we could not come out to battle with them because of their retreats and their strongholds and it came to pass that we did wait in these difficult circumstances for the space of many months even until we were about to perish for the want of food but it came to pass that we did receive food which was guarded to us by an army of two thousand men to our assistance and this is all the assistance which we did receive to defend ourselves and our country from falling into the hands of our enemies yea to contend with an enemy which was innumerable and now the cause of these our embarrassments or the cause why they did not send more strength unto us we knew not therefore we were grieved and also filled with fear lest by any means the judgments of god should come upon our land to our overthrow and utter destruction 
Therefore we did pour out our souls in prayer to God, that he would strengthen us and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, yea, and also give us strength that we might retain our cities, and our lands and our possessions for the support of our people. Yea, and it came to pass that the Lord our God did visit us with assurances that he would deliver us, yea, insomuch that he did speak peace to our souls, and did grant unto us great faith, and did cause us that we should hope for our deliverance in him. And we did take courage with our small force which we had received, and were fixed with a determination to conquer our enemies, and to maintain our lands, and our possessions, and our wives, and our children, and the cause of our liberty. And thus we did go forth, with all our might against the Lamanites who were in the city of Manti, and we did pitch our tents by the wilderness side which was near to the city. And it came to pass that on the morrow, that when the Lamanites saw that we were in the borders by the wilderness which was near the city, that they sent out their spies round about us, that they might discover the number and the strength of our army. And it came to pass, that when they saw that we were not strong according to our numbers, and fearing that we should cut them off from their support, except they should come out to battle against us and kill us, and also supposing that they could easily destroy us with their numerous hosts, therefore they began to make preparations to come out against us to battle. And when we saw that they were making preparations to come out against us, behold, I caused that Gid, with a small number of men, should secrete himself in the wilderness, and also that Tiamner and a small number of men should secrete themselves also in the wilderness. Now Gid and his men were on the right, and the others on the left. And when they had thus secreted themselves, behold, I remained with the remainder of my army, in that same place where we had first pitched our tents against the time that the Lamanites should come out to battle. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did come out with their numerous army against us, and when they had come and were about to fall upon us with the sword, I caused that my men, those who were with me, should retreat into the wilderness. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did follow after us with great speed, for they were exceedingly desirous to overtake us that they might slay us. Therefore they did follow us into the wilderness, and we did pass by in the midst of Gid and Tiamner, insomuch that they were not discovered by the Lamanites. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had passed by, or when the army had passed by, Gid and Tiamner did rise up from their secret places, and did cut off the spies of the Lamanites, that they should not return to the city. And it came to pass that when they had cut them off, they ran to the city and fell upon the guards who were left to guard the city, insomuch that they did destroy them and did take possession of the city. Now this was done because the Lamanites did suffer their whole army, save a few guards only, to be led away into the wilderness. And it came to pass that Gid and Tiamner by this means had obtained possession of their strongholds. And it came to pass that we took our course after having traveled much in the wilderness towards the land of Zarahemla. And when the Lamanites saw that they were marching towards the land of Zarahemla, they were exceedingly afraid, lest there was a plan laid to lead them on to destruction. Therefore they began to retreat back into the wilderness again, yea, even back by the same way which they had come. And behold, it was night, and they did pitch their tents, for the chief captains of the Lamanites had supposed that the Nephites were weary because of their march, and supposing that they had driven their whole army, therefore they took no thought concerning the city of Manti. Now it came to pass that when it was night I caused that my men should not sleep, but that they should march forward by another way towards the land of Manti. And because of this our march in the night time, behold, on the morrow we were beyond the Lamanites, insomuch that we did arrive before them at the city of Manti. And thus it came to pass that by this stratagem we did take possession of the city of Manti without the shedding of blood. And it came to pass that when the armies of the Lamanites did arrive near the city, and saw that we were prepared to meet them, they were astonished exceedingly and struck with great fear, insomuch that they did flee into the wilderness. Yea, and it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites did flee out of all this quarter of the land. But behold, they have carried with them many women and children out of the land. And those cities which had been taken by the Lamanites, all of them are at this period of time in our possession, and our fathers, and our women and our children are returning to their homes all save it be those who have been taken prisoners and carried off by the Lamanites. But, behold, our armies are small to maintain so great a number of cities and so great possessions. But, behold, we trust in our God, who has given us victory over those lands, insomuch that we have obtained those cities and those lands which were our own. 
Now we do not know the cause that the government does not grant us more strength. Neither do those men who came up unto us know why we have not received greater strength. Behold, we do not know, but what ye are unsuccessful, and ye have drawn away the forces into that quarter of the land. If so, we do not desire to murmur. And if it is not so, behold, we fear that there is some faction in the government, that they do not send more men to our assistance. For we know that they are more numerous than that which they have sent. But, behold, it mattereth not. We trust God will deliver us, notwithstanding the weakness of our armies, yea, and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. Behold, this is the twenty and ninth year in the latter end, and we are in the possession of our lands, and the Lamanites have fled to the land of Nephi. And those sons of the people of Ammon, of whom I have so highly spoken, are with me in the city of Manti. And the Lord had supported them, yea, and kept them from falling by the sword, insomuch that even one soul has not been slain. But, behold, they have received many wounds. Nevertheless, they stand fast in that liberty wherewith God has made them free. And they are strict to remember the Lord their God from day to day. Yea, they do observe to keep his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments continually. And their faith is strong in the prophecies concerning that which is to come. And now, my beloved brother Moroni, May the Lord our God, who has redeemed us and made us free, keep you continually in his presence. Yea, and may he favor this people, even that ye may have success in obtaining the possession of all that which the Lamanites have taken from us, which was for our support. And now, behold, I close mine epistle. I am Helaman, the son of Alma. End of Alma, chapters 56 through 58. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hesmes.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 59 through 63 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 59 through 63. Alma, chapter 59. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, after Moroni had received and had read Helaman's epistle, he was exceedingly rejoiced because of the welfare, yea, the exceeding success which Helaman had had in obtaining those lands which were lost. Yea, and he did make it known unto all his people in all the land round about in that part where he was that they might rejoice also. And it came to pass that he immediately sent an epistle to Pahoran, desiring that he should cause men to be gathered together to strengthen Helaman, or the armies of Helaman, insomuch that he might with ease maintain that part of the land which he had been so miraculously prospered in regaining. And it came to pass, when Moroni had sent this epistle to the land of Zarahemla, he began again to lay a plan, that he might obtain the remainder of those possessions and cities which the Lamanites had taken from them. And it came to pass, that while Moroni was thus making preparations to go against the Lamanites to battle, behold, the people of Nephiha, who were gathered together from the city of Moroni and the city of Lehi and the city of Morianton, were attacked by the Lamanites. Yea, even those who had been compelled to flee from the land of Manti and from the land round about, had come over and joined the Lamanites in this part of the land. And thus being exceedingly numerous, yea, and receiving strength from day to day, by the command of Ammaron, they came forth against the people of Nephiha, and they did begin to slay them with an exceedingly great slaughter. And their armies were so numerous that the remainder of the people of Nephiha were obliged to flee before them, and they came even and joined the army of Moroni. And now, as Moroni had supposed that there should be men sent to the city Nephiha, to the assistance of the people to maintain that city, and knowing that it was easier to keep the city from falling into the hands of the Lamanites than to retake it from them, he supposed that they would easily maintain that city. Therefore he retained all his force to maintain those places which he had recovered. And now, when Moroni saw that the city of Nephiha was lost, he was exceedingly sorrowful, and began to doubt, because of the wickedness of the people, whether they should not fall into the hands of their brethren. Now this was the case with all his chief captains, 
they doubted and marveled also because of the wickedness of the people, and this because of the success of the Lamanites over them. And it came to pass that Moroni was angry with the government because of their indifference concerning the freedom of their country. Alma chapter 60 And it came to pass that he wrote again to the governor of the land, who was Pahoran. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, Behold, I direct mine epistle to Pahoran in the city of Zarahemla, who is the chief judge and the governor over the land, and also to all those who have been chosen by this people to govern and manage the affairs of this war. For behold, I have somewhat to say unto you by way of condemnation. For behold, ye yourselves know that ye have been appointed to gather together men, and arm them with swords, and with scimitars, and all manner of weapons of war of every kind, and send forth against the Lamanites in whatsoever parts they should come into our land. And now behold, I say unto you that myself, and also my men, and also Helaman and his men, have suffered exceedingly great sufferings, yea, even hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and all manner of afflictions of every kind. But, behold, were this all we had suffered, we would not murmur nor complain. But, behold, great has been the slaughter among our people. Yea, thousands have fallen by the sword. While it might have otherwise been, if ye had rendered unto our armies sufficient strength and succor for them. Yea, great has been your neglect towards us. And now, behold, we desire to know the cause of this exceedingly great neglect. Yea, we desire to know the cause of your thoughtless state. Can you think to sit upon your thrones in a state of thoughtless stupor, while your enemies are spreading the work of death around you, yea, while they are murdering thousands of your brethren, yea, even they who have looked up to you for protection, yea, have placed you in a situation that ye might have succored them, yea, ye might have sent armies unto them to have strengthened them and have saved thousands of them from falling by the sword, but behold, this is not all. Ye have withheld your provisions from them, insomuch that many have fought and bled out their lives because of their great desires which they had for the welfare of this people. Yea, and this they have done when they were about to perish with hunger, because of your exceedingly great neglect towards them. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye ought to be beloved, yea, and ye ought to have stirred yourselves more diligently for the welfare and the freedom of this people, but behold, ye have neglected them, insomuch that the blood of thousands shall come upon your heads for vengeance. Yea, for known unto God were all their cries and all their sufferings. Behold, could ye suppose that ye could sit upon your thrones, and because of the exceeding goodness of God ye could do nothing, and he would deliver you? Behold, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. Do ye suppose that because so many of your brethren have been killed, it is because of their wickedness? I say unto you, if you have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. For I say unto you, there are many who have fallen by the sword, and behold, it is to your condemnation. For the Lord suffereth the righteous to be slain, that his justice and judgment may come upon the wicked. Therefore ye need not suppose that the righteous are lost because they are slain. But behold, they do enter into the rest of the Lord their God. And now, behold, I say unto you, I fear exceedingly that the judgments of God will come upon this people because of their exceeding slothfulness, yea, even the slothfulness of our government, and their exceedingly great neglect towards their brethren, yea, towards those who have been slain. For were it not for the wickedness which first commenced at our head, we could have withstood our enemies that they could have gained no power over us, yea, had it not been for the war which broke out among ourselves. Yea, were it not for these king men, who caused so much bloodshed among ourselves, yea, at the time we were contending among ourselves, if we had united our strength, as we hitherto have done, yea, had it not been for the desire of power and authority which those king men had over us, had they been true to the cause of our freedom and united with us, and gone forth against our enemies instead of taking up their swords against us, which was the cause of so much bloodshed among ourselves, Yea, if we had gone forth against them in the strength of the Lord, we should have dispersed our enemies, for it would have been done according to the fulfilling of his word. But behold, now the Lamanites are coming upon us, taking possession of our lands, and they are murdering our people with the sword. Yea, our women and our children, and also carrying them away captive, causing them that they should suffer all manner of afflictions. 
and this because of the great wickedness of those who are seeking for power and authority, yea, even those king-men. But why should I say much concerning this matter? For we know not but what ye yourselves are seeking for authority. We know not but what ye are also traitors to your country. Or is it that ye have neglected us, because ye are in the heart of our country, and ye are surrounded by security, that ye do not cause food to be sent unto us, and also men to strengthen our armies? Have ye forgotten the commandments of the Lord your God? Yea, have ye forgotten the captivity of our fathers? Have ye forgotten the many times we have been delivered out of the hands of our enemies? Or do ye suppose that the Lord will still deliver us while we sit upon our thrones and do not make use of the means which the Lord has provided for us? Yea, will ye sit in idleness while ye are surrounded with thousands of those, yea, and tens of thousands who do also sit in idleness, while there are thousands round about in the borders of the land who are falling by the sword, yea, wounded and bleeding? Do ye suppose that God will look upon you as guiltless while ye sit still and behold these things? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Now I would that ye should remember that God has said that the inward vessel shall be cleansed first, and then shall the outer vessel be cleansed also. And now except ye do repent of that which ye have done, and begin to be up and doing, and send forth food and men unto us, and also unto Helaman, that he may support those parts of our country which he has regained, and that we may also recover the remainder of our possessions in these parts. Behold, it will be expedient that we contend no more with the Lamanites until we have first cleansed our inward vessel, yea, even the great head of our government. And except ye grant mine epistle, and come out and show unto me a true spirit of freedom, and strive to strengthen and fortify our armies, and grant unto them food for their support, behold, I will leave a part of my freemen to maintain this part of our land, and I will leave the strength and the blessings of God upon them, that none other power can operate against them, and this because of their exceeding faith, and their patience in their tribulations. And I will come unto you, and if there be any among you that has a desire for freedom, yea, if there be even a spark of freedom remaining, behold, I will stir up insurrections among you, even until those who have desires to usurp power and authority shall become extinct. Yea, behold, I do not fear your power nor your authority, but it is my God whom I fear. And it is according to his commandments that I do take my sword to defend the cause of my country, and it is because of your iniquity that we have suffered so much loss. Behold, it is time, yea, the time is now at hand, that except ye do bestir yourselves in the defense of your country and your little ones, the sword of justice doth hang over you, yea, and it shall fall upon you and visit you even to your utter destruction. Behold, I wait for assistance from you, and except ye do administer unto our relief, behold, I come unto you even in the land of Zarahemla, and smite you with the sword, insomuch that ye can have no more power to impede the progress of this people in the cause of our freedom. For behold, the Lord will not suffer that ye shall live and wax strong in your iniquities to destroy his righteous people. Behold, can you suppose that the Lord will spare you and come out in judgment against the Lamanites, when it is the tradition of their fathers that has caused their hatred? Yea, and it has been redoubled by those who have dissented from us, while your iniquity is for the cause of your love of glory and the vain things of the world? Ye know that ye do transgress the laws of God, and ye do know that ye do trample them under your feet. Behold, the Lord saith unto me, If those whom ye have appointed your governors do not repent of their sins and iniquities, ye shall go up to battle against them. And now, behold, I, Moroni, am constrained according to the covenant which I have made to keep the commandments of my God, Therefore I would that ye should adhere to the word of God, and send speedily unto me of your provisions and of your men, and also to Helaman. And behold, if ye will not do this, I will come unto you speedily, for behold, God will not suffer that we should perish with hunger. Therefore he will give unto us of your food, even if it must be by the sword. Now see that ye fulfill the word of God. Behold, I am Moroni, your chief captain. I seek not for power, but to pull it down. I seek not for honor of the world, but for the glory of my God, and the freedom and welfare of my country. And thus I close mine epistle. Alma, chapter 61
Behold, now it came to pass that soon after Moroni had sent his epistle unto the chief governor, he received an epistle from Pahoran, the chief governor. And these are the words which he received. I, Pahoran, who am the chief governor of this land, do send these words unto Moroni, the chief captain over the army. Behold, I say unto you, Moroni, that I do not joy in your great afflictions. Yea, it grieves my soul. But behold, there are those who do joy in your afflictions, yea, insomuch that they have risen up in rebellion against me, and also those of my people who are freemen, yea, and those who have risen up are exceedingly numerous. And it is those who have sought to take away the judgment seat from me that have been the cause of this great iniquity, for they have used great flattery, and they have led away the hearts of many people, which will be the cause of sore afflictions among us. They have withheld our provisions, and have daunted our freemen that they have not come unto you. And behold, they have driven me out before them, and I have fled to the land of Gideon, with as many men as it were possible that I could get. And behold, I have sent a proclamation throughout this part of the land, and behold, they are flocking to us daily, to their arms, in the defense of their country, and their freedom, and to avenge our wrongs. And they have come unto us, insomuch that those who have risen up in rebellion against us are set at defiance, yea, insomuch that they do fear us, and durst not come out against us to battle. They have got possession of the land, or the city of Zarahemla. They have appointed a king over them, and he hath written unto the king of the Lamanites, in the which he hath joined an alliance with him, in the which alliance he hath agreed to maintain the city of Zarahemla, which maintenance he supposes will enable the Lamanites to conquer the remainder of the land. And he shall be placed king over this people when they shall be conquered under the Lamanites. And now in your epistle you have censured me, but it mattereth not. I am not angry, but I do rejoice in the greatness of your heart. I, Pahoran, do not seek for power, save only to retain my judgment seat, that I may preserve the rights and the liberty of my people. My soul standeth fast in that liberty in the which God hath made us free. And now, behold, we will resist wickedness even unto bloodshed. We would not shed the blood of the Lamanites if they would stay in their own land. We would not shed the blood of our brethren if they would not rise up in rebellion and take the sword against us. We would subject ourselves to the yoke of bondage if it were requisite with the justice of God, or if he should command us to do so. But, behold, he doth not command us that we shall subject ourselves to our enemies, but that we should put our trust in him, and he will deliver us. Therefore, my beloved brother Moroni, let us resist evil, and whatsoever evil we cannot resist with our words, yea, such as rebellions and dissensions, let us resist them with our swords, that we may retain our freedom, that we may rejoice in the great privilege of our church, and in the cause of our Redeemer and our God. Therefore come unto me speedily with a few of your men, and leave the remainder in the charge of Lehi and Teancum. Give unto them power to conduct the war in that part of the land according to the Spirit of God, which is also the Spirit of freedom which is in them. Behold, I have sent a few provisions unto them, that they may not perish until you can come unto me. Gather together whatsoever force ye can upon your march hither, and we will go speedily against those dissenters in the strength of our God, according to the faith which is in us. And we will take possession of the city of Zarahemla, that we may obtain more food to send forth unto Lehi and Teancum. Yea, we will go forth against them in the strength of the Lord, and we will put an end to this great iniquity. And now, Moroni, I do joy in receiving your epistle, for I was somewhat worried concerning what we should do, whether it would be just in us to go against our brethren. But ye have said, Except they repent, the Lord hath commanded you that ye should go against them. See that ye strengthen Lehi and Teancum in the Lord. Tell them to fear not, for God will deliver them, yea, and also all those who stand fast in that liberty wherewith God hath made them free. And now I close mine epistle to my beloved brother Moroni. Alma chapter 62 and now it came to pass that when Moroni had received this epistle, his heart did take courage, and was filled with exceedingly great joy because of the faithfulness of Pahoran, that he was not also a traitor to the freedom and cause of his country. But he did also mourn exceedingly because of the iniquity of those who had driven Pahoran from the judgment seat, yea, in fine, because of those who had rebelled against their country and also their God. 
and it came to pass that moroni took a small number of men according to the desire of pahoran and gave lehi and teancum command over the remainder of his army and took his march towards the land of gideon and he did raise the standard of liberty in whatsoever place he did enter and gained whatsoever force he could in all his march towards the land of gideon and it came to pass that thousands did flock unto his standard and did take up their swords in the defence of their freedom that they might not come into bondage and thus when moroni had gathered together whatsoever men he could in all his march he came to the land of gideon and uniting his forces with those of pahoran they became exceedingly strong even stronger than the man of pacus who was the king of those dissenters who had driven the free man out of the land of zarahemla and had taken possession of the land and it came to pass that moroni and pahoran went down with their armies into the land of zarahemla and went forth against the city and did meet the men of pacus insomuch that they did come to battle and behold pacus was slain and his men were taken prisoners and pahoran was restored to his judgment seat and the men of pacus received their trial according to the law and also those king men who had been taken and cast into prison and they were executed according to the law yea those men of pacus and those king men whosoever would not take up arms in the defence of their country but would fight against it were put to death and thus it became expedient that this law should be strictly observed for the safety of their country yea and whosoever was found denying their freedom was speedily executed according to the law and thus ended the thirtieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi moroni and pahoran having restored peace to the land of zarahemla among their own people having inflicted death upon all those who were not true to the cause of freedom and it came to pass in the commencement of the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of nephi moroni immediately caused that provisions should be sent and also an army of six thousand men should be sent unto helaman to assist him in preserving that part of the land and he also caused that an army of six thousand men with a sufficient quantity of food should be sent to the armies of lehi and teancum and it came to pass that this was done to fortify the land against the lamanites and it came to pass that moroni and pahoran leaving a large body of men in the land of zarahemla took their march with a large body of men towards the land of nephiha being determined to overthrow the lamanites in that city and it came to pass that as they were marching towards the land they took a large body of men of the lamanites and slew many of them and took their provisions and their weapons of war and it came to pass after they had taken them they caused them to enter into a covenant that they would no more take up their weapons of war against the nephites and when they had entered into this covenant they sent them to dwell with the people of ammon and they were in number about four thousand who had not been slain and it came to pass that when they had sent them away they pursued their march towards the land of nephiha and it came to pass that when they had come to the city of nephiha they did pitch their tents in the plains of nephiha which is near the city of nephiha now moroni was desirous that the lamanites should come out to battle against them upon the plains but the lamanites knowing of their exceedingly great courage and beholding the greatness of their numbers therefore they durst not come out against them therefore they did not come to battle in that day and when the night came moroni went forth in the darkness of the night and came upon the top of the wall to spy out in what part of the city the lamanites did camp with their army and it came to pass that they were on the east by the entrance and they were all asleep and now moroni returned to his army and caused that they should prepare in haste strong cords and ladders to be let down from the top of the wall into the inner part of the wall and it came to pass that moroni caused that his men should march forth and come upon the top of the wall and let themselves down into that part of the city yea even on the west where the lamanites did not camp with their armies and it came to pass that they were all let down into the city by night by the means of their strong cords and their ladders thus when the morning came they were all within the walls of the city and now when the lamanites awoke and saw that the armies of moroni were within the walls they were affrighted exceedingly insomuch that they did flee out by the pass and now when moroni saw that they were fleeing before him he did cause that his men should march forth against them and slew many and surrounded many others and took them prisoners and the remainder of them fled into the land of moroni 
which was in the borders by the seashore. Thus had Moroni and Pahorn obtained the possession of the city of Nephiha without the loss of one soul, and there were many of the Lamanites who were slain. Now it came to pass that many of the Lamanites that were prisoners were desirous to join the people of Ammon and become a free people. And it came to pass that as many as were desirous unto them it was granted according to their desires. Therefore all the prisoners of the Lamanites did join the people of Ammon, and did begin to labor exceedingly, tilling the ground, raising all manner of grain and flocks and herds of every kind. And thus were the Nephites relieved from a great burden, yea, insomuch that they were relieved from all the prisoners of the Lamanites. Now it came to pass that Moroni, after he had obtained possession of the city of Nephiha, having taken many prisoners, which did reduce the armies of the Lamanites exceedingly, and having regained many of the Nephites, who had been taken prisoners, which did strengthen the army of Moroni exceedingly, therefore Moroni went forth from the land of Nephiha to the land of Lehi. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that Moroni was coming against them, they were again affrighted, and fled before the army of Moroni. And it came to pass that Moroni and his army did pursue them from city to city, until they were met by Lehi and Teancum, and the Lamanites fled from Lehi and Teancum even down upon the borders by the seashore, until they came to the land of Moroni. And the armies of the Lamanites were all gathered together, insomuch that they were all in one body in the land of Moroni. Now Amaron, the king of the Lamanites, was also with them. And it came to pass that Moroni and Lehi and Teancum did encamp with their armies round about in the borders of the land of Moroni, insomuch that the Lamanites were encircled about in the borders by the wilderness on the south, and in the borders by the wilderness on the east. And thus they did encamp for the night, for behold, the Nephites and the Lamanites also were weary because of the greatness of the march. Therefore they did not resolve upon any stratagem in the night time, save it were Teancum. For he was exceedingly angry with Amaron, insomuch that he considered that Amaron and Amalickiah his brother had been the cause of this great and lasting war between them and the Lamanites, which had been the cause of so much war and bloodshed, yea, and so much famine. And it came to pass that Teancum in his anger did go forth into the camp of the Lamanites, and did let himself down over the walls of the city, and he went forth with a cord from place to place, insomuch that he did find the king, and he did cast the javelin at him, which did pierce him near the heart. But, behold, the king did awaken his servants before he died, insomuch that they did pursue Teancum, and slew him. Now it came to pass, that when Lehi and Moroni knew that Teancum was dead, they were exceedingly sorrowful. For, behold, he had been a man who had fought valiantly for his country, yea, a true friend to liberty, and he had suffered very many exceedingly sore afflictions. But, behold, he was dead, and had gone the way of all the earth. Now it came to pass that Moroni marched forth on the morrow, and came upon the Lamanites insomuch that they did slay them with a great slaughter, and they did drive them out of the land, and they did flee, even that they did not return at that time against the Nephites. And thus ended the thirty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, and thus they had had wars, and bloodsheds, and famine, and affliction, for the space of many years. And there had been murders, and contentions, and dissensions, and all manner of iniquity among the people of Nephi. Nevertheless, for the righteous' sake, yea, because of the prayers of the righteous, they were spared. But, behold, because of the exceedingly great length of the war between the Nephites and the Lamanites, many had become hardened, because of the exceedingly great length of the war, and many were softened because of their afflictions insomuch that they did humble themselves before God, even in the depth of humility. And it came to pass that after Moroni had fortified those parts of the land which were most exposed to the Lamanites, until they were sufficiently strong, he returned to the city of Zarahemla, and also Helaman returned to the place of his inheritance, and there was once more peace established among the people of Nephi. And Moroni yielded up the command of his armies into the hands of his son, whose name was Moroniha, and he retired to his own house, that he might spend the remainder of his days in peace. And Pahoran did return to his judgment seat, and Helaman did take upon him again to preach unto the people the word of God. For because of so many great wars and contentions it had become expedient that a regulation should be made again in the church. 
Therefore Helaman and his brethren went forth, and to declare the word of God with much power unto the convincing of many people of their wickedness, which did cause them to repent of their sins, and to be baptized unto the Lord their God. And it came to pass that they did establish again the church of God throughout all the land. Yea, and regulations were made concerning the law, and their judges, and their chief judges were chosen. And the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land, and began to multiply and to wax exceedingly strong again in the land, and they began to grow exceedingly rich. But notwithstanding their riches, or their strength, or their prosperity, they were not lifted up in the pride of their eyes, neither were they slow to remember the Lord their God. But they did humble themselves exceedingly before him. Yea, they did remember how great things the Lord had done for them, that he had delivered them from death, and from bonds, and from prisons, and from all manner of afflictions, and he had delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. And they did pray unto the Lord their God continually, insomuch that the Lord did bless them, according to his word, so that they did wax strong and prosper in the land. And it came to pass that all these things were done. And Helaman died in the thirty and fifth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Alma, chapter 63. And it came to pass in the commencement of the thirty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Shiblon took possession of those sacred things which had been delivered unto Helaman by Alma. And he was a just man, and he did walk uprightly before God, and he did observe to do good continually, to keep the commandments of the Lord his God, and also did his brother. And it came to pass that Moroni died also, and thus ended the thirty and sixth year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that in the thirty and seventh year of the reign of the judges there was a large company of men, even to the amount of five thousand and four hundred men, with their wives and their children, departed out of the land of Zarahemla into the land which was northward. And it came to pass that Hagoth, he being an exceedingly curious man, therefore he went forth, and built him an exceedingly large ship, on the borders of the land Bountiful, by the land Desolation, and launched it forth into the west sea by the narrow neck which led into the land northward. And behold, there were many of the Nephites who did enter therein, and did sail forth with much provisions, and also many women and children, and they took their course northward, and thus ended the thirty and seventh year. And in the thirty and eighth year this man built other ships, and the first ship did also return, and many more people did enter into it, and they also took much provisions, and set out again to the land northward. And it came to pass that they were never heard of more, and we suppose that they were drowned in the depths of the sea. And it came to pass that one other ship also did sail forth, and whither she did go we know not. And it came to pass that in this year there were many people who went forth into the land northward, and thus ended the thirty and eighth year. And it came to pass in the thirty and ninth year of the reign of the judges, Shiblon died also, and Corianton had gone forth to the land northward in a ship, to carry forth provisions unto the people who had gone forth into that land. Therefore it became expedient for Shiblon to confer those sacred things before his death upon the son of Helaman, who was called Helaman, being called after the name of his father. Now behold, all those engravings which were in the possession of Helaman were written and sent forth among the children of men throughout all the land, save it were those parts which had been commanded by Alma should not go forth. Nevertheless, these things were to be kept sacred, and handed down from one generation to another, Therefore, in this year, they had been conferred upon Helaman before the death of Shiblon. And it came to pass also in this year that there were some dissenters who had gone forth unto the Lamanites, and they were stirred up again to anger against the Nephites. And also in this same year they came down with a numerous army to war against the people of Moronihah, or against the army of Moronihah, in the which they were beaten and driven back again to their own lands, suffering great loss. And thus ended the thirty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the account of Alma, and Helaman his son, and also Shiblon, who was his son. End of Alma, chapters 59 through 63. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 1 through 4 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. 
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 1 through 4. Helaman, chapter 1. And now, behold, it came to pass in the commencement of the fortieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there began to be a serious difficulty among the people of the Nephites. For behold, Pahoran had died, and gone the way of all the earth. Therefore there began to be a serious contention concerning who should have the judgment seat among the brethren who were the sons of Pahoran. Now these are their names who did contend for the judgment seat, who did also cause the people to contend. Pahoran, Peonkai, and Pecumenai. Now these are not all the sons of Pahoran, for he had many, but these are they who did contend for the judgment seat. Therefore they did cause three divisions among the people. Nevertheless it came to pass that Pahoran was appointed by the voice of the people to be chief judge and a governor over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that Pecumenai, when he saw that he could not obtain the judgment seat, he did unite with the voice of the people. But behold, Peonkai, and that part of the people that were desirous that he should be their governor, was exceedingly wroth. Therefore he was about to flatter away those people to rise up in rebellion against their brethren. And it came to pass, as he was about to do this, behold, he was taken and was tried according to the voice of the people, and condemned unto death. For he had raised up in rebellion, and sought to destroy the liberty of the people. Now when those people who were desirous that he should be their governor saw that he was condemned unto death, therefore they were angry, and behold, they sent forth one Kishkuman, even to the judgment seat of Pahoran, and murdered Pahoran as he sat upon the judgment seat. And he was pursued by the servants of Pahoran, but behold, so speedy was the flight of Kishkuman that no man could overtake him. And he went unto those that sent him, and they all entered into a covenant, yea, swearing by their everlasting Maker that they would tell no man that Kishkuman had murdered Pahoran. Therefore Kishkuman was not known among the people of Nephi, for he was in disguise at the time that he murdered Pahoran. And Kishkuman and his band, who had covenanted with him, did mingle themselves among the people, in a manner that they all could not be found, but as many as were found were condemned unto death. And now behold, Pecumenai was appointed, according to the voice of the people, to be a chief judge and a governor over the people, to reign in the stead of his brother Pahoran, and it was according to his right. And all this was done in the fortieth year of the reign of the judges, and it had an end. And it came to pass in the forty and first year of the reign of the judges that the Lamanites had gathered together an innumerable army of men, and armed them with swords, and with scimitars, and with bows, and with arrows, and with headplates, and with breastplates, and with all manner of shields of every kind. And they came down again, that they might pitch battle against the Nephites, and they were led by a man whose name was Coriantumr, and he was a descendant of Zarahemla, and he was a dissenter from among the Nephites, and he was a large and a mighty man. Therefore the king of the Lamanites, whose name was Tubaloth, who was the son of Amaron, supposing that Coriantumr, being a mighty man, could stand against the Nephites, with his strength and also with his great wisdom, insomuch that by sending him forth he should gain power over the Nephites, therefore he did stir them up to anger, and he did gather together his armies, and he did appoint Coriantumr to be their leader, and did cause that they should march down to the land of Zarahemla to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that because of so much contention and so much difficulty in the government, that they had not kept sufficient guards in the land of Zarahemla. For they had supposed that the Lamanites durst not come into the heart of their lands to attack that great city Zarahemla. But it came to pass that Coriantumr did march forth at the head of his numerous host, and came upon the inhabitants of the city. And their march was with such exceedingly great speed, that there was no time for the Nephites to gather together their armies. Therefore Coriantumr did cut down the watch by the entrance of the city, and did march forth with his whole army into the city, and they did slay every one who did oppose them, insomuch that they did take possession of the whole city. And it came to pass that Pecumenai, who was the chief judge, did flee before Coriantumr, even to the walls of the city. And it came to pass that Coriantumr did smite him against the wall, insomuch that he died. And thus ended the days of Pecumenai. And now when Coriantumr saw that he was in possession of the city of Zarahemla, and saw that the Nephites had fled before them, 
and were slain, and were taken, and were cast into prison, and that he had obtained the possession of the strongest hold in all the land, his heart took courage, insomuch that he was about to go forth against all the land. And now he did not tarry in the land of Zarahemla, but he did march forth with a large army, even towards the city of Bountiful, for it was his determination to go forth and cut his way through with the sword, that he might obtain the north parts of the land and supposing that their greatest strength was in the center of the land, therefore he did march forth, giving them no time to assemble themselves together, save it were in small bodies, and in this manner they did fall upon them and cut them down to the earth. But behold, this march of Coriantumr through the center of the land gave Moronihah great advantage over them, notwithstanding the greatness of the number of the Nephites who were slain. For behold, Moronihah had supposed that the Lamanites durst not come into the center of the land, but that they would attack the cities round about in the borders as they had hitherto done. Therefore Moronihah had caused that their strong armies should maintain those parts round about by the borders. But behold, the Lamanites were not frightened according to his desire, but they had come into the center of the land, and had taken the capital city, which was the city of Zarahemla, and were marching through the most capital parts of the land, slaying the people with a great slaughter, both men, women, and children, taking possession of many cities and of many strongholds. But when Moronihah had discovered this, he immediately sent forth Lehi with an army round about to head them before they should come to the land bountiful. And thus he did. And he did head them before they came to the land bountiful, and gave unto them battle, insomuch that they began to retreat back towards the land of Zarahemla. And it came to pass that Moronihah did head them in their retreat and did give unto them battle, insomuch that it became an exceedingly bloody battle. Yea, many were slain. And among the people who were slain, Coriantumr was also found. And now, behold, the Lamanites could not retreat either way, neither on the north, nor on the south, nor on the east, nor on the west, for they were surrounded on every hand by the Nephites. And thus had Coriantumr plunged the Lamanites into the midst of the Nephites, insomuch that they were in the power of the Nephites, and he himself was slain, and the Lamanites did yield themselves up into the hands of the Nephites. And it came to pass that Moronihah took possession of the city of Zarahemla again, and caused that the Lamanites, who had been taken prisoners, should depart out of the land in peace. And thus ended the forty and first year of the reign of the judges. Helaman chapter 2 and it came to pass in the forty and second year of the reign of the judges, after Moronihah had established again peace between the Nephites and the Lamanites, behold, there was no one to fill the judgment seat. Therefore there began to be a contention again among the people concerning who should fill the judgment seat. And it came to pass that Helaman, who was the son of Helaman, was appointed to fill the judgment seat by the voice of the people. But behold, Kishkumen, who had murdered Pahoran, did lay wait to destroy Helaman also and he was upheld by his band, who had entered into a covenant, that no one should know his wickedness. For there was one Gadianton, who was exceedingly expert in many words, and also in his craft to carry on the secret work of murder and of robbery. Therefore he became the leader of the band of Kishkumen. Therefore he did flatter them, and also Kishkumen, that if they would place him in the judgment seat, he would grant unto those who belonged to his band that they should be placed in power, and authority among the people. Therefore Kishkumen sought to destroy Helaman. And it came to pass, as he went forth towards the judgment seat to destroy Helaman, behold, one of the servants of Helaman, having been out by night, and having obtained through disguise a knowledge of those plans which had been laid by this band to destroy Helaman, and it came to pass that he met Kishkumen, and he gave unto him a sign. Therefore Kishkumen made known unto him the object of his desire, desiring that he would conduct him to the judgment seat that he might murder Helaman. And when the servant of Helaman had known all the heart of Kishkumen, and how that it was his object to murder, and also that it was the object of all those who belonged to his band to murder, and to rob, and to gain power, and this was their secret plan, and their combination, the servant of Helaman said unto Kishkumen, Let us go forth unto the judgment seat. Now this did please Kishkumen exceedingly, for he did suppose that he should accomplish his design. But behold, the servant of Helaman, as they were going forth unto the judgment seat, did stab Kishkumen even to the heart, that he fell dead without a groan. 
and he ran and told Helaman all the things which he had seen and heard and done. And it came to pass that Helaman did send forth to take this band of robbers and secret murderers, that they might be executed according to the law. But behold, when Gadianton had found that Kishkumen did not return, he feared lest that he should be destroyed. Therefore he caused that his band should follow him, and they took their flight out of the land by a secret way into the wilderness, and thus when Helaman sent forth to take them they could nowhere be found. And more of this Gadianton shall be spoken hereafter. And thus ended the forty and second year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And behold, in the end of this book ye shall see that this Gadianton did prove the overthrow, yea, almost the entire destruction of the people of Nephi. Behold, I do not mean the end of the book of Helaman, but I mean the end of the book of Nephi, from which I have taken all the account which I have written. Helaman chapter 3 And now it came to pass in the forty and third year of the reign of the judges, there was no contention among the people of Nephi, save it were a little pride which was in the church, which did cause some little dissensions among the people, which affairs were settled in the ending of the forty and third year. And there was no contention among the people in the forty and fourth year, neither was there much contention in the forty and fifth year. And it came to pass in the forty and sixth year, yea, there was much contention and many dissensions, in the which there were an exceedingly great many who departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and went forth unto the land northward to inherit the land. And they did travel to an exceedingly great distance, insomuch that they came to large bodies of water and many rivers. Yea, and even they did spread forth into all parts of the land, into whatever parts of it had not been rendered desolate and without timber, because of the many inhabitants who had before inherited the land. And now no part of the land was desolate, save it were for timber, but because of the greatness of the destruction of the people who had before inhabited the land it was called desolate. And there being but little timber upon the face of the land, nevertheless the people who went forth became exceedingly expert in the working of cement. Therefore they did build houses of cement, in the which they did dwell. And it came to pass that they did multiply and spread, and did go forth from the land southward to the land northward, and did spread insomuch that they began to cover the face of the whole earth, from the sea south to the sea north, from the sea west to the sea east. And the people who were in the land northward did dwell in tents and in houses of cement, and they did suffer whatsoever tree should spring up upon the face of the land, that it should grow up, that in time they might have timber to build their houses, yea, their cities, and their temples, and their synagogues, and their sanctuaries, and all manner of their buildings. And it came to pass, as timber was exceedingly scarce in the land northward, they did send forth much by the way of shipping. And thus they did enable the people in the land northward that they might build many cities, both of wood and of cement. And it came to pass that there were many of the people of Ammon, who were Lamanites by birth, did also go forth into this land. And now there are many records kept of the proceedings of this people by many of this people, which are particular and very large concerning them. But behold, a hundredth part of the proceedings of this people, yea, the account of the Lamanites and of the Nephites and their wars and contentions and dissensions and their preaching and their prophecies and their shipping and their building of ships and their building of temples and of synagogues and their sanctuaries and their righteousness and their wickedness and their murders and their robbings and their plundering and all manner of abominations and whoredoms cannot be contained in this work. But behold, there are many books and many records of every kind, and they have been kept chiefly by the Nephites. And they have been handed down from one generation to another by the Nephites, even until they have fallen into transgression, and have been murdered, plundered, and hunted, and driven forth, and slain, and scattered upon the face of the earth, and mixed with the Lamanites until they are no more called the Nephites, becoming wicked, and wild, and ferocious, yea, even becoming Lamanites. And now I return again to mine account. Therefore what I have spoken had passed after there had been great contentions, and disturbances, and wars, and dissensions among the people of Nephi. The forty and sixth year of the reign of the judges ended. And it came to pass that there was still great contention in the land, yea, even in the forty and seventh year, and also in the forty and eighth year, 
Nevertheless, he lamented fill the judgment seat with justice and equity. Yea, he did observe to keep the statutes and the judgments and the commandments of God. And he did do that which was right in the sight of God continually. And he did walk after the ways of his father, insomuch that he did prosper in the land. And it came to pass that he had two sons. He gave unto the eldest the name of Nephi, and unto the youngest the name of Lehi. And they began to grow up unto the Lord. And it came to pass that the wars and contentions began to cease in a small degree among the people of the Nephites in the latter end of the forty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the forty and ninth year of the reign of the judges there was continual peace established in the land, all save it were the secret combinations which Gadiant and the robber had established in the more settled parts of the land, which at that time were not known unto those who were at the head of government therefore they were not destroyed out of the land and it came to pass that in this same year there was exceedingly great prosperity in the church insomuch that there were thousands who did join themselves unto the church and were baptized unto repentance and so great was the prosperity of the church and so many the blessings which were poured out upon the people that even the high priests and the teachers were themselves astonished beyond measure and it came to pass that the work of the Lord did prosper unto the baptizing and uniting to the church of God many souls, yea, even tens of thousands. Thus we see that the Lord is merciful unto all who will, in the sincerity of their hearts, call upon his holy name. Yea, thus we see that the gate of heaven is open unto all, even to those who will believe on the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. Yea, we see that whosoever will may lay hold upon the word of God, which is quick and powerful which shall divide asunder all the cunning and the snares and the wiles of the devil, and lead the man of Christ in a straight and narrow course across that everlasting gulf of misery which is prepared to engulf the wicked, and land their souls, yea, their immortal souls, at the right hand of God in the kingdom of heaven, to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob and with all our holy fathers to go no more out. And in this year, there was continual rejoicing in the land of Zarahemla, and in all the regions round about, even in all the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And it came to pass that there was peace and exceedingly great joy in the remainder of the forty and ninth year. Yea, and also there was continual peace and great joy in the fiftieth year of the reign of the judges. And in the fifty and first year of the reign of the judges there was peace also, save it were the pride which began to enter into the church, not into the church of God, but into the hearts of the people who professed to belong to the church of God. And they were lifted up in pride, even to the persecution of many of their brethren. Now this was a great evil, which did cause the more humble part of the people to suffer great persecutions, and to wade through much affliction. Nevertheless they did fast and pray oft, and did wax stronger and stronger in their humility, and firmer and firmer in the faith of Christ unto the filling their souls with joy and consolation, yea, even to the purifying and the sanctification of their hearts, which sanctification cometh because of their yielding their hearts unto God. And it came to pass that the fifty and second year ended in peace also, save it were the exceedingly great pride which had gotten into the hearts of the people, and it was because of their exceedingly great riches and their prosperity in the land, and it did grow upon them from day to day. And it came to pass in the fifty and third year of the reign of the judges Helaman died, and his eldest son Nephi began to reign in his stead. And it came to pass that he did fill the judgment seat with justice and equity. Yea, he did keep the commandments of God, and did walk in the ways of his father. Helaman chapter 4 And it came to pass in the fifty and fourth year, there were many dissensions in the church, and there was also a contention among the people, insomuch that there was much bloodshed. And the rebellious part were slain and driven out of the land, and they did go unto the king of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did endeavor to stir up the Lamanites to war against the Nephites, but behold, the Lamanites were exceedingly afraid, insomuch that they would not hearken to the words of those dissenters. But it came to pass in the fifty and sixth year of the reign of the judges there were dissenters who went up from the Nephites unto the Lamanites, and they succeeded with those others in stirring them up to anger against the Nephites and they were all that year preparing for war. 
And in the fifty and seventh year they did come down against the Nephites to battle, and they did commence the work of death, yea, insomuch that in the fifty and eighth year of the reign of the judges they succeeded in obtaining possession of the land of Zarahemla, yea, and also all the lands, even unto the land which was near the land bountiful. And the Nephites and the armies of Moronihah were driven even into the land of bountiful. And they did fortify against the Lamanites from the west sea even unto the east, it being a day's journey for a Nephite, on the line which they had fortified and stationed their armies to defend their north country. And thus those dissenters of the Nephites, with the help of a numerous army of the Lamanites, had obtained all the possession of the Nephites, which was in the land southward. And all this was done in the fifty and eighth and ninth years of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass in the sixtieth year of the reign of the judges, Moronihah did succeed with his armies in obtaining many parts of the land. Yea, they regained many cities which had fallen into the hands of the Lamanites. And it came to pass in the sixty and first year of the reign of the judges, they succeeded in regaining even the half of all their possessions. Now this great loss of the Nephites and the great slaughter which was among them would not have happened had it not been for their wickedness and their abomination which was among them yea and it was among those also who professed to belong to the church of god and it was because of the pride of their hearts because of their exceeding riches yea it was because of their oppression to the poor withholding their food from the hungry withholding their clothing from the naked and smiting their humble brethren upon the cheek making a mock of that which was sacred denying the spirit of prophecy and of revelation murdering plundering lying stealing committing adultery rising up in great contentions, and deserting away into the land of Nephi among the Lamanites. And because of their great wickedness, and their boastings in their own strength, they were left in their own strength. Therefore they did not prosper, but were afflicted and smitten, and driven before the Lamanites, until they had lost possession of almost all their lands. But behold, Moronihah did preach many things unto the people because of their iniquity, and also Nephi and Lehi, who were the sons of Helaman, did preach many things unto the people, yea, and did prophesy many things unto them concerning their iniquities, and what should come unto them if they did not repent of their sins. And it came to pass that they did repent, and inasmuch as they did repent, they did begin to prosper. For when Moronihah saw that they did repent, he did venture to lead them forth from place to place, and from city to city, even until they had regained the one half of their property, and the one half of all their lands. And thus ended the sixty and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass in the sixty and second year of the reign of the judges that Moronihah could obtain no more possessions over the Lamanites. Therefore they did abandon their design to obtain the remainder of their lands, for so numerous were the Lamanites that it became impossible for the Nephites to obtain more power over them. Therefore Moronihah did employ all his armies in maintaining those parts which he had taken. And it came to pass, because of the greatness of the number of the Lamanites, the Nephites were in great fear lest they should be overpowered and trodden down and slain and destroyed. Yea, they began to remember the prophecies of Alma, and also the words of Mosiah, and they saw that they had been a stiff-necked people, and that they had set at naught the commandments of God, and that they had altered and trampled under their feet the laws of Mosiah, or that which the Lord commanded him to give unto the people. And they saw that their laws had become corrupted, and that they had become a wicked people, insomuch that they were wicked, even like unto the Lamanites. And because of their iniquity the church had begun to dwindle, and they began to disbelieve in the spirit of prophecy, and in the spirit of revelation, and the judgments of God did stare them in the face. And they saw that they had become weak, like unto their brethren, the Lamanites, and that the spirit of the Lord did no more preserve them. Yea, it had withdrawn from them, because the spirit of the Lord doth not dwell in unholy temples. Therefore the Lord did cease to preserve them by his miraculous and matchless power for they had fallen into a state of unbelief and awful wickedness, and they saw that the Lamanites were exceedingly more numerous than they, and except they should cleave unto the Lord their God, they must unavoidably perish. For behold, they saw that the strength of the Lamanites was as great as their strength, even man for man, and thus had they fallen into this great transgression. Yea, thus had they become weak because of their transgression in the space of not many years. End of Helaman chapters 1 through 4
Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 5 through 7 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 5 through 7. Helaman, chapter 5. And it came to pass that in this same year, behold, Nephi delivered up the judgment seat to a man whose name was Sizoram. For as their laws and their governments were established by the voice of the people, and they who chose evil were more numerous than they who chose good, therefore they were ripening for destruction, for the laws had become corrupted. Yea, and this was not all, they were a stiff-necked people, insomuch that they could not be governed by the law nor justice, save it were to their destruction. And it came to pass that Nephi had become weary because of their iniquity, and he yielded up the judgment seat, and took it upon him to preach the word of God all the remainder of his days, and his brother Lehi also, all the remainder of his days. For they remembered the words which their father Helaman spake unto them, and these are the words which he spake. Behold, my sons, I desire that ye should remember to keep the commandments of God, and I would that ye should declare unto the people these words. Behold, I have given unto you the names of our first parents, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, and this I have done, that when you remember your names, ye may remember them, and when ye remember them, ye may remember their works, and when ye remember their works, ye may know how that it is said, and also written, that they were good. Therefore, my sons, I would that ye should do that which is good, that it may be said of you, and also written, even as it has been said and written of them. And now, my sons, behold, I have somewhat more to desire of you, which desire is, that ye may not do these things that ye may boast, but that ye may do these things, to lay up for yourselves a treasure in heaven, yea, which is eternal, and which fadeth not away, yea, that ye may have that precious gift of eternal life, which we have reason to suppose hath been given to our fathers, O oh, remember, remember, my sons, the words which King Benjamin spake unto his people. Yea, remember that there is no other way, nor means whereby man can be saved, only through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, who shall come. Yea, remember that he cometh to redeem the world. And remember also the words which Amulek spake unto Zeezrom in the city of Ammonihah, for he said unto him that the Lord surely should come to redeem his people, but that he should not come to redeem them in their sins, but to redeem them from their sins. And he hath power given unto him from the Father to redeem them from their sins because of repentance. Therefore he hath sent his angels to declare the tidings of the conditions of repentance, which bringeth unto the power of the Redeemer, unto the salvation of their souls. And now, my sons, remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe, because of the rock upon which ye are built which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. And it came to pass that these were the words which Helaman taught to his sons. Yea, he did teach them many things which are not written, and also many things which are written. And they did remember his words. And therefore they went forth, keeping the commandments of God, to teach the word of God among all the people of Nephi, beginning at the city Bountiful and from thenceforth to the city of Gid, and from the city of Gid to the city of Mulek, and even from one city to another, until they had gone forth among all the people of Nephi, who were in the land southward, and from thence into the land of Zarahemla among the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did preach with great power, insomuch that they did confound many of those dissenters who had gone over from the Nephites, insomuch that they came forth, and did confess their sins, and were baptized unto repentance, and immediately returned to the Nephites, 
to endeavor to repair unto them the wrongs which they had done. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi did preach unto the Lamanites with such great power and authority, for they had power and authority given unto them that they might speak, and they also had what they should speak given unto them. Therefore they did speak unto the great astonishment of the Lamanites, to the convincing them, insomuch that there were eight thousand of the Lamanites, who were in the land of Zarahemla, and round about, baptized unto repentance, and were convinced of the wickedness of the traditions of their fathers. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi did proceed from thence to go to the land of Nephi. And it came to pass that they were taken by an army of the Lamanites, and cast into prison yea, even in that same prison in which Ammon and his brethren were cast by the servants of Limhi. And after they had been cast into prison many days without food, behold, they went forth into the prison to take them, that they might slay them. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi were encircled about as if by fire, even insomuch that they durst not lay their hands upon them for fear lest they should be burned. Nevertheless, Nephi and Lehi were not burned and they were as standing in the midst of fire, and were not burned. And when they saw that they were encircled about with a pillar of fire, and that it burned them not, their hearts did take courage. For they saw that the Lamanites durst not lay their hands upon them, neither durst they come near unto them, but stood as if they were struck dumb with amazement. And it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi did stand forth and began to speak unto them, saying, Fear not, for behold, it is God that has shown unto you this marvelous thing, in the which is shown unto you that ye cannot lay your hands on us to slay us. And behold, when they had said these words, the earth shook exceedingly, and the walls of the prison did shake, as if they were about to tumble to the earth. But behold, they did not fall. And behold, they that were in the prison were Lamanites and Nephites who were dissenters. And it came to pass that they were overshadowed with a cloud of darkness, and an awful, solemn fear came upon them. And it came to pass that there came a voice, as if it were above the cloud of darkness, saying, Repent ye, repent ye, and seek no more to destroy my servants, whom I have sent unto you to declare good tidings. And it came to pass that when they heard this voice, and beheld that it was not a voice of thunder, neither was it a voice of a great tumultuous noise but behold it was a still voice of perfect mildness as if it had been a whisper and it did pierce even to the very soul and notwithstanding the mildness of the voice behold the earth shook exceedingly and the walls of the prison trembled again as if it were about to tumble to the earth and behold the cloud of darkness which had overshadowed them did not disperse and behold, the voice came again, saying, Repent ye, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and seek no more to destroy my servants. And it came to pass that the earth shook again, and the walls trembled. And also again the third time the voice came, and did speak unto them marvelous words which cannot be uttered by man. And the walls did tremble again, and the earth shook as if it were about to divide asunder. And it came to pass that the Lamanites could not flee because of the cloud of darkness which did overshadow them. Yea, and also they were immovable because of the fear which did come upon them. Now there was one among them who was a Nephite by birth, who had once belonged to the church of God, but had dissented from them. And it came to pass that he turned him about, and behold, he saw through the cloud of darkness the faces of Nephi and Lehi. And behold, they did shine exceedingly, even as the faces of angels, and he beheld that they did lift their eyes to heaven, and they were in the attitude, as if talking or lifting their voices to some being whom they beheld. And it came to pass that this man did cry unto the multitude that they might turn and look, and behold there was power given unto them that they did turn and look, and they did behold the faces of Nephi and Lehi. And they said unto the man, Behold! What do all these things mean? And who is it with whom these men do converse? Now the man's name was Aminadab, and Aminadab said unto them, They do converse with the angels of God. And it came to pass that the Lamanites said unto him, 
what shall we do that this cloud of darkness may be removed from overshadowing us and aminadab said unto them you must repent and cry unto the voice even until ye shall have faith in christ who was taught unto you by alma and amulek and azizram and when ye shall do this the cloud of darkness shall be removed from overshadowing you and it came to pass that they all did begin to cry unto the voice of him who had shaken the earth yea they did cry even until the cloud of darkness was dispersed and it came to pass that when they cast their eyes about and saw that the cloud of darkness was dispersed from overshadowing them behold that they saw that they were encircled about yea every soul by a pillar of fire and nephi and lehi were in the midst of them yea they were encircled about yea they were as if in the midst of a flaming fire yet it did harm them not neither did it take hold upon the walls of the prison and they were filled with that joy which is unspeakable and full of glory and behold the holy spirit of god did come down from heaven and did enter into their hearts and they were filled as if with fire and they could speak forth marvelous words and it came to pass that there came a voice unto them yea a pleasant voice as if it were a whisper saying peace peace be unto you because of your faith in my well-beloved who was from the foundation of the world and now when they heard this they cast up their eyes as if to behold from whence the voice came and behold they saw the heavens open and angels came down out of heaven and ministered unto them and there were about three hundred souls who saw and heard these things and they were bidden to go forth and marvel not neither should they doubt and it came to pass that they did go forth and did minister unto the people declaring throughout all the regions round about all the things which they had heard and seen insomuch that the more part of the lamanites were convinced of them because of the greatness of the evidences which they had received and as many as were convinced did lay down their weapons of war and also their hatred and the tradition of their fathers and it came to pass that they did yield up unto the nephites the lands of their possession helaman chapter six and it came to pass that when the sixty and second year of the reign of the judges had ended all these things had happened and the lamanites had become the more part of them a righteous people insomuch that their righteousness did exceed that of the nephites because of their firmness and their steadiness in the faith for behold there were many of the nephites who had become hardened and impenitent and grossly wicked insomuch that they did reject the word of god and all the preaching and prophesying which did come among them nevertheless the people of the church did have great joy because of the conversion of the lamanites yea because of the church of god which had been established among them and they did fellowship one with another and did rejoice one with another and did have great joy and it came to pass that many of the lamanites did come down into the land of zarahemla and did declare unto the people of the nephites the manner of their conversion and did exhort them to faith and repentance yea and many did preach with exceedingly great power and authority unto the bringing down many of them into the depths of humility to be the humble followers of god and the lamb and it came to pass that many of the lamanites did go into the land northward and also nephi and lehi went into the land northward to preach unto the people and thus ended the sixty and third year and behold there was peace in all the land insomuch that the nephites did go into whatsoever part of the land they would whether among the nephites or the lamanites and it came to pass that the lamanites did also go whithersoever they would whether it were among the lamanites or among the nephites and thus they did have free intercourse one with another to buy and to sell and to get gain according to their desire and it came to pass that they became exceedingly rich both the lamanites and the nephites and they did have an exceeding plenty of gold and of silver and of all manner of precious metals both in the land south and in the land north and the land south was called lehi and the land north was called mulek which was after the son of zedekiah for the lord did bring mulek into the land north and lehi into the land south and behold there was all manner of gold in both these lands and of silver and of precious ore of every kind and there were also curious workmen who did work all kinds of ore and did refine it and thus they did become rich 
They did raise grain in abundance both in the north and in the south, and they did flourish exceedingly both in the north and in the south, and they did multiply and wax exceedingly strong in the land. And they did raise many flocks and herds, yea, many fatlings. Behold, their women did toil and spin, and did make all manner of cloth, of fine twined linen, and cloth of every kind, to clothe their nakedness. And thus the sixty and fourth year did pass away in peace. And in the sixty and fifth year they did also have great joy and peace, yea, much preaching and many prophecies concerning that which was to come. And thus passed away the sixty and fifth year. And it came to pass that in the sixty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, behold, Sezoram was murdered by an unknown hand as he sat upon the judgment seat. And it came to pass that in the same year that his son, who had been appointed by the people in his stead, was also murdered, and thus ended the sixty and sixth year. And in the commencement of the sixty and seventh year the people began to grow exceedingly wicked again. For behold, the Lord had blessed them so long with the riches of the world that they had not been stirred up to anger, to wars, nor to bloodshed. Therefore they began to set their hearts upon their riches. Yea, they began to seek to get gain, that they might be lifted up one above another. Therefore they began to commit secret murders, and to rob and to plunder, that they might get gain. And now behold, those murderers and plunderers were a band who had been formed by Kishkumen and Gadianton. And now it had come to pass that there were many, even among the Nephites of Gadianton's band. But behold, they were more numerous among the more wicked part of the Lamanites, and they were called Gadianton's robbers and murderers. And it was they who did murder the chief judge Sezoram and his son while in the judgment seat, and behold, they were not found. And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that there were robbers among them, they were exceedingly sorrowful and they did use every means in their power to destroy them off the face of the earth. But, behold, Satan did stir up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those bands of robbers, and did enter into their covenants and their oaths, that they would protect and preserve one another, in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed, that they should not suffer for their murders and their plunderings and their stealings. And it came to pass that they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs and their secret words, and this that they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother, nor by those who did belong to his band who had taken this covenant. And thus they might murder and plunder and steal and commit whoredoms and all manner of wickedness, contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. And whosoever of those who belong to their band should reveal unto the world of their wickedness and their abominations should be tried, not according to the laws of their country, but according to the laws of their wickedness, which had been given by Gadianton and Kishkumen. Now behold, it is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world, lest they should be a means of bringing down the people unto destruction. Now behold, those secret oaths and covenants did not come forth unto Gadianton from the records which were delivered unto Helaman. But behold, they were put into the heart of Gadianton by that same being who did entice our first parents to partake of the forbidden fruit. Yea, that same being who did plot with Cain, that if he would murder his brother Abel, it should not be known unto the world. And he did plot with Cain and his followers from that time forth. And also it is that same being who put it into the hearts of the people to build a tower sufficiently high that they might get to heaven. And it was that same being who led on the people who came from that tower into this land, who spread the works of darkness and abominations over all the face of the land, until he dragged the people down to an entire destruction and to an everlasting hell. Yea, it is that same being who put it into the heart of Gadianton to still carry on the work of darkness and of secret murder, and he has brought it forth from the beginning of man even down to this time. And behold, it is he who is the author of all sin. And behold, he doth carry on his works of darkness and secret murder, and doth hand down their plots and their oaths and their covenants and their plans of awful wickedness from generation to generation, according as he can get hold upon the hearts of the children of men. And now, behold, he had got great hold upon the hearts of the Nephites, yea, insomuch that they had become exceedingly wicked, 
Yea, the more part of them had turned out of the way of righteousness, and did trample under their feet the commandments of God, and did turn unto their own ways, and did build up unto themselves idols of their gold and their silver. And it came to pass that all these iniquities did come unto them in the space of not many years, insomuch that a more part of it had come unto them in the sixty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And they did grow in their iniquities in the sixty and eighth year also. And thus we see that the Nephites did begin to dwindle in unbelief, and grow in wickedness and abominations, while the Lamanites began to grow exceedingly in the knowledge of their God. Yea, they did begin to keep his statutes and commandments, and to walk in truth and uprightness before him. And thus we see that the Spirit of the Lord began to withdraw from the Nephites, because of the wickedness and the hardness of their hearts. And thus we see that the Lord began to pour out his Spirit upon the Lamanites, because of their easiness and willingness to believe in his words. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did hunt the band of robbers of Gadianton, and they did preach the word of God among the more wicked part of them, insomuch that this band of robbers was utterly destroyed from among the Lamanites. And it came to pass, on the other hand, that the Nephites did build them up, and support them, beginning at the more wicked part of them, until they had overspread all the land of the Nephites, and had seduced the more part of the righteous, until they had come down to believe in their works, and partake of their spoils, and to join with them in their secret murders and combinations. And thus they did obtain the sole management of the government, insomuch that they did trample under their feet, and smite, and rend, and turn their backs upon the poor, and the meek, and the humble followers of God. And thus we see that they were in an awful state, and ripening for an everlasting destruction. And it came to pass that thus ended the sixty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Helaman chapter 7 Behold, now it came to pass in the sixty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of the Nephites, that Nephi the son of Helaman returned to the land of Zarahemla from the land northward. For he had been forth among the people who were in the land northward, and did preach the word of God unto them, and did prophesy many things unto them. And they did reject all his words, insomuch that he could not stay among them, but returned again unto the land of his nativity. And seeing the people in a state of such awful wickedness, and those Gadianton robbers filling the judgment seats, having usurped the power and authority of the land, laying aside the commandments of God, and not in the least a right before him, doing no justice unto the children of men, condemning the righteous because of their righteousness, letting the guilty and the wicked go unpunished because of their money, and moreover to be held in office at the head of government, to rule and to do according to their wills that they might get gain and glory of the world, and moreover that they might the more easily commit adultery and steal and kill and do according to their own wills. Now this great iniquity had come upon the Nephites in the space of not many years. And when Nephi saw it, his heart was swollen with sorrow within his breast, and he did exclaim in the agony of his soul, Oh, that I could have had my days in the days when my father Nephi first came out of the land of Jerusalem, that I could have joyed with him in the promised land. Then were his people easy to be entreated, firm to keep the commandments of God, and slow to be led to do iniquity, and they were quick to hearken unto the words of the Lord. Yea, if my days could have been in those days, then would my soul have had joy in the righteousness of my brethren. But, behold, I am consigned that these are my days, and that my soul shall be filled with sorrow because of this the wickedness of my brethren. And, behold, now it came to pass that it was upon a tower which was in the garden of Nephi, which was in the highway which led to the chief market, which was in the city of Zarahemla, Therefore Nephi had bowed himself upon the tower which was in his garden, which tower was also near unto the garden gate, by which led the highway. And it came to pass that there were certain men passing by, and saw Nephi as he was pouring out his soul unto God upon the tower. And they ran and told the people what they had seen, and the people came together in multitudes, that they might know the cause of so great mourning for the wickedness of the people. And now when Nephi arose, he beheld the multitudes of people who had gathered together. And it came to pass that he opened his mouth and said unto them, Behold, why have ye gathered yourselves together, that I may tell you of your iniquities? 
yea, because I have got upon my tower, that I might pour out my soul unto my God, because of the exceeding sorrow of my heart, which is because of your iniquities. And because of my mourning and lamentation ye have gathered yourselves together, and do marvel. Yea, and ye have great need to marvel. Yea, ye ought to marvel, because ye are given away, that the devil has got so great hold upon your hearts. Yea, how could you have given way to the enticing of him who is seeking to hurl away your souls down to everlasting misery and endless woe? O oh, repent ye, repent ye, why will ye die? Turn ye, turn ye unto the Lord your God. Why has he forsaken you? It is because you have hardened your hearts. Yea, ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd. Yea, ye have provoked him to anger against you. And behold, instead of gathering you, except ye will repent, behold, he shall scatter you forth, that ye shall become meat for dogs and wild beasts. Oh, how could you have forgotten your God in the very day that he has delivered you? But, behold, it is to get gain, to be praised of men, yea, and that ye might get gold and silver. And ye have set your hearts upon the riches and the vain things of this world, for the which ye do murder, and plunder, and steal, and bear false witness against your neighbor, and do all manner of iniquity. And for this cause woe shall come unto you, except ye shall repent. For if ye will not repent, behold, this great city, and also all those great cities which are round about, which are in the land of your possession, shall be taken away, that ye shall have no place in them. For behold, the Lord will not grant unto you strength, as he has hitherto done, to withstand against your enemies. For behold, thus saith the Lord, I will not show unto the wicked of my strength, to one more than the other, save it be unto those that repent of their sins and hearken unto my words. Now therefore I would that ye should behold my brethren, that it shall be better for the Lamanites than for you, except ye shall repent. For behold, they are more righteous than you, for they have not sinned against that great knowledge which ye have received. Therefore the Lord will be merciful unto them, yea, he will lengthen out their days and increase their seed, even when thou shalt be utterly destroyed, except thou shalt repent. Yea, woe be unto you, because of that great abomination which has come among you, and ye have united yourselves unto it, yea, to that secret band which was established by Gadianton. Yea, woe shall come unto you because of that pride which ye have suffered to enter your hearts, which has lifted you up beyond that which is good because of your exceedingly great riches. Yea, woe be unto you because of your wickedness and abominations, and except ye repent ye shall perish, yea, even your land shall be taken from you and ye shall be destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold, now I do not say that these things shall be of myself, because it is not of myself that I know these things. But behold, I know that these things are true, because the Lord God has made them known unto me. Therefore I testify that they shall be. End of Helaman chapters 5 through 7 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah Please visit at hesmes.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 8 through 11 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, Chapters 8 through 11. Helaman, chapter 8. And now it came to pass that when Nephi had said these words, behold, there were men who were judges who also belonged to the secret band of Gadianton, and they were angry, and they cried out against him, saying unto the people, Why do ye not seize upon this man and bring him forth, that he may be condemned according to the crime which he has done? Why seest thou this man, and hearest him revile against this people and against our law? For behold, Nephi had spoken unto them concerning the corruptness of their law. Yea, many things did Nephi speak which cannot be written, and nothing did he speak which was contrary to the commandments of God. And those judges were angry with him, because he spake plainly unto them concerning their secret works of darkness. 
Nevertheless, they durst not lay their own hands upon him, for they feared the people, lest they should cry out against them. Therefore they did cry unto the people, saying, Why do you suffer this man to revile against us? For behold, he doth condemn all this people, even unto destruction. Yea, and also that these our great cities shall be taken from us, that we shall have no place in them. And now we know that this is impossible, for behold, we are powerful, and our cities great. Therefore our enemies can have no power over us. And it came to pass that thus they did stir up the people to anger against Nephi, and raised contentions among them. For there were some who did cry out, Let this man alone, for he is a good man, and those things which he saith will surely come to pass, except we repent. Yea, behold, all the judgments will come upon us, which he has testified unto us, for we know that he has testified aright unto us concerning our iniquities. And behold, they are many, and he knoweth as well all things which shall befall us as he knoweth of our iniquities. Yea, and behold, if he had not been a prophet, he could not have testified concerning those things. And it came to pass that those people who sought to destroy Nephi were compelled because of their fear, that they did not lay their hands on him. Therefore he began again to speak unto them, seeing that he had gained favor in the eyes of some, insomuch that the remainder of them did fear. Therefore he was constrained to speak more unto them, saying, Behold, my brethren, have ye not read that God gave power unto one man, even Moses, to smite upon the waters of the Red Sea? And they parted hither and thither, insomuch that the Israelites, who were our fathers, came through upon dry ground, and the waters closed upon the armies of the Egyptians and swallowed them up. And now, behold, if God gave unto this man such power, then why should ye dispute among yourselves, and say that he hath given unto me no power whereby I may know concerning the judgments that shall come upon you, except ye repent? But, behold, ye not only deny my words, but ye also deny all the words which have been spoken by our fathers, and also the words which were spoken by this man, Moses, who had such great power given unto him, yea, the words which he hath spoken concerning the coming of the Messiah. Yea, did he not bear record that the Son of God should come? And as he lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness, even so shall he be lifted up who should come. And as many as should look upon that serpent should live, even so as many as should look upon the Son of God with faith, having a contrite spirit might live, even unto that life which is eternal. And now, behold, Moses did not only testify of these things, but also all the holy prophets, from his days even to the days of Abraham. Yea, and behold, Abraham saw of his coming, and was filled with gladness, and did rejoice. Yea, and behold, I say unto you that Abraham not only knew of these things, but there were many before the days of Abraham, who were called by the order of God, yea, even after the order of his son and this that it should be shown unto the people a great many thousand years before his coming, that even redemption should come unto them. And now I would that ye should know, that even since the days of Abraham there have been many prophets that have testified these things. Yea, behold, the prophet Zenos did testify boldly, for the which he was slain. And behold also Zenoch, and also Esaias, and also Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah being that same prophet who testified of the destruction of Jerusalem. And now we know that Jerusalem was destroyed according to the words of Jeremiah. Oh, then why not the Son of God come according to his prophecy? And now will you dispute that Jerusalem was destroyed? Will ye say that the sons of Zedekiah were not slain, all except it were Mulek? Yea, and do ye not behold that the seed of Zedekiah are with us, and they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem? But, behold, this is not all. Our father Lehi was driven out of Jerusalem because he testified of these things. Nephi also testified of these things, and also almost all of our fathers, even down to this time, yea, they have testified of the coming of Christ, and have looked forward, and have rejoiced in his day which is to come. And, behold, he is God, and he is with them, and he did manifest himself unto them, that they were redeemed by him, and they gave unto him glory, because of that which is to come. And now, seeing ye know these things, and cannot deny them, except ye shall lie, 
therefore in this ye have sinned for ye have rejected all these things notwithstanding so many evidences which ye have received yea even ye have received all things both things in heaven and all things which are in the earth as a witness that they are true but behold ye have rejected the truth and rebelled against your holy god and even at this time instead of laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven where nothing doth corrupt and where nothing can come which is unclean ye are heaping up for yourselves wrath against the day of judgment yea even at this time ye are ripening because of your murders and your fornication and wickedness for everlasting destruction yea and except ye repent it will come unto you soon yea behold it is now even at your doors yea go ye in unto the judgment seat and search and behold your judge is murdered and he lieth in his blood and he hath been murdered by his brother who seeketh to sit in the judgment seat and behold they both belong to your secret band whose author is gadianton and the evil one who seeketh to destroy the souls of men helaman chapter nine behold now it came to pass that when nephi had spoken these words certain men who were among them ran to the judgment seat yea even there were five who went and they said among themselves as they went behold and now we will know of a surety whether this man be a prophet and god hath commanded him to prophesy such marvellous things unto us behold we do not believe that he hath yea we do not believe that he is a prophet nevertheless if this thing which he hath said concerning the chief judge be true that he be dead then will we believe that the other words which he has spoken are true and it came to pass that they ran in their might and came in unto the judgment seat and behold the chief judge had fallen to the earth and did lie in his blood and now behold when they saw this they were astonished exceedingly insomuch that they fell to the earth for they had not believed the words which nephi had spoken concerning the chief judge but now when they saw that they believed and fear came upon them lest all the judgments which nephi had spoken should come upon the people therefore they did quake and had fallen to the earth now immediately when the judge had been murdered he being stabbed by his brother by a garb of secrecy and he fled and the servants ran and told the people raising the cry of murder among them and behold the people did gather themselves together unto the place of the judgment seat and behold to their astonishment they saw those five men who had fallen to the earth and now behold the people knew nothing concerning the multitude who had gathered together at the garden of nephi therefore they said among themselves these men are they who have murdered the judge and god has smitten them that they could not flee from us and it came to pass that they laid hold on them and bound them and cast them into prison and there was a proclamation sent abroad that the judge was slain and that the murderers had been taken and were cast into prison and it came to pass that on the morrow the people did assemble themselves together to mourn and to fast at the burial of the great chief judge who had been slain and thus also those judges who were at the garden of nephi and heard his words were also gathered together at the burial and it came to pass that they inquired among the people saying where are the five who were sent to inquire concerning the chief judge whether he was dead and they answered and said concerning this five whom ye say ye have sent we know not but there are five who are the murderers whom we have cast into prison and it came to pass that the judges desired that they should be brought and they were brought and behold they were the five who were sent and behold the judges inquired of them to know concerning the matter and they told them all that they had done saying we ran and came to the place of the judgment seat and when we saw all things even as nephi had testified we were astonished insomuch that we fell to the earth and when we were recovered from our astonishment behold they cast us into prison now as for the murder of this man we know not who has done it and only this much we know we ran and came according as ye desired and behold he was dead according to the words of nephi and now it came to pass that the judges did expound the matter unto the people and did cry against nephi saying behold we know that this nephi must have agreed with some one to slay the judge and then he might declare it unto us that he might convert us unto his faith that he might raise himself to be a great man chosen of god and a prophet 
and now behold we will detect this man and he shall confess his fault and make known unto us the true murderer of this judge and it came to pass that the five were liberated on the day of the burial nevertheless they did rebuke the judges in the words which they had spoken against nephi and did contend with them one by one insomuch that they did confound them nevertheless they caused that nephi should be taken and bound and brought before the multitude and they began to question him in divers ways that they might cross him that they might accuse him to death saying unto him thou art confederate who is this man that hath done this murder now tell us and acknowledge thy fault saying behold here is money and also we will grant unto thee thy life if thou wilt tell us and acknowledge the agreement which thou hast made with him but nephi said unto them o ye fools ye uncircumcised of heart ye blind and ye stiff-necked people do ye know how long the lord your god will suffer you that ye shall go on in this your way of sin O oh, ye ought to begin to howl and mourn because of the great destruction which at this time doth await you, except ye shall repent. Behold, ye say that I have agreed with a man that he should murder Caesarum, our chief judge. But behold, I say unto you that this is because I have testified unto you that ye might know concerning this thing. Yea, even for a witness unto you that I did know of the wickedness and abominations which are among you and because i have done this ye say that i have agreed with a man that he should do this thing yea because i showed unto you this sign ye are angry with me and seek to destroy my life and now behold i will show unto you another sign and see if ye will in this thing seek to destroy me behold i say unto you go to the house of seantum who is the brother of Caesarum, and say unto him has nephi the pretended prophet who doth prophesy so much evil concerning this people agreed with thee in the which ye have murdered Caesarum, who is your brother and behold he shall say unto you nay and ye shall say unto him have ye murdered your brother and he shall stand with fear and wist not what to say and behold he shall deny unto you and he shall make as if he were astonished nevertheless he shall declare unto you that he is innocent but behold ye shall examine him and ye shall find blood upon the skirts of his cloak and when ye have seen this ye shall say from whence cometh this blood do we not know that it is the blood of your brother and then shall he tremble and shall look pale even as if death had come upon him and then shall ye say because of this fear and this paleness which has come upon your face behold we know that thou art guilty and then shall the greater fear come upon him and then shall he confess unto you and deny no more that he has done this murder and then shall he say unto you that i nephi know nothing concerning the matter save it were given unto me by the power of god and then shall ye know that i am an honest man and that i am sent unto you from god and it came to pass that they went and did even according as nephi had said unto them and behold the words which he had said were true for according to the words he did deny and also according to the words he did confess and he was brought to prove that he himself was the very murderer insomuch that the five were set at liberty and also was nephi and there were some of the nephites who believed on the words of nephi and there were some also who believed because of the testimony of the five for they had been converted while they were in prison and now there were some among the people who said that nephi was a prophet and there were others who said behold he is a god for except he was a god he could not know of all things for behold he has told us the thoughts of our hearts and also has told us things and even he has brought unto our knowledge the true murderer of our chief judge Helaman chapter 10 and it came to pass that there arose a division among the people insomuch that they divided hither and thither and went their ways leaving nephi alone as he was standing in the midst of them and it came to pass that nephi went his way towards his own house pondering upon the things which the lord had shown unto him 
and it came to pass as he was thus pondering being much cast down because of the wickedness of the people of the nephites their secret works of darkness and their murderings and their plunderings and all manner of iniquities and it came to pass as he was thus pondering in his heart behold a voice came unto him saying blessed art thou nephi for those things which thou hast done for i have beheld how thou hast with unwearyingness declared the word which i have given unto thee unto this people and thou hast not feared them and hast not sought thine own life but hast sought my will and to keep my commandments and now because thou hast done this with such unwearyingness behold i will bless thee forever and i will make thee mighty in word and in deed in faith and in works yea even that all things shall be done unto thee according to thy word for thou shalt not ask that which is contrary to my will. Behold, thou art Nephi, and I am God. Behold, I declare it unto thee in the presence of mine angels, that ye shall have power over this people, and shall smite the earth with famine, and with pestilence, and destruction, according to the wickedness of this people. Behold, I give unto you power that whatsoever ye shall seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, and thus shall ye have power among this people. And thus if ye shall say unto this temple, It shall be rent in twain, it shall be done. And if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou cast down and become smooth, it shall be done. And behold, if ye shall say that God shall smite this people, it shall come to pass. And now behold, I command you that ye shall go and declare unto this people that thus saith the Lord God, who is the Almighty, Except ye repent, ye shall be smitten even unto destruction. And behold, now it came to pass that when the Lord had spoken these words unto Nephi, he did stop, and did not go unto his own house, but did return unto the multitudes who were scattered about upon the face of the land, and began to declare unto them, the word of the Lord which had been spoken unto him concerning their destruction, if they did not repent. Now behold, notwithstanding that great miracle which Nephi had done in telling them concerning the death of the chief judge, they did harden their hearts, and did not hearken unto the words of the Lord. Therefore Nephi did declare unto them the word of the Lord, saying, Except ye repent, thus saith the Lord, ye shall be smitten even unto destruction. And it came to pass that when Nephi had declared unto them the word, behold, they did still harden their hearts, and would not hearken unto his words. Therefore they did revile against him, and did seek to lay their hands upon him, that they might cast him into prison. But behold, the power of God was with him, and they could not take him to cast him into prison, for he was taken by the Spirit, and conveyed away out of the midst of them. And it came to pass that thus he did go forth in the Spirit, from multitude to multitude, declaring the word of God, even until he had declared it unto them all, or sent it forth among all the people. And it came to pass that they would not hearken unto his words. And there began to be contentions, insomuch that they were divided against themselves, and began to slay one another with the sword. And thus ended the seventy and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Helaman chapter 11 And now it came to pass, in the seventy and second year of the reign of the judges, that the contentions did increase, insomuch that there were wars throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. And it was this secret band of robbers who did carry on this work of destruction and wickedness, and this war did last all that year, and in the seventy and third year it did also last. And it came to pass, that in this year Nephi did cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, do not suffer that this people shall be destroyed by the sword. But, O Lord, rather let there be a famine in the land, to stir them up in remembrance of the Lord their God. And perhaps they will repent and turn unto thee. And so it was done, according to the words of Nephi. And there was a great famine upon the land among all the people of Nephi, and thus in the seventy and fourth year the famine did continue, and the work of destruction did cease by the sword, but became sore by famine. And this work of destruction did also continue in the seventy and fifth year, 
for the earth was smitten, that it was dry, and did not yield forth grain in the season of grain. And the whole earth was smitten, even among the Lamanites as well as among the Nephites, so that they were smitten that they did perish by thousands in the more wicked parts of the land. And it came to pass that the people saw that they were about to perish by famine, and they began to remember the Lord their God, and they began to remember the words of Nephi. And the people began to plead with their chief judges and their leaders, that they would say unto Nephi, Behold, we know that thou art a man of God, and therefore cry unto the Lord our God, that he turn away from us this famine, lest all the words which thou hast spoken concerning our destruction be fulfilled. And it came to pass that the judges did say unto Nephi according to the words which had been desired. And it came to pass that when Nephi saw that the people had repented and did humble themselves in sackcloth, he cried again unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, behold, this people repenteth, and they have swept away the band of Gadianton from amongst them, insomuch that they have become extinct, and they have concealed their secret plans in the earth. Now, O Lord, because of this their humility, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and let thine anger be appeased in the destruction of those wicked men whom thou hast already destroyed. O Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, yea, thy fierce anger, and cause that this famine may cease in this land? O Lord, wilt thou hearken unto me, and cause that it may be done according to my words, and send forth rain upon the face of the earth, that she may bring forth her fruit and her grain in the season of grain? O Lord, thou didst hearken unto my words when I said, Let there be a famine, that the pestilence of the sword might cease. And I know that thou wilt, even at this time, hearken unto my words, for thou saidst that, If this people repent, I will spare them. Yea, O Lord, and thou seest that they have repented, because of the famine and the pestilence and destruction which has come unto them. And now, O Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and try again if they will serve thee? And if so, O Lord, thou canst bless them according to thy words which thou hast said. And it came to pass that in the seventy and sixth year the Lord did turn away his anger from the people, and caused that rain should fall upon the earth, insomuch that it did bring forth her fruit in the season of her fruit. And it came to pass that it did bring forth her grain in the season of her grain. And behold, the people did rejoice, and glorify God, and the whole face of the land was filled with rejoicing, and they did no more seek to destroy Nephi, but they did esteem him as a great prophet and a man of God, having great power and authority given unto him from God. And behold, Lehi his brother was not a whit behind him as to things pertaining to righteousness. And thus it did come to pass that the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land, and began to build up their waste places, and began to multiply and spread, even until they did cover the whole face of the land, both on the northward and on the southward, from the sea west to the sea east. And it came to pass that the seventy and sixth year did end in peace, and the seventy and seventh year began in peace, and the church did spread throughout the face of all the land, and the more part of the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, did belong to the church, and they did have exceedingly great peace in the land, and thus ended the seventy and seventh year. And also they had peace in the seventy and eighth year, save it were a few contentions concerning the points of doctrine which had been laid down by the prophets. And in the seventy and ninth year there began to be much strife. But it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi and many of their brethren, who knew concerning the true points of doctrine, having many revelations daily, Therefore they did preach unto the people, insomuch that they did put an end to their strife in that same year. And it came to pass that in the eightieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were a certain number of the dissenters from the people of Nephi, who had some years before gone over unto the Lamanites, and taken upon themselves the name of Lamanites, and also a certain number who were real descendants of the Lamanites, being stirred up to anger by them, or by those dissenters, therefore they commenced a war with their brethren, and they did commit murder and plunder, and then they would retreat back into the mountains and into the wilderness and secret places, hiding themselves that they could not be discovered, receiving daily in addition to their numbers, 
inasmuch as there were dissenters that went forth among them. And thus in time, yea, even in the space of not many years, they became an exceedingly great band of robbers, and they did search out all the secret plans of Gadianton, and thus they became robbers of Gadianton. Now behold, these robbers did make great havoc, yea, even great destruction among the people of Nephi, and also among the people of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that it was expedient that there should be a stop put to this work of destruction. Therefore they sent an army of strong men into the wilderness and upon the mountains to search out this band of robbers and to destroy them. But behold, it came to pass that in that same year they were driven back even into their own lands. And thus ended the eightieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the commencement of the eighty and first year they did go forth again against this band of robbers, and did destroy many, and they were also visited with much destruction. And they were again obliged to return out of the wilderness, and out of the mountains unto their own lands, because of the exceeding greatness of the numbers of those robbers who infested the mountains and the wilderness. And it came to pass that thus ended this year, and the robbers did still increase and wax strong, insomuch that they did defy the whole armies of the Nephites and also of the Lamanites, and they did cause great fear to come unto the people upon all the face of the land. Yea, for they did visit many parts of the land, and did do great destruction unto them. Yea, did kill many, and did carry away others captive into the wilderness, yea, and more especially their women and their children. Now this great evil, which came unto the people because of their iniquity, did stir them up again in remembrance of the Lord their God. And thus ended the eighty and first year of the reign of the judges. And in the eighty and second year they began again to forget the Lord their God. And in the eighty and third year they began to wax strong in iniquity. And in the eighty and fourth year they did not mend their ways. And it came to pass in the eighty and fifth year they did wax stronger and stronger in their pride and in their wickedness, and thus they were ripening again for destruction. And thus ended the eighty and fifth year. End of Helaman chapters 8 through 11 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Helaman, chapters 12 through 16 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Helaman, chapters 12 through 16. Helaman, chapter 12. And thus we can behold how faults, and also the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. Yea, we can see that the Lord in his great infinite goodness doth bless and prosper those who put their trust in him. Yea, and we may see at the very time when he doth prosper his people, yea, in the increase of their fields, their flocks, and their herds, and in gold, and in silver, and in all manner of precious things of every kind and art, sparing their lives and delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies, that they should not declare wars against them, yea, and in fine, doing all things for the welfare and happiness of his people, yea, then is the time that they do harden their hearts, and do forget the Lord their God, and do trample under their feet the Holy One, yea, and this because of their ease and their exceedingly great prosperity. And thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions, yea, except he doth visit them with death and with terror and with famine and with all manner of pestilence, they will not remember him. Oh, how foolish, and how vain, and how evil, and devilish, and how quick to do iniquity! and how slow to do good are the children of men. Yea, how quick to hearken unto the words of the evil one, and to set their hearts upon the vain things of the world. Yea, how quick to be lifted up in pride. Yea, how quick to boast, and do all manner of that which is iniquity. And how slow are they to remember the Lord their God, and to give ear unto his counsels. Yea, how slow to walk in wisdom's paths. Behold, they do not desire that the Lord their God, who hath created them, should rule and reign over them, notwithstanding his great goodness and his mercy towards them. They do set at naught his counsels. 
and they will not that he should be their guide. Oh, how great is the nothingness of the children of men! Yea, even they are less than the dust of the earth. For behold, the dust of the earth moveth hither and thither to the dividing asunder at the command of our great and everlasting God. Yea, behold, at his voice do the hills and mountains tremble and quake, and by the power of his voice they are broken up and become smooth, yea, even like unto a valley. Yea, by the power of his voice doth the whole earth shake. Yea, by the power of his voice do the foundations rock, even to the very center. Yea, and if he say unto the earth, Move, it is moved. Yea, and if he say unto the earth, Thou shalt go back, that it lengthen out the day for many hours it is done. And thus, according to his word, the earth goeth back, and it appeareth unto man that the sun standeth still. Yea, and behold, this is so. For surely it is the earth that moveth, and not the sun. And behold also, if he say unto the waters of the great deep, Be thou dried up, it is done. Behold, if he say unto this mountain, Be thou raised up, and come over, and fall upon that city, that it be buried up, behold, it is done. And behold, if a man hide up a treasure in the earth, and the Lord shall say, Let it be accursed, because of the iniquity of him who hath hid it up, Behold, it shall be accursed. And if the Lord shall say, Be thou accursed, that no man shall find thee from this time henceforth and forever, behold, no man getteth it henceforth and forever. And behold, if the Lord shall say unto a man, Because of thine iniquities thou shalt be accursed for ever, it shall be done. And if the Lord shall say, Because of thine iniquities thou shalt be cut off from my presence, he will cause that it shall be so. And woe unto him to whom he shall say this, for it shall be unto him that will do iniquity, and he cannot be saved. Therefore for this cause, that men might be saved, hath repentance been declared. Therefore blessed are they who will repent and hearken unto the voice of the Lord their God, for these are they that shall be saved. And may God grant in his great fullness that men might be brought unto repentance and good works that they might be restored unto grace for grace, according to their works. And I would that all men might be saved, but we read that in the great and last day there are some who shall be cast out, yea, who shall be cast off from the presence of the Lord, yea, who shall be consigned to a state of endless misery, fulfilling the words which say, They that have done good shall have everlasting life, and they that have done evil shall have everlasting damnation. And thus it is. Amen. Helaman, chapter 13 And now it came to pass, in the eighty and sixth year, the Nephites did still remain in wickedness, yea, in great wickedness, while the Lamanites did observe strictly to keep the commandments of God according to the law of Moses. And it came to pass that in this year there was one Samuel, a Lamanite, come into the land of Zarahemla, and began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass that he did preach many days repentance unto the people, and they did cast him out, and he was about to return to his own land. But behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, that he should return again and prophesy unto the people whatsoever things should come into his heart. And it came to pass that they would not suffer that he should enter into the city. Therefore he went and got upon the wall thereof, and stretched forth his hand, and cried with a loud voice, and prophesied unto the people whatsoever things the Lord put into his heart. And he said unto them, Behold, I, Samuel, a Lamanite, do speak the words of the Lord which he doth put into my heart. And behold, he hath put it into my heart to say unto this people, that the sword of justice hangeth over this people, and four hundred years pass not away, save the sword of justice falleth upon this people. Yea, heavy destruction awaiteth this people, and it surely cometh unto this people, and nothing can save this people, save it be repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, who surely shall come into the world, and shall suffer many things, and shall be slain by his people. And behold, an angel of the Lord hath declared it unto me, and he did bring glad tidings to my soul. And behold, I was sent unto you to declare it unto you also, that ye might have glad tidings. But behold, ye would not receive me. 
Therefore thus saith the Lord, Because of the hardness of the hearts of the people of the Nephites, except they repent, I will take away my word from them, and I will withdraw my spirit from them, and I will suffer them no longer, and I will turn the hearts of their brethren against them. And four hundred years shall not pass away before I will cause that they shall be smitten. Yea, I will visit them with the sword, and with famine, and with pestilence. Yea, I will visit them in my fierce anger. And there shall be those of the fourth generation who shall live of your enemies to behold your utter destruction. And this shall surely come, except ye repent, saith the Lord. And those of the fourth generation shall visit your destruction. But if ye will repent and return unto the Lord your God, I will turn away mine anger, saith the Lord. Yea, thus saith the Lord, Blessed are they who will repent and turn unto me. But woe unto him that repenteth not. Yea, woe unto this great city of Zarahemla. For behold, it is because of those who are righteous that it is saved. Yea, woe unto this great city, for I perceive, saith the Lord, that there are many, yea, even the more part of this great city, that will harden their hearts against me, saith the Lord. But blessed are they who will repent, for them will I spare. But behold, if it were not for the righteous who are in this great city, behold, I would cause that fire should come down out of heaven and destroy it. But behold, it is for the righteous' sake that it is spared. But behold, the time cometh, saith the Lord, that when ye shall cast out the righteous from among you, then shall ye be ripe for destruction. Yea, woe be unto this great city because of the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Yea, and woe be unto the city of Gideon for the wickedness and abominations which are in her. Yea, and woe be unto all the cities which are in the land round about, which are possessed by the Nephites because of the wickedness and abominations which are in them. And behold, a curse shall come upon the land, saith the Lord of hosts, because of the people's sake who are upon the land, yea, because of their wickedness and their abominations. And it shall come to pass, saith the Lord of hosts, yea, our great and true God, that whoso shall hide up treasures in the earth shall find them again no more, because of the great curse of the land, save he be a righteous man, and shall hide it up unto the Lord. For I will, saith the Lord, that they shall hide up their treasures unto me, and cursed be they who hide not up their treasures unto me. For none hideth up their treasures unto me, save it be the righteous. And he that hideth not up his treasures unto me, cursed is he, and also the treasure. And none shall redeem it, because of the curse of the land. And the day shall come, that they shall hide up their treasures, because they have set their hearts upon riches. And because they have set their hearts upon their riches, and will hide up their treasures, when they shall flee before their enemies, because they will not hide them up unto me, cursed be they, and also their treasures. And in that day shall they be smitten, saith the Lord. Behold ye, the people of this great city, and hearken unto my words, yea, hearken unto the words which the Lord saith. For behold, he saith that ye are cursed because of your riches, and also are your riches cursed because ye have set your hearts upon them, and have not hearkened unto the words of him who gave them unto you. Ye do not remember the Lord your God in the things with which he hath blessed you, but ye do always remember your riches, not to thank the Lord your God for them. Yea, your hearts are not drawn out unto the Lord, but they do swell with great pride unto boasting, and unto great swelling, envyings, strifes, malice, persecutions, and murders, and all manner of iniquities. For this cause hath the Lord God caused that a curse should come upon the land, and also upon your riches, and this because of your iniquities. Yea, woe unto this people because of this time which has arrived, that ye do cast out the prophets, and do mock them, and cast stones at them, and do slay them, and do all manner of iniquity unto them, even as they did of old time. And now when ye talk, ye say, If our days had been in the days of our fathers of old, we would not have slain the prophets, we would not have stoned them, and cast them out. Behold, ye are worse than they, for as the Lord liveth, if a prophet come among you, and declareth unto you the word of the Lord, which testifieth of your sins and iniquities, 
ye are angry with him, and cast him out, and seek all manner of ways to destroy him. Yea, you will say that he is a false prophet, and that he is a sinner, and of the devil, because he testifieth that your deeds are evil. But behold, if a man shall come among you, and shall say, Do this, and there is no iniquity, do that, and ye shall not suffer, yea, he will say, Walk after the pride of your own hearts, yea, walk after the pride of your eyes, and do whatsoever your heart desireth. And if a man shall come among you and say this, ye will receive him, and say that he is a prophet. Yea, ye will lift him up, and ye will give unto him of your substance, ye will give unto him of your gold, and of your silver, and ye will clothe him with costly apparel, and because he speaketh flattering words unto you, and he saith that all is well, then ye will not find fault with him. O ye wicked, and ye perverse generation, ye hardened, and ye stiff-necked people, how long will ye suppose that the Lord will suffer you? Yea, how long will ye suffer yourselves to be led by foolish and blind guides? Yea, how long will ye choose darkness rather than light? Yea, behold, the anger of the Lord is already kindled against you. Behold, he hath cursed the land because of your iniquity. And behold, the time cometh that he curseth your riches, that they become slippery, that ye cannot hold them. And in the days of your poverty ye cannot retain them. And in the days of your poverty ye shall cry unto the Lord, and in vain shall ye cry, for your desolation is already come upon you, and your destruction is made sure. And then shall ye weep and howl in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And then shall ye lament and say, Oh, that I had repented, and had not killed the prophets, and stoned them, and cast them out. Yea, in that day ye shall say, Oh, that we had remembered the Lord our God in the day that he gave us our riches, and then they would not have become slippery, that we should lose them, for behold, our riches are gone from us. Behold, we lay a tool here, and on the morrow it is gone, and behold, our swords are taken from us in the day we have sought them for battle. Yea, we have hid up our treasure, and they have slipped away from us because of the curse of the land. Oh, that we had repented in the day that the word of the Lord came unto us. For behold, the land is cursed, and all things are become slippery, and we cannot hold them. Behold, we are surrounded by demons. Yea, we are encircled about by the angels of him who hath sought to destroy our souls. Behold, our iniquities are great. O Lord, canst thou not turn away thine anger from us? And this shall be your language in those days. But behold, your days of probation are past. Ye have procrastinated the day of your salvation until it is everlastingly too late, and your destruction is made sure. Yea, for ye have sought all the days of your lives for that which ye could not obtain, and ye have sought for happiness in doing iniquity, which thing is contrary to the nature of that righteousness which is in our great and eternal head. O ye people of the land, that ye would hear my words, and I pray that the anger of the Lord be turned away from you, and that you would repent and be saved. Helaman chapter 14 And now it came to pass that Samuel the Lamanite did prophesy a great many more things which cannot be written. And behold, he said unto them, Behold, I give unto you a sign, for five years more cometh, and behold, then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. And behold, this will I give unto you for a sign at the time of his coming. For behold, there shall be great lights in heaven, insomuch that in the night before he cometh there shall be no darkness, insomuch that it shall appear unto man as if it was day. Therefore there shall be one day and a night and a day, as if it were one day, and there were no night. And this shall be unto you for a sign. For ye shall know of the rising of the sun, and also of its setting. Therefore they shall know of a surety that there shall be two days and a night. Nevertheless, the night shall not be darkened, and it shall be the night before he is born. And behold, there shall a new star arise, such an one as ye never have beheld, and this also shall be a sign unto you. And behold, this is not all. There shall be many signs and wonders in heaven. 
and it shall come to pass that ye shall all be amazed and wonder insomuch that ye shall fall to the earth and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall believe on the son of god the same shall have everlasting life and behold thus hath the lord commanded me by his angel that i should come and tell this thing unto you yea he hath commanded that i should prophesy these things unto you yea he hath said unto me cry unto this people repent and prepare the way of the lord and now because i am a lamanite and have spoken unto you the words which the lord hath commanded me and because it was hard against you ye are angry with me and do seek to destroy me and have cast me out from among you and ye shall hear my words for for this intent have i come up upon the walls of this city that ye might hear and know of the judgments of god which do await you because of your iniquities and also that ye might know the conditions of repentance and also that ye might know of the coming of jesus christ the son of god the father of heaven and of earth the creator of all things from the beginning and that ye might know of the signs of his coming to the intent that ye might believe on his name and if ye believe on his name ye will repent of all your sins that thereby ye may have a remission of them through his merits and behold again another sign i give unto you yea a sign of his death for behold he surely must die that salvation may come yea it behooveth him and becometh expedient that he dieth to bring to pass the resurrection of the dead that thereby men may be brought into the presence of the lord yea behold this death bringeth to pass the resurrection and redeemeth all mankind from the first death that spiritual death for all mankind by the fall of adam being cut off from the presence of the lord are considered as dead both as to things temporal and to things spiritual but behold the resurrection of christ redeemeth mankind yea even all mankind and bringeth them back into the presence of the lord yea and it bringeth to pass the condition of repentance that whosoever repenteth the same is not hewn down and cast into the fire but whosoever repenteth not is hewn down and cast into the fire and there cometh upon them again a spiritual death yea a second death for they are cut off again as to things pertaining to righteousness therefore repent ye repent ye lest by knowing these things and not doing them ye shall suffer yourselves to come under condemnation and ye are brought down unto this second death but behold as i said unto you concerning another sign a sign of his death behold in that day that he shall suffer death the sun shall be darkened and refuse to give his light unto you and also the moon and the stars and there shall be no light upon the face of the land even from the time that he shall suffer death for the space of three days to the time that he shall rise again from the dead yea at the time that he shall yield up the ghost there shall be thunderings and lightnings for the space of many hours and the earth shall shake and tremble and the rocks which are upon the face of this earth which are both above the earth and beneath which ye know at this time are solid or the more part of it is one solid mass shall be broken up yea there shall be rent in twain and shall ever after be found in seams and in cracks and in broken fragments upon the face of the whole earth yea both above the earth and beneath and behold there shall be great tempests and there shall be many mountains laid low like unto a valley and there shall be many places which are now called valleys which shall become mountains whose height is great and many highways shall be broken up and many cities shall become desolate and many graves shall be opened and shall yield up many of their dead and many saints shall appear unto many and behold thus hath the angel spoken unto me for he said unto me that there should be thunderings and lightnings for the space of many hours and he said unto me that while the thunder and lightning lasted and the tempest that these things should be and that darkness should cover the face of the whole earth for the space of three days and the angel said unto me that many shall see greater things than these to the intent that they might believe that these signs and these wonders should come to pass upon all the face of this land to the intent that there should be no cause for unbelief among the children of men and this to the intent that whosoever will believe might be saved 
and that whosoever will not believe a righteous judgment might come upon them. And also, if they are condemned, they bring upon themselves their own condemnation. And now remember, remember, my brethren, that whosoever perisheth, perisheth unto himself. And whosoever doeth iniquity, doeth it unto himself. For behold, ye are free, ye are permitted to act for yourselves. For behold, God hath given unto you a knowledge, and he hath made you free. He hath given unto you that ye might know good from evil, and he hath given unto you that ye might choose life or death, and ye can do good and be restored unto that which is good, or have that which is good restored unto you, or ye can do evil, and have that which is evil restored unto you. Helaman chapter 15 and now, my beloved brethren, behold, I declare unto you, that except ye shall repent, your houses shall be left unto you desolate. Yea, except ye repent, your women shall have great cause to mourn in the day that they shall give suck. For ye shall attempt to flee, and there shall be no place for refuge. Yea, and woe unto them which are with child, for they shall be heavy and cannot flee. Therefore they shall be trodden down, and shall be left to perish. Yea, woe unto this people, who are called the people of Nephi, except they shall repent, when they shall see all these signs and wonders which shall be showed unto them. For behold, they have been a chosen people of the Lord. Yea, the people of Nephi hath he loved, and also hath he chastened them. Yea, in the days of their iniquities hath he chastened them, because he loveth them. But behold, my brethren, the Lamanites hath he hated, because their deeds have been evil continually and this because of the iniquity of the tradition of their fathers. But behold, salvation hath come upon them through the preaching of the Nephites, and for this intent hath the Lord prolonged their days. And I would that ye should behold that the more part of them are in the path of their duty, and they do walk circumspectly before God. And they do observe to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments according to the law of Moses. Yea, I say unto you that the more part of them are doing this, and they are striving with unwearied diligence that they may bring the remainder of their brethren to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore there are many who do add to their numbers daily. And behold, ye do know of yourselves, for ye have witnessed it, that as many of them as are brought to the knowledge of the truth, and to know of the wicked and abominable traditions of their fathers, and are led to believe the holy scriptures, yea, the prophecies of the holy prophets which are written, which leadeth them to faith on the Lord and unto repentance, which faith and repentance bringeth a change of heart unto them. Therefore as many as have come to this, ye know of yourselves are firm and steadfast in the faith, and in the thing wherewith they have been made free. And ye know also that they have buried their weapons of war, and they fear to take them up, lest by any means they should sin. Yea, ye can see that they fear to sin, for behold, they will suffer themselves that they be trodden down and slain by their enemies, and will not lift their swords against them, and this because of their faith in Christ. And now because of their steadfastness, when they do believe in that thing which they do believe, for because of their firmness, when they are once enlightened, behold, the Lord shall bless them, and prolong their days, notwithstanding their iniquity. Yea, even if they should dwindle in unbelief, the Lord shall prolong their days until the time shall come, which hath been spoken of by our fathers, and also by the prophet Zenos, and many other prophets concerning the restoration of our brethren the Lamanites again to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, I say unto you that in the latter times the promises of the Lord have been extended to our brethren the Lamanites, and notwithstanding the many afflictions which they shall have, and notwithstanding they shall be driven to and fro upon the face of the earth, and be hunted, and shall be smitten and scattered abroad, having no place for refuge, the Lord shall be merciful unto them. And this is according to the prophecy, that they shall again be brought to the true knowledge, which is knowledge of their Redeemer, and their great and true Shepherd, and be numbered among his sheep. Therefore I say unto you, it shall be better for them than for you, except you repent. For behold, had the mighty works been shown unto them, which have been shown unto you, yea, unto them who have dwindled in unbelief because of the traditions of their fathers, ye can see of yourselves that they never would again have dwindled in unbelief. Therefore saith the Lord, 
I will not utterly destroy them, but I will cause that in the day of my wisdom they shall return again unto me, saith the Lord. And now behold, saith the Lord, concerning the people of the Nephites, if they will not repent and observe to do my will, I will utterly destroy them, saith the Lord, because of their unbelief, notwithstanding the many mighty works which I have done among them. And as surely as the Lord liveth, shall these things be, saith the Lord. Helaman chapter 16 And now it came to pass that there were many who heard the words of Samuel the Lamanite, which he spake upon the walls of the city. And as many as believed on his word went forth and sought for Nephi. And when they had come forth and found him, they confessed unto him their sins, and denied not, desiring that they might be baptized unto the Lord. But as many as there were who did not believe in the words of Samuel were angry with him, and they cast stones at him upon the wall, and also many shot arrows at him as he stood upon the wall. But the Spirit of the Lord was with him, insomuch that they could not hit him with their stones, neither with their arrows. Now when they saw that they could not hit him, there were many more who did believe on his words, insomuch that they went away unto Nephi to be baptized. And behold, Nephi was baptizing and prophesying and preaching, crying repentance unto the people, showing signs and wonders, working miracles among the people, that they might know that the Christ must shortly come, telling them of things which must shortly come, that they might know and remember at the time of their coming that they had been made known unto them beforehand, to the intent that they might believe. Therefore as many as believed on the words of Samuel went forth unto him to be baptized, for they came repenting and confessing their sins. But the more part of them did not believe in the words of Samuel. Therefore when they saw that they could not hit him with their stones and their arrows, they cried unto their captains, saying, Take this fellow, and bind him, for behold, he hath a devil. And because of the power of the devil which is in him, we cannot hit him with our stones and our arrows. Therefore take him, and bind him, and away with him. And as they went forth to lay their hands on him, behold, he did cast himself down from the wall, and did flee out of their lands, yea, even unto his own country, and began to preach and to prophesy among his own people. And behold, he was never heard of more, among the Nephites, and thus were the affairs of the people. And thus ended the eighty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended also the eighty and seventh year of the reign of the judges, the more part of the people remaining in their pride and wickedness, and the lesser part walking more circumspectly before God. And these were the conditions also in the eighty and eighth year of the reign of the judges. And there was but little alteration in the affairs of the people, save it were the people began to be more hardened in iniquity and do more and more of that which was contrary to the commandments of god in the eighty and ninth year of the reign of the judges but it came to pass in the ninetieth year of the reign of the judges there were great signs given unto the people and wonders and the words of the prophets began to be fulfilled and angels did appear unto men wise men and did declare unto them glad tidings of great joy Thus in this year the scriptures began to be fulfilled. Nevertheless, the people began to harden their hearts, all save it were the most believing part of them, both of the Nephites and also of the Lamanites, and began to depend upon their own strength and upon their own wisdom, saying, Some things they may have guessed right among so many, but behold, we know that all these great and marvelous works cannot come to pass, of which has been spoken. And they began to reason and to contend among themselves, saying, That it is not reasonable that such a being as a Christ shall come. If so, and he be the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, as it has been spoken, why will he not show himself unto us, as well as unto them who shall be at Jerusalem? Yea, why will he not show himself in this land as well as in the land of Jerusalem? But behold, we know that this is a wicked tradition which has been handed down unto us by our fathers to cause us that we should believe in some great and marvelous thing which should come to pass, but not among us, but in a land that is far distant, a land which we know not. Therefore they can keep us in ignorance, for we cannot witness with our own eyes that they are true. And they will, by the cunning and the mysterious arts of the evil one, work some great mystery that we cannot understand, which will keep us down to be servants to their words, and also servants unto them, for we depend upon them to teach us the word. 
and thus will they keep us in ignorance if we will yield ourselves unto them all the days of our lives. And many more things did the people imagine up in their hearts, which were foolish and vain, and they were much disturbed, for Satan did stir them up to do iniquity continually. Yea, he did go about spreading rumors and contentions upon all the face of the land, that he might harden the hearts of the people against that which was good and against that which should come. And notwithstanding the signs and the wonders which were wrought among the people of the Lord, and the many miracles which they did, Satan did get great hold upon the hearts of the people upon all the face of the land. And thus ended the ninetieth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the book of Helaman, according to the record of Helaman and his sons. End of Helaman, chapters 12 through 16, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters 1 through 4 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 1 through 4. Third Nephi, chapter 1. Now it came to pass that the ninety and first year had passed away, and it was six hundred years from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem, and it was in the year that Laconius was the chief judge and governor over the land. And Nephi, the son of Helaman, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, giving charge unto his son Nephi, who was his eldest son, concerning the plates of brass, and all the records which had been kept, and all those things which had been kept sacred from the departure of Lehi out of Jerusalem. Then he departed out of the land, and whither he went no man knoweth. And his son Nephi did keep the records in his stead, yea, the records of this people. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the ninety and second year, behold, the prophecies of the prophets began to be fulfilled more fully, for there began to be greater signs and greater miracles wrought among the people. But there were some who began to say that the time was past for the words to be fulfilled, which were spoken by Samuel the Lamanite. And they began to rejoice over their brethren, saying, Behold, the time is past, and the words of Samuel are not fulfilled. Therefore your joy and your faith concerning this thing hath been vain. And it came to pass that they did make a great uproar throughout the land. And the people who believed began to be very sorrowful lest by any means those things which had been spoken might not come to pass. But, behold, they did watch steadfastly for that day and that night and that day, which should be as one day, as if there were no night, that they might know that their faith had not been vain. Now it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers, that all those who believed in those traditions should be put to death, except the sign should come to pass which had been given by Samuel the prophet. Now it came to pass that when Nephi, the son of Nephi, saw this wickedness of his people, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. And it came to pass that he went out and bowed himself down upon the earth, and cried mightily to his God in behalf of his people, yea, those who were about to be destroyed because of their faith in the tradition of their fathers. And it came to pass that he cried mightily unto the Lord all that day, and behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, Lift up your head, and be of good cheer, for behold, the time is at hand, and on this night shall the sign be given, and on the morrow come I into the world, to show unto the world that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. Behold, I come unto my own, to fulfill all things which I have made known unto the children of men from the foundation of the world, and to do the will both of the Father and of the Son, of the Father because of me, and of the Son because of my flesh. And behold, the time is at hand, and this night shall the sign be given. And it came to pass, 
that the words which came unto Nephi were fulfilled, according as they had been spoken. For behold, at the going down of the sun there was no darkness, and the people began to be astonished, because there was no darkness when the night came. And there were many who had not believed the words of the prophets, who fell to the earth and became as if they were dead. For they knew that the great plan of destruction which they had laid for those who believed in the words of the prophets had been frustrated, for the sign which had been given was already at hand. And they began to know that the Son of God must shortly appear. Yea, in fine, all the people upon the face of the whole earth, from the west to the east, both in the land north and in the land south, were so exceedingly astonished that they fell to the earth. For they knew that the prophets had testified of these things for many years, and that the sign which had been given was already at hand. And they began to fear because of their iniquity and their unbelief. And it came to pass that there was no darkness in all that night, but it was as light as though it was midday. And it came to pass that the sun did rise in the morning again, according to its proper order. And they knew that it was the day that the Lord should be born, because of the sign which had been given. And it had come to pass, yea, all things, every whit, according to the words of the prophets. And it came to pass also that a new star did appear according to the word. And it came to pass that from this time forth there began to be lyings sent forth among the people by Satan to harden their hearts to the intent that they might not believe in those signs and wonders which they had seen. But notwithstanding these lyings and deceivings, the more part of the people did believe and were converted unto the Lord. And it came to pass that Nephi went forth among the people, and also many others, baptizing unto repentance, in the which there was a great remission of sins, and thus the people began again to have peace in the land. And there were no contentions, save it were a few that began to preach, endeavoring to prove by the scriptures that it was no more expedient to observe the law of Moses. Now in this thing they did err, having not understood the scriptures. But it came to pass that they soon became converted, and were convinced of the error which they were in, for it was made known unto them that the law was not yet fulfilled, and that it must be fulfilled in every whit. Yea, the word came unto them that it must be fulfilled. Yea, that one jot or tittle should not pass away till it should all be fulfilled. Therefore in this same year were they brought to a knowledge of their error, and did confess their faults. And thus the ninety and second year did pass away, bringing glad tidings unto the people because of the signs which did come to pass, according to the words of the prophecy of all the holy prophets. And it came to pass that the ninety and third year did also pass away in peace, save it were for the Gadianton robbers, who dwelt upon the mountains, who did infest the land. For so strong were their holds and their secret places that the people could not overpower them. Therefore they did commit many murders, and did do much slaughter among the people. And it came to pass that in the ninety and fourth year they began to increase in great degree, because there were many dissenters of the Nephites who did flee unto them, which did cause much sorrow unto those Nephites who did remain in the land. And there was also a cause of much sorrow among the Lamanites, for behold, they had many children who did grow up and began to wax strong in years that they became for themselves, and were led away by some who were Zoramites, by their lyings and their flattering words, to join those Gadianton robbers. And thus were the Lamanites afflicted also, and began to decrease as to their faith and righteousness because of the wickedness of the rising generation. Third Nephi, Chapter 2 And it came to pass that thus passed away the ninety and fifth year also, and the people began to forget those signs and wonders which they had heard, and began to be less and less astonished at a sign or a wonder from heaven, insomuch that they began to be hard in their hearts, and blind in their minds, and began to disbelieve all which they had heard and seen.
imagining up some vain thing in their hearts, that it was wrought by men, and by the power of the devil, to lead away and deceive the hearts of the people. And thus did Satan get possession of the hearts of the people again, insomuch that he did blind their eyes and lead them away to believe that the doctrine of Christ was a foolish and a vain thing. And it came to pass that the people began to wax strong in wickedness and abominations, and they did not believe that there should be any more signs or wonders given. And Satan did go about leading away the hearts of the people, tempting them and causing them that they should do great wickedness in the land. And thus did pass away the ninety and sixth year, and also the ninety and seventh year, and also the ninety and eighth year, and also the ninety and ninth year, and also an hundred years had passed away since the days of Mosiah, who was king over the people of the Nephites, and six hundred and nine years had passed away since Lehi left Jerusalem, and nine years had passed away from the time when the sign was given, which was spoken of by the prophets, that Christ should come into the world. Now the Nephites began to reckon their time from this period when the sign was given, or from the coming of Christ. Therefore nine years had passed away. And Nephi, who was the father of Nephi, who had the charge of the records, did not return to the land of Zarahemla, and could nowhere be found in all the land. And it came to pass that the people did still remain in wickedness, notwithstanding the much preaching and prophesying which was sent among them. And thus passed away the tenth year also, and the eleventh year also passed away in iniquity. And it came to pass in the thirteenth year there began to be wars and contentions throughout all the land, for the Gadianton robbers had become so numerous, and did slay so many of the people, and did lay waste so many cities and did spread so much death and carnage throughout the land, that it became expedient that all the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, should take up arms against them. Therefore all the Lamanites who had become converted unto the Lord did unite with their brethren the Nephites, and were compelled for the safety of their lives, and their women, and their children, to take up arms against those Gadianton robbers, yea, and also to maintain their rights, and the privileges of their church, and of their worship, and their freedom, and their liberty. And it came to pass that before this thirteenth year had passed away, the Nephites were threatened with utter destruction because of this war, which had become exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that those Lamanites who had united with the Nephites were numbered among the Nephites, and their curse was taken from them and their skin became white like unto the Nephites. And their young men and their daughters became exceedingly fair, and they were numbered among the Nephites, and were called Nephites. And thus ended the thirteenth year. And it came to pass in the commencement of the fourteenth year, the war between the robbers and the people of Nephi did continue, and did become exceedingly sore. Nevertheless, the people of Nephi did gain some advantage of the robbers, insomuch that they did drive them back out of their lands into the mountains and into their secret places. And thus ended the fourteenth year. And in the fifteenth year they did come forth against the people of Nephi. And because of the wickedness of the people of Nephi, and their many contentions and dissensions, the Gadianton robbers did gain many advantages over them. And thus ended the fifteenth year. And thus were the people in a state of many afflictions. And the sword of destruction did hang over them, insomuch that they were about to be smitten down by it, and this because of their iniquity. Third Nephi, Chapter 3 and now it came to pass that in the sixteenth year from the coming of Christ, Laconius, the governor of the land, received an epistle from the leader and the governor of this band of robbers. And these were the words which were written, saying, Laconius, most noble and chief governor of the land, behold, I write this epistle unto you, and do give unto you exceedingly great praise because of your firmness, 
and also the firmness of your people in maintaining that which he supposed to be your right and liberty yea ye do stand well as if ye were supported by the hand of a god in the defence of your liberty and your property and your country or that which ye do call so and it seemeth a pity to me most noble laconius that ye should be so foolish and vain as to suppose that ye can stand against so many brave men who are at my command who do now at this time stand in their arms and do await with great anxiety for the word go down upon the nephites and destroy them and i knowing of their unconquerable spirit having proved them in the field of battle and knowing of their everlasting hatred towards you because of the many wrongs which ye have done unto them therefore if they should come down against you they would visit you with utter destruction therefore i have written this epistle sealing it with mine own hand feeling for your welfare because of your firmness in that which ye believe to be right and your noble spirit in the field of battle therefore i write unto you desiring that ye would yield up unto this my people your cities your lands and your possessions rather than that they should visit you with the sword and that destruction should come upon you or in other words yield up yourselves unto us and unite with us and become acquainted with our secret works and become our brethren that ye may be like unto us not our slaves but our brethren and partners of all our substance and behold i swear unto you if ye will do this with an oath ye shall not be destroyed but if ye will not do this i swear unto you with an oath that on the morrow month i will command that my armies shall come down against you and they shall not stay their hand and shall spare not but shall slay you and shall let fall the sword upon you even until ye shall become extinct and behold i am gideonhi and i am the governor of this the secret society of gadianton which society and the works thereof i know to be good and they are of ancient date and they have been handed down unto us and i write this epistle unto you laconius and i hope that ye will deliver up your lands and your possessions without the shedding of blood that this my people may recover their rights and government who have dissented away from you because of your wickedness in retaining from them their rights of government and except ye do this i will avenge their wrongs i am gideonhi and now it came to pass when laconius received this epistle he was exceedingly astonished because of the boldness of gideonhi demanding the possession of the land of the nephites and also of threatening the people and avenging the wrongs of those who had received no wrong save it were they had wronged themselves by dissenting away unto those wicked and abominable robbers now behold this laconius the governor was a just man and could not be frightened by the demands and the threatenings of a robber therefore he did not hearken to the epistle of gideonhi the governor of the robbers but he did cause that his people should cry unto the lord for strength against the time that the robbers should come down against them yea he sent a proclamation among all the people that they should gather together their women and their children their flocks and their herds and all their substance save it were their land unto one place and he caused that fortifications should be built round about them and the strength thereof should be exceedingly great and he caused that armies both of the nephites and of the lamanites or of all them who were numbered among the nephites should be placed as guards round about to watch them and to guard them from the robbers day and night yea he said unto them as the lord liveth except ye repent of all your iniquities and cry unto the lord ye will in no wise be delivered out of the hands of those gadianton robbers and so great and marvellous were the words and prophecies of laconius that they did cause fear to come upon all the people and they did exert themselves in their might to do according to the words of laconius and it came to pass that laconius did appoint chief captains over all the armies of the nephites to command them at the time that the robbers should come down out of the wilderness against them now the chiefest among all the chief captains and the great commander of the armies of the nephites was appointed and his name was gidgidoni now it was the custom among all the nephites to appoint for their chief captains save it were in their times of wickedness some one that had the spirit of revelation and also prophecy therefore this gidgidoni was a great prophet among them 
as also was the chief judge. Now the people said unto Gidgadoni, Pray unto the Lord, and let us go up unto the mountains and into the wilderness, that we may fall upon the robbers and destroy them in their own lands. But Gidgadoni said unto them, The Lord forbid, for if we should go against them, the Lord would deliver us into their hands. Therefore we will prepare ourselves in the center of our lands, and we will gather all our armies together, and we will not go against them, but we will wait till they shall come against us. Therefore, as the Lord liveth, if we do this, he will deliver them into our hands. And it came to pass, in the seventeenth year, in the latter end of the year, the proclamation of Laconius had gone forth throughout all the face of the land. And they had taken their horses, and their chariots, and their cattle, and all their flocks, and their herds, and their grain, and all their substance, and did march forth by thousands, and by tens of thousands, until they had all gone forth to the place which had been appointed, that they should gather themselves together to defend themselves against their enemies. And the land which was appointed was the land of Zarahemla, and the land which was between the land Zarahemla and the land Bountiful, yea, to the line which was between the land Bountiful and the land Desolation. And there were a great many thousand people who were called Nephites, who did gather themselves together in this land. Now Laconius did cause that they should gather themselves together in the land southward, because of the great curse which was upon the land northward. And they did fortify themselves against their enemies, and they did dwell in one land, and in one body. And they did fear the words which had been spoken by Laconius, insomuch that they did repent of all their sins, and they did put up their prayers unto the Lord their God, that he would deliver them in the time that their enemies should come down against them to battle. And they were exceedingly sorrowful because of their enemies, and Gidgadoni did cause that they should make weapons of war of every kind, and they should be strong with armor and with shields, and with bucklers, after the manner of his instruction. Third Nephi, Chapter 4 And it came to pass that in the latter end of the eighteenth year those armies of robbers had prepared for battle, and began to come down and to sally forth from the hills, and out of the mountains and the wilderness, and their strongholds and their secret places, and began to take possession of the lands, both which were in the land south and which were in the land north, and began to take possession of all the lands which had been deserted by the Nephites, and the cities which had been left desolate. But behold, there were no beasts nor wild game in those lands which had been deserted by the Nephites, and there was no game for the robbers, save it were in the wilderness. And the robbers could not exist, save it were in the wilderness, for the want of food. For the Nephites had left their lands desolate, and had gathered their flocks and their herds and all their substance, and they were in one body. Therefore there was no chance for the robbers to plunder and to obtain food, save it were to come up in open battle against the Nephites. And the Nephites being in one body, and having so great a number, and having reserved for themselves provisions and horses and cattle, and flocks of every kind that they might subsist for the space of seven years in the which time they did hope to destroy the robbers from off the face of the land and thus the eighteenth year did pass away and it came to pass that in the nineteenth year gideonhi found that it was expedient that he should go up to battle against the nephites for there was no way that they could subsist save it were to plunder and rob and murder and they durst not spread themselves upon the face of the land, insomuch that they could raise grain, lest the Nephites should come upon them and slay them. Therefore Gideonhi gave commandment unto his armies, that in this year they should go up to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that they did come up to battle, and it was in the sixth month. And behold, great and terrible was the day that they did come up to battle for they were girded about after the manner of robbers, and they had a lambskin about their loins, and they were dyed in blood, and their heads were shorn, and they had headplates upon them, and great and terrible was the appearance of the armies of Gideonhi, because of their armor, and because of their being dyed in blood. 
And it came to pass that the armies of the Nephites, when they saw the appearance of the army of Gideonhi, had all fallen to the earth, and did lift their cries to the Lord their God, that he would spare them and deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. And it came to pass that when the armies of Gideonhi saw this, they began to shout with a loud voice because of their joy, for they had supposed that the Nephites had fallen with fear because of the terror of their armies. But in this thing they were disappointed. For the Nephites did not fear them, but they did fear their God, and did supplicate him for protection. Therefore, when the armies of Gideonhi did rush upon them, they were prepared to meet them. Yea, in the strength of the Lord they did receive them. And the battle commenced in this the sixth month, and great and terrible was the battle thereof, yea, great and terrible was the slaughter thereof, insomuch that there never was known so great a slaughter among all the people of Lehi since he left Jerusalem. And notwithstanding the threatenings and the oaths which Gideonhi had made, behold, the Nephites did beat them, insomuch that they did fall back from before them. And it came to pass that Gidgadoni commanded that his armies should pursue them as far as the borders of the wilderness, and that they should not spare any that should fall into their hands by the way. And thus they did pursue them, and did slay them to the borders of the wilderness, even until they had fulfilled the commandment of Gidgadoni. And it came to pass that Gideonhi, who had stood and fought with boldness, was pursued as he fled, and being weary because of his much fighting, he was overtaken and slain. And thus was the end of Gideonhi the robber. And it came to pass that the armies of the Nephites did return again to their place of security. And it came to pass that this nineteenth year did pass away, and the robbers did not come again to battle, neither did they come again in the twentieth year. And in the twenty and first year they did not come up to battle, but they came up on all sides to lay siege round about the people of Nephi. For they did suppose that if they should cut off the people of Nephi from their lands, and should hem them in on every side, and if they should cut them off from all their outward privileges, that they could cause them to yield themselves up according to their wishes. Now they had appointed unto themselves another leader, whose name was Zemnarihah. Therefore it was Zemnarihah that did cause that this siege should take place. But behold, this was an advantage to the Nephites, for it was impossible for the robbers to lay siege sufficiently long to have any effect upon the Nephites because of their much provision which they had laid up in store, and because of the scantiness of provisions among the robbers, for behold, they had nothing save it were meat for their subsistence, which meat they did obtain in the wilderness. And it came to pass that the wild game became scarce in the wilderness, insomuch that the robbers were about to perish with hunger. And the Nephites were continually marching out by day and by night, and falling upon their armies, cutting them off by thousands and by tens of thousands. And thus it became the desire of the people of Zemnarihah to withdraw from their design because of the great destruction which came upon them by night and by day. And it came to pass that Zemnarihah did give command unto his people that they should withdraw themselves from the siege and march into the furthermost parts of the land northward. And now Gidgadoni, being aware of their design, and knowing of their weakness because of the want of food and the great slaughter which had been made among them, therefore he did send out his armies in the night time, and did cut off the way of their retreat, and did place his armies in the way of their retreat, and this did they do in the night time, and got on their march beyond the robbers, so that on the morrow, when the robbers began their march, they were met by the armies of the Nephites, both in the front and in the rear. And the robbers who were on the south were also cut off in their places of retreat. And all these things were done by command of Gidgadoni. And there were many thousands who did yield themselves up prisoners unto the Nephites, and the remainder of them were slain. And their leader, Zebnarihah, was taken and hanged upon a tree, yea, even upon the top thereof, until he was dead. And when they had hanged him until he was dead, they did fell the tree to the earth, and did cry with a loud voice, saying, 
may the lord preserve his people in righteousness and in holiness of heart that they may cause to be felled to the earth all who shall seek to slay them because of power and secret combinations even as this man hath been felled to the earth and they did rejoice and cry again with one voice saying may the god of abraham and the god of isaac and the god of jacob protect this people in righteousness so long as they shall call on the name of their god for protection and it came to pass that they did break forth all as one in singing and praising their god for the great thing which he had done for them in preserving them from falling into the hands of their enemies yea they did cry hosanna to the most high god and they did cry blessed be the name of the lord god almighty the most high god and their hearts were swollen with joy unto the gushing out of many tears because of the great goodness of god in delivering them out of the hands of their enemies and they knew it was because of their repentance and their humility that they had been delivered from an everlasting destruction end of third nephi chapters one through four recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com third nephi chapters five through eight of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by jared hess the book of mormon translated by joseph smith third nephi chapters five through eight third nephi chapter five and now behold there was not a living soul among all the people of the nephites who did doubt in the least the words of all the holy prophets who had spoken for they knew that it must needs be that they must be fulfilled and they knew that it must be expedient that christ had come because of the many signs which had been given according to the words of the prophets and because of the things which had come to pass already they knew that it must needs be that all things should come to pass according to that which had been spoken therefore they did forsake all their sins and their abominations and their whoredoms and did serve god with all diligence day and night and now it came to pass that when they had taken all the robbers prisoners insomuch that none did escape who were not slain they did cast their prisoners into prison and did cause the word of god to be preached unto them and as many as would repent of their sins and enter into a covenant that they would murder no more were set at liberty but as many as there were who did not enter into a covenant and who did still continue to have those secret murders in their hearts yea as many as were found breathing out threatenings against their brethren were condemned and punished according to the law and thus they did put an end to all those wicked and secret and abominable combinations in the which there was so much wickedness and so many murders committed and thus had the twenty and second year passed away and the twenty and third year also and the twenty and fourth and the twenty and fifth and thus had twenty and five years passed away and there had many things transpired which in the eyes of some would be great and marvellous nevertheless they cannot all be written in this book yea this book cannot contain even a hundredth part of what was done among so many people in the space of twenty and five years but behold there are records which do contain all the proceedings of this people and a shorter but true account was given by nephi therefore i have made my record of these things according to the record of nephi which was engraven on the plates which were called the plates of nephi and behold i do make the record on plates which i have made with mine own hands and behold i am called mormon being called after the land of mormon the land in which alma did establish the church among the people yea the first church which was established among them after their transgression behold i am a disciple of jesus christ the son of god i have been called of him to declare this word among his people that they might have everlasting life and it hath become expedient that i according to the will of god that the prayers of those who have gone hence who were the holy ones should be fulfilled according to their faith should make a record of these things which had been done yea a small record of that which hath taken place from the time that lehi left jerusalem even down until the present time therefore i do make my record from the accounts which have been given by those who were before me until the commencement of my day 
and then I do make a record of the things which I have seen with mine own eyes. And I know the record which I make to be a just and a true record. Nevertheless, there are many things which, according to our language, we are not able to write. And now I make an end of my saying, which is of myself, and proceed to give my account of the things which have been before me. I am Mormon, and a pure descendant of Lehi. I have reason to bless my God and my Saviour Jesus Christ, that he brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem, and no one knew it, save it were himself and those whom he brought out of that land, and that he hath given me and my people so much knowledge unto the salvation of our souls. Surely he hath blessed the house of Jacob, and hath been merciful unto the seed of Joseph. And insomuch as the children of Lehi have kept his commandments, he hath blessed them and prospered them according to his word. Yea, and surely shall he again bring a remnant of the seed of Joseph to the knowledge of the Lord their God. And as surely as the Lord liveth, will he gather in from the four quarters of the earth all the remnant of the seed of Jacob, who are scattered abroad upon all the face of the earth. And as he hath covenanted with all the house of Jacob, even so shall the covenant wherewith he hath covenanted with the house of Jacob be fulfilled in his own due time, unto the restoring of all the house of Jacob unto the knowledge of the covenant that he hath covenanted with them. And then shall they know their Redeemer, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then shall they be gathered in from the four quarters of the earth unto their own lands, from whence they have been dispersed. Yea, as the Lord liveth, so shall it be. Amen. Third Nephi, chapter 6. And now it came to pass that the people of the Nephites did all return to their own lands in the twenty and sixth year. Every man with his family, his flocks, and his herds, his horses, and his cattle, and all things whatsoever did belong unto them. And it came to pass that they had not eaten up all their provisions. Therefore they did take with them all that they had not devoured, of all their grain, of every kind, and their gold, and their silver, and all their precious things, and they did return to their own lands and their possessions, both on the north and on the south, both on the land northward and on the land southward. And they granted unto those robbers who had entered into a covenant to keep the peace of the land, who were desirous to remain Lamanites, lands, according to their numbers, that they might have with their labors wherewith to subsist upon. And thus they did establish peace in all the land. And they began again to prosper and to wax great, and the twenty and sixth and seventh years passed away, and there was great order in the land, and they had formed their laws according to equity and justice. And now there was nothing in all the land to hinder the people from prospering continually, except they should fall into transgression. And now it was Gidgadoni and the judge Laconius, and those who had been appointed leaders who had established this great peace in the land. And it came to pass that there were many cities built anew, and there were many old cities repaired. And there were many highways cast up, and many roads made, which led from city to city, and from land to land, and from place to place. And thus passed away the twenty and eighth year, and the people had continual peace. But it came to pass in the twenty and ninth year there began to be some disputings among the people, and some were lifted up unto pride and boastings because of their exceedingly great riches, yea, even unto great persecutions. For there were many merchants in the land, and also many lawyers and many officers, and the people began to be distinguished by ranks according to their riches and their chances for learning, yea, some were ignorant because of their poverty, and others did receive great learning because of their riches. Some were lifted up in pride, and others were exceedingly humble. Some did return railing for railing, while others would receive railing and persecution and all manner of afflictions, and would not turn and revile again, but were humble and penitent before God. And thus there became a great inequality in all the land, insomuch that the church began to be broken up. Yea, insomuch that in the thirtieth year the church was broken up in all the land, save it were among a few of the Lamanites who were converted unto the true faith. And they would not depart from it, for they were firm and steadfast and immovable, willing with all diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. Now the cause of this iniquity of the people was this. Satan had great power unto the stirring up of the people to do all manner of iniquity, and to the puffing them up with pride, tempting them to seek for power and authority and riches and the vain things of the world. 
and thus Satan did lead away the hearts of the people to do all manner of iniquity. Therefore they had enjoyed peace but a few years. And thus in the commencement of the thirtieth year, the people, having been delivered up for the space of a long time to be carried about by the temptations of the devil whithersoever he desired to carry them, and to do whatsoever iniquity he desired they should, and thus in the commencement of this, the thirtieth year, they were in a state of awful wickedness. Now they did not sin ignorantly, for they knew the will of God concerning them. For it had been taught unto them, therefore they did willfully rebel against God. And now it was in the days of Laconius, the son of Laconius, for Laconius did fill the seat of his father, and did govern the people that year. And there began to be men inspired from heaven, and sent forth, standing among the people in all the land, preaching and testifying boldly of the sins and iniquities of the people, and testifying unto them concerning the redemption which the Lord would make for his people, or in other words, the resurrection of Christ, and they did testify boldly of his death and sufferings. Now there were many of the people who were exceedingly angry because of those who testified of these things, and those who were angry were chiefly the chief priests, and they who had been high priests and lawyers, Yea, all those who were lawyers were angry with those who testified of these things. Now there was no lawyer, nor judge, nor high priest, that could have power to condemn any one to death, save their condemnation was signed by the governor of the land. Now there were many of those who testified of the things pertaining to Christ, who testified boldly, who were taken and put to death secretly by the judges, that the knowledge of their death came not unto the governor of the land until after their death. Now behold, this was contrary to the laws of the land, that any man should be put to death, except they had power from the governor of the land. Therefore a complaint came up unto the land of Zarahemla, to the governor of the land, against these judges, who had condemned the prophets of the Lord unto death, not according to the law. Now it came to pass that they were taken and brought up before the judge to be judged of the crime which they had done, according to the law which had been given by the people. Now it came to pass that those judges had many friends and kindreds, and the remainder, yea, even almost all the lawyers and the high priests, did gather themselves together and unite with the kindreds of those judges who were to be tried according to the law. And they did enter into a covenant one with another, yea, even into that covenant which was given by them of old, which covenant was given and administered by the devil, to combine against all righteousness. Therefore they did combine against the people of the Lord, and enter into a covenant to destroy them, and to deliver those who were guilty of murder from the grasp of justice, which was about to be administered according to the law. And they did set at defiance the law and the rights of their country, and they did covenant one with another to destroy the governor, and to establish a king over the land, that the land should no more be at liberty, but should be subject unto kings. Third Nephi, chapter 7. Now behold, I will show unto you that they did not establish a king over the land. But in this same year, yea, the thirtieth year, they did destroy upon the judgment seat, yea, did murder the chief judge of the land. And the people were divided one against another, and they did separate one from another into tribes, every man according to his family and his kindred and friends, and thus they did destroy the government of the land. And every tribe did appoint a chief or a leader over them, and thus they became tribes and leaders of tribes. Now behold, there was no man among them, save he had much family, many kindreds, and friends. Therefore their tribes became exceedingly great. Now all this was done, and there were no wars as yet among them, and all this iniquity had come upon the people because they did yield themselves unto the power of Satan and the regulations of the government were destroyed because of the secret combinations of the friends and kindreds of those who murdered the prophets and they did cause a great contention in the land insomuch that the more righteous part of the people had nearly all become wicked yea there were but few righteous men among them and thus six years had not passed away since the more part of the people had turned from their righteousness like the dog to his vomit or like the sow, to her wallowing in the mire. Now this secret combination, which had brought so great iniquity upon the people, did gather themselves together, and did place at their head a man whom they did call Jacob. 
and they did call him their king. Therefore he became a king over this wicked band, and he was one of the chiefest who had given his voice against the prophets who testified of Jesus. And it came to pass that they were not so strong in number as the tribes of the people, who were united together, save it were their leaders did establish their laws, every one according to his tribe. Nevertheless they were enemies. Notwithstanding they were not a righteous people, yet they were united in the hatred of those who had entered into a covenant to destroy the government. Therefore Jacob, seeing that their enemies were more numerous than they, he being the king of the band, therefore he commanded his people that they should take their flight into the northernmost part of the land, and there build up unto themselves a kingdom until they were joined by dissenters, for he flattered them that there would be many dissenters, and they became sufficiently strong to contend with the tribes of the people. And they did so. And so speedy was their march that it could not be impeded until they had gone forth out of the reach of the people, and thus ended the thirtieth year, and thus were the affairs of the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the thirty and first year that they were divided into tribes, every man according to his family, kindred, and friends. Nevertheless, they had come to an agreement that they would not go to war one with another. But they were not united as to their laws and their manner of government. For they were established according to the minds of those who were their chiefs and their leaders. But they did establish very strict laws that one tribe should not trespass against another, insomuch that in some degree they had peace in the land. Nevertheless, their hearts were turned from the Lord their God, and they did stone the prophets, and did cast them out from among them. And it came to pass that Nephi, having been visited by angels, and also the voice of the Lord, therefore having seen angels, and being eyewitness, and having had power given unto him, that he might know concerning the ministry of Christ, and also being eyewitness to their quick return from righteousness unto their wickedness and abominations, therefore being grieved for the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, went forth among them in that same year, and began to testify boldly repentance and remission of sins through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did minister many things unto them, and all of them cannot be written, and a part of them would not suffice, therefore they are not written in this book. And Nephi did minister with power and with great authority. And it came to pass that they were angry with him, even because he had a greater power than they, for it were not possible that they could disbelieve his words, for so great was his faith on the Lord Jesus Christ that angels did minister unto him daily. And in the name of Jesus did he cast out devils and unclean spirits, and even his brother did he raise from the dead, after he had been stoned and suffered death by the people. And the people saw it, and did witness of it, and were angry with him because of his power and he did also do many more miracles in the sight of the people in the name of jesus and it came to pass that the thirty and first year did pass away and there were but few who were converted unto the lord but as many as were converted did truly signify unto the people that they had been visited by the power and spirit of god which was in jesus christ in whom they believed and as many as had devils cast out of them, and were healed of their sicknesses and their infirmities, did truly manifest unto the people that they had been wrought upon by the Spirit of God, and had been healed. And they did show forth signs also, and did do some miracles among the people. Thus passed away the thirty and second year also. And Nephi did cry unto the people in the commencement of the thirty and third year, and he did preach unto them repentance and remission of sins. Now I would have you to remember also that there were none who were brought unto repentance who were not baptized with water. Therefore there were ordained of Nephi men unto this ministry, that all such as should come unto them should be baptized with water, and this as a witness and a testimony before God and unto the people, that they had repented and received a remission of their sins. And there were many in the commencement of this year that were baptized unto repentance, and thus the more part of the year did pass away. Third Nephi, chapter 8. And now it came to pass that according to our record, and we know our record to be true, for behold, it was a just man who did keep the record, for he truly did many miracles in the name of Jesus. 
and there was not any man who could do a miracle in the name of Jesus, save he were cleansed every whit from his iniquity. And now it came to pass, if there was no mistake made by this man in the reckoning of our time, the thirty and third year had passed away, and the people began to look with great earnestness for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel the Lamanite, yea, for the time that there should be darkness for the space of three days over the face of the land. And there began to be great doubtings and disputations among the people, notwithstanding so many signs had been given. And it came to pass in the thirty and fourth year, in the first month, on the fourth day of the month, there arose a great storm, such an one as never had been known in all the land. And there was also a great and terrible tempest, and there was terrible thunder, insomuch that it did shake the whole earth, as if it was about to divide asunder. And there were exceedingly sharp lightnings, such as never had been known in all the land. And the city of Zarahemla did take fire, and the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof were drowned. And the earth was carried up upon the city of Moronihah, that in the place of the city there became a great mountain, and there was a great and terrible destruction in the land southward. But behold, there was a more great and terrible destruction in the land northward, for behold, the whole face of the land was changed, because of the tempest, and the whirlwinds, and the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the exceedingly great quaking of the whole earth. And the highways were broken up, the level roads were spoiled, and many smooth places became rough, and many great and notable cities were sunk, and many were burned, and many were shaken, till the buildings thereof had fallen to the earth, and the inhabitants thereof were slain, and the places were left desolate. And there were some cities which remained, but the damage thereof was exceedingly great, and there were many of them who were slain. And there were some who were carried away in the whirlwind, and whither they went no man knoweth, save they know that they were carried away. And thus the face of the whole earth became deformed because of the tempests, and the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the quaking of the earth. And behold, the rocks were rent in twain, and they were broken up upon the face of the whole earth, insomuch that they were found in broken fragments, and in seams, and in cracks upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that when the thunderings and the lightnings and the storm and the tempest and the quakings of the earth did cease, for behold, they did last for about the space of three hours, and it was said by some that the time was greater, nevertheless all these great and terrible things were done in about the space of three hours, and then, behold, there was darkness upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that there was thick darkness upon all the face of the land, insomuch that the inhabitants thereof who had not fallen could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could be no light because of the darkness, neither candles, neither torches, neither could there be fire kindled with their fine and exceedingly dry wood, so that there could not be any light at all. And there was not any light seen, neither fire nor glimmer, neither the sun nor the moon, nor the stars, for so great were the mists of darkness which were upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days, that there was no light seen, and there was great mourning and howling and weeping among all the people continually. Yea, great were the groanings of the people because of the darkness and the great destruction which had come upon them. And in one place they were heard to cry, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and then would our brethren have been spared, that they would not have been burned in that great city Zarahemla. And in another place they were heard to cry and mourn, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and had not killed and stoned the prophets, and cast them out, then would our mothers and our fair daughters and our children have been spared and not have been buried up in that great city Moronihah. And thus were the howlings of the people great and terrible. End of Third Nephi, chapters 5 through 8, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters 9 through 13 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. 
The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 9 through 13. Third Nephi, chapter 9. And it came to pass that there was a voice heard among all the inhabitants of the earth, upon all the face of this land, crying, Woe, woe, woe unto this people! Woe unto the inhabitants of the whole earth, except they shall repent! For the devil laugheth, and his angels rejoice because of the slain of the fair sons and daughters of my people. And it is because of their iniquity and abominations that they are fallen. Behold, that great city Zarahemla have I burned with fire, and the inhabitants thereof. And behold, that great city Moroni have I caused to be sunk in the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof to be drowned. And behold, that great city Moronihah have I covered with earth, and the inhabitants thereof, to hide their iniquities and their abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gilgal have I caused to be sunk, and the inhabitants thereof to be buried up in the depths of the earth, yea, in the city of Onihah, and the inhabitants thereof, in the city of Mokum, and the inhabitants thereof, in the city of Jerusalem, and the inhabitants thereof, and waters have I caused to come up in the stead thereof to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come up any more unto me against them. And behold the city Gadiandai, and the city of Gadiomna, and the city of Jacob, and the city of Gimgimno, all these have I caused to be sunk, and made hills and valleys in the places thereof, and the inhabitants thereof have I buried up in the depths of the earth, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up any more unto me against them. And behold, that great city Jacobugath, which was inhabited by the people of King Jacob, have I caused to be burned with fire, because of their sins and their wickedness, which was above all the wickedness of the whole earth, because of their secret murders and combinations, for it was they that did destroy the peace of my people and the government of the land. Therefore I did cause them to be burned, to destroy them from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up unto me any more against them. And behold, the city of Laman, and the city of Josh, and the city of Gad, and the city of Kishkumen, have I caused to be burned with fire, and the inhabitants thereof, because of their wickedness, in casting out the prophets, and stoning those whom I did send to declare unto them concerning their wickedness and their abominations. And because they did cast them all out, that there were none righteous among them, I did send down fire, and destroy them, that their wickedness and abominations might be hid from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints whom I sent among them might not cry unto me from the ground against them, and many great destructions have I caused to come upon this land, and upon this people, because of their wickedness and their abominations. O oh, all ye that are spared, because ye were more righteous than they, will ye not now return unto me, and repent of your sins, and be converted, that I may heal you? Yea, verily I say unto you, if ye will come unto me, ye shall have eternal life. Behold, mine arm of mercy is extended towards you. And whosoever will come, him will I receive, and blessed are those who come unto me. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I created the heavens and the earth and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and in me hath the Father glorified his name. I came unto my own, and my own received me not, and the scriptures concerning my coming are fulfilled. And as many as have received me, to them have I given to become the sons of God, and even so will I to as many as shall believe on my name. For behold, by me redemption cometh, and in me is the law of Moses fulfilled. I am the light and the life of the world. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end. And ye shall offer up unto me no more the shedding of blood. Yea, your sacrifices and your burnt offerings shall be done away, for I will accept none of your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. And ye shall offer for a sacrifice unto me a broken heart and a contrite spirit. 
And whoso cometh unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, him will I baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost, even as the Lamanites, because of their faith in me at the time of their conversion, were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and they knew it not. Behold, I have come unto the world to bring redemption unto the world, to save the world from sin. Therefore, whoso repenteth, and cometh unto me as a little child, him will I receive, for of such is the kingdom of God. Behold, for such I have laid down my life, and have taken it up again. Therefore repent, and come unto me, ye ends of the earth, and be saved. Third Nephi, chapter 10 and now, behold, it came to pass that all the people of the land did hear these sayings, and did witness of it. And after these sayings there was silence in the land for the space of many hours. For so great was the astonishment of the people that they did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred which had been slain. Therefore there was silence in all the land for the space of many hours. And it came to pass that there came a voice again unto the people, and all the people did hear, and did witness of it, saying, O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how oft have I gathered you, as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and have nourished you? And again, how oft would I have gathered you, as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, who have fallen, Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, ye that dwell at Jerusalem, as ye that have fallen, yea, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens, and ye would not. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, if ye will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart. But if not, O house of Israel, the places of your dwellings shall become desolate until the time of the fulfilling of the covenant to your fathers. And now it came to pass that after the people had heard these words, behold, they began to weep and howl again because of the loss of their kindred and friends. And it came to pass that thus did the three days pass away, and it was in the morning, and the darkness dispersed from off the face of the land and the earth did cease to tremble, and the rocks did cease to rend, and the dreadful groanings did cease, and all the tumultuous noises did pass away, and the earth did cleave together again that it stood, and the mourning, and the weeping, and the wailing of the people who were spared alive did cease, and their mourning was turned into joy, and their lamentations into the praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord Jesus Christ their Redeemer. And thus far were the scriptures fulfilled which had been spoken by the prophets. And it was the more righteous part of the people who were saved. And it was they who received the prophets and stoned them not. And it was they who had not shed the blood of the saints who were spared. And they were spared and were not sunk and buried up in the earth, and they were not drowned in the depths of the sea, and they were not burned by fire. Neither were they fallen upon and crushed to death and they were not carried away in the whirlwind, neither were they overpowered by the vapor of smoke and of darkness. And now whoso readeth, let him understand. He that hath the scriptures, let him search them, and see, and behold, if all these deaths and destructions by fire, and by smoke, and by tempests, and by whirlwinds, and by the opening of the earth to receive them, and all these things are not unto the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Behold, I say unto you, yea, many have testified of these things at the coming of Christ, and were slain because they testified of these things. Yea, the prophet Zenos did testify of these things, and also Zenoch spake concerning these things, because they testified particularly concerning us, who are the remnant of their seed. Behold, our father Jacob also testified concerning a remnant of the seed of Joseph. And behold, are not we a remnant of the seed of Joseph? And these things which testify of us, are they not written upon the plates of brass which our father Lehi brought out of Jerusalem? And it came to pass that in the ending of the thirty and fourth year, behold, I will show unto you 
that the people of Nephi who were spared, and also those who had been called Lamanites, who had been spared, did have great favors shown unto them, and great blessings poured out upon their heads, insomuch that soon after the ascension of Christ into heaven he did truly manifest himself unto them, showing his body unto them, and ministering unto them, and an account of his ministry shall be given hereafter. Therefore, for this time, I make an end of my sayings. Third Nephi, chapter 11. And now it came to pass that there were a great multitude gathered together of the people of Nephi round about the temple, which was in the land bountiful, and they were marveling and wondering one with another, and were showing one to another the great and marvelous change which had taken place. And they were also conversing about this Jesus Christ, of whom the sign had been given concerning his death. And it came to pass that while they were thus conversing one with another, they heard a voice, as if it came out of heaven, and they cast their eyes round about, for they understood not the voice which they heard. And it was not a harsh voice, neither was it a loud voice. Nevertheless, and notwithstanding it being a small voice, it did pierce them that did hear to the center, insomuch that there was no part of their frame that it did not cause to quake. Yea, it did pierce them to the very soul, and did cause their hearts to burn. And it came to pass that again they heard the voice, and they understood it not. And again the third time they did hear the voice, and did open their ears to hear it. And their eyes were towards the sound thereof, and they did look steadfastly towards heaven from whence the sound came. And behold, the third time they did understand the voice which they heard. And it said unto them, Behold, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, in whom I have glorified my name, Hear ye him. And it came to pass, as they understood, they cast their eyes up again towards heaven. And behold, they saw a man descending out of heaven, and he was clothed in a white robe. And he came down and stood in the midst of them, and the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him, and they durst not open their mouths, even one to another, and wist not what it meant for they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. And it came to pass that he stretched forth his hand, and spake unto the people, saying, Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world, and I have drunk out of that bitter cup which the Father hath given me, and have glorified the Father and taken upon me the sins of the world in the which I have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth, for they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that Christ should show himself unto them after his ascension into heaven. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto them, saying, Arise and come forth unto me that ye may thrust your hands into my side, and also that ye may feel the prints of the nails in my hands and in my feet, that ye may know that I am the God of Israel, and the God of the whole earth, and have been slain for the sins of the world. And it came to pass that the multitude went forth and thrust their hands into his side, and did feel the prints of the nails in his hands and in his feet. And this they did do, going forth one by one, until they had all gone forth, and did see with their eyes, and did feel with their hands, and did know of a surety, and did bear record that it was he, of whom it was written by the prophets, that should come. And when they had all gone forth, and had witnessed for themselves, they did cry out with one accord, saying, Hosanna! Blessed be the name of the Most High God! And they did fall down at the feet of Jesus, and did worship him. And it came to pass that he spake unto Nephi, for Nephi was among the multitude, and he commanded him that he should come forth. And Nephi arose and went forth, and bowed himself before the Lord, and did kiss his feet. And the Lord commanded him that he should arise, and he arose and stood before him. And the Lord said unto him, 
I give unto you power, that ye shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. And again the Lord called others and said unto them likewise, and he gave unto them power to baptize. And he said unto them, On this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Verily I say unto you, that whoso repenteth of his sins through your words, and desireth to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now, behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then shall ye immerse them in the water, and come forth again out of the water. And after this manner shall ye baptize in my name. For behold, verily I say unto you, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. And I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. And according as I have commanded you, thus shall ye baptize. And there shall be no disputations among you as there have hitherto been. Neither shall there be disputations among you concerning the points of my doctrine as there have hitherto been. For verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention, and he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine, to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another, but this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, I will declare unto you my doctrine. And this is my doctrine, and it is the doctrine which the Father hath given unto me. And I bear record of the Father, and the Father beareth record of me, and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. And I bear record that the Father commandeth all men everywhere to repent and believe in me. And whoso believeth in me and is baptized, the same shall be saved, and they are they who shall inherit the kingdom of God. And whoso believeth not in me, and is not baptized, shall be damned. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that this is my doctrine, and I bear record of it from the Father. And whoso believeth in me, believeth in the Father also. And unto him will the Father bear record of me, for he will visit him with fire, and with the Holy Ghost. And thus will the Father bear record of me, and the Holy Ghost will bear record unto him of the Father and me. For the Father and I and the Holy Ghost are one. And again I say unto you, ye must repent, and become as a little child, and be baptized in my name, or ye can in no wise receive these things. And again I say unto you, ye must repent, and be baptized in my name, and become as a little child, or ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you that this is my doctrine, and whoso buildeth upon this buildeth upon my rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. And whoso shall declare more or less than this, and establish it for my doctrine, the same cometh of evil, and is not built upon my rock, but he buildeth upon a sandy foundation, and the gates of hell stand open to receive such when the floods come and the winds beat upon them. Therefore go forth unto this people, and declare the words which I have spoken unto the ends of the earth. Third Nephi, Chapter 12 And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words unto Nephi, and to those who had been called, now the number of them who had been called and received power and authority to baptize was twelve. And behold, he stretched forth his hand unto the multitude and cried unto them, saying, Blessed are ye, if ye shall give heed unto the words of these twelve whom I have chosen from among you to minister unto you, and to be your servants. And unto them I have given power, that they may baptize you with water. And after that ye are baptized with water, behold, I will baptize you with fire, and with the Holy Ghost. 
Therefore blessed are ye if ye shall believe in me and be baptized. After that ye have seen me and know that I am. And again more blessed are they who shall believe in your words, because that ye shall testify that ye have seen me, and that ye know that I am. Yea, blessed are they who shall believe in your words, and come down into the depths of humility and be baptized. For they shall be visited with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and shall receive a remission of their sins. Yea, blessed are the poor in spirit who come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And again, blessed are all they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are all they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are all the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are all the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are all they who are persecuted for my name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For ye shall have great joy and be exceedingly glad, for great shall be your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you, to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose its savour, wherewith shall the earth be salted? The salt shall be thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you, to be the light of this people. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and it giveth a light to all that are in the house. Therefore let your light so shine before this people, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, One jot nor tittle hath not passed away from the law, but in me it hath all been fulfilled. And behold, I have given you the law and the commandments of my Father, that ye shall believe in me, and that ye shall repent of your sins, and come unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Behold, ye have the commandments before you, and the law is fulfilled. Therefore come unto me, and be ye saved. For verily I say unto you, that except ye shall keep my commandments, which I have commanded you at this time, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, and it is also written before you, that thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment of God. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of his judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, and whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if ye shall come unto me, or shall desire to come unto me, and rememberest that thy brother hast aught against thee, Go thy way unto thy brother, and first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come unto me with full purpose of heart, and I will receive you. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time he shall get thee, and thou shalt be cast into prison. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, until thou hast paid the uttermost senine, and while ye are in prison, can ye pay even one senine? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Nay. Behold, it is written by them of old time, that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. Behold, I give unto you a commandment, that ye suffer none of these things to enter into your heart. For it is better that ye should deny yourselves of these things, wherein ye will take up your cross, than that ye should be cast into hell. 
It hath been written that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whoso shall marry her who is divorced, committeth adultery. And again it is written, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But verily, verily, I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair black or white. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever cometh of more than these is evil. And behold, it is written, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye shall not resist evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. And behold, it is written also, that thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. Therefore those things which were of old time, which were under the law, in me are all fulfilled. Old things are done away, and all things have become new. Therefore I would that ye should be perfect, even as I, or your Father who is in heaven, is perfect. Third Nephi, chapter 13. Verily, verily, I say, that I would that ye should do alms unto the poor, but take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father who is in heaven. Therefore, when ye shall do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as will hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not do as the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father who is in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father who is in secret. And thy Father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 
for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If, therefore, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If, therefore, the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness! No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he looked upon the twelve whom he had chosen and said unto them, Remember the words which I have spoken. For behold, ye are they whom I have chosen to minister unto this people. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, even so will he clothe you, if ye are not of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient is the day unto the evil thereof. End of Third Nephi, chapters 9 through 13. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Third Nephi, chapters 14 through 17 of The Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Third Nephi, chapters 14 through 17. Third Nephi, chapter 14. And now it came to pass, that when Jesus had spoken these words, he turned again to the multitude, and had opened his mouth unto them again, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you who, if his son ask bread, will give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, 
for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leadeth to destruction, and many there be who go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Third Nephi, chapter 15. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, he cast his eyes round about on the multitude, and said unto them, Behold, ye have heard the things which I taught before I ascended to my Father. Therefore, whoso remembereth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, him will I raise up at the last day. And it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he perceived that there were some among them who marveled and wondered what he would concerning the law of Moses. For they understood not the saying that old things had passed away, and that all things had become new. And he said unto them, Marvel not that I said unto you that old things had passed away, and that all things had become new. Behold, I say unto you that the law is fulfilled that was given unto Moses. Behold, I am he that gave the law, and I am he who covenanted with my people Israel. Therefore the law in me is fulfilled, for I have come to fulfill the law, therefore it hath an end. Behold, I do not destroy the prophets, for as many as have not been fulfilled in me, verily I say unto you, shall all be fulfilled. And because I said unto you that old things have passed away, I do not destroy that which hath been spoken concerning things which are to come. For behold, the covenant which I have made with my people is not all fulfilled, but the law which was given unto Moses hath an end in me. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me, and endure to the end, and ye shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end will I give eternal life. Behold, I have given unto you the commandments. Therefore keep my commandments. And this is the law and the prophets, for they truly testified of me. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he said unto those twelve whom he had chosen, Ye are my disciples, and ye are a light unto this people, who are a remnant of the house of Joseph. And behold, this is the land of your inheritance, and the Father hath given it unto you. And not at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell it unto your brethren at Jerusalem. Neither at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell unto them concerning the other tribes of the house of Israel, whom the Father hath led away out of the land. This much did the Father command me, that I should tell unto them. That other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. And now, because of stiff-neckedness and unbelief, they understood not my word. Therefore I was commanded to say no more of the Father concerning this thing unto them. 
But verily I say unto you, that the Father hath commanded me, and I tell it unto you, that ye were separated from among them because of their iniquity. Therefore it is because of their iniquity that they know not of you. And verily I say unto you again, that the other tribes hath the Father separated from them, and it is because of their iniquity that they know not of them. And verily I say unto you, that ye are they of whom I said, Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And they understood me not, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles. For they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. And they understood me not, that I said they shall hear my voice. And they understood me not, that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice, that I should not manifest myself unto them, save it were by the Holy Ghost. But behold, ye have both heard my voice, and seen me, and ye are my sheep, and ye are numbered among those whom the Father hath given me. Third Nephi, chapter 16 And verily, verily, I say unto you, that I have other sheep which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem, neither in any parts of that land round about whither I have been to minister. For they of whom I speak are they who have not as yet heard my voice, neither have I at any time manifested myself unto them. But I have received a commandment of the Father that I shall go unto them, and that they shall hear my voice, and shall be numbered among my sheep, that there may be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore I go to show myself unto them. And I command you that ye shall write these sayings after I am gone, that if it so be that my people at Jerusalem, they who have seen me and have been with me in my ministry, do not ask the Father in my name, that they may receive a knowledge of you by the Holy Ghost, and also of the other tribes whom they know not of, that these sayings which ye shall write shall be kept and shall be manifested unto the Gentiles, that through the fullness of the Gentiles the remnant of their seed, who shall be scattered forth upon the face of the earth because of their unbelief, may be brought in, or may be brought to a knowledge of me, their Redeemer. And then will I gather them in from the four quarters of the earth, and then will I fulfill the covenant which the Father hath made unto all the people of the house of Israel. And blessed are the Gentiles, because of their belief in me, in and of the Holy Ghost, which witnesses unto them of me and of the Father. Behold, because of their belief in me, saith the Father, and because of the unbelief of you, O house of Israel, in the latter day shall the truth come unto the Gentiles, that the fullness of these things shall be made known unto them. But woe, saith the Father, unto the unbelieving of the Gentiles, for notwithstanding they have come forth upon the face of this land, and have scattered my people who are of the house of Israel. And my people who are of the house of Israel have been cast out from among them, and have been trodden under feet by them. And because of the mercies of the Father unto the Gentiles, and also the judgments of the Father upon my people who are of the house of Israel, verily, verily, I say unto you, that after all this, and I have caused my people who are of the house of Israel to be smitten, and to be afflicted, and to be slain, and to be cast out from among them, and to become hated by them, and to become a hiss, and a byword among them. And thus commandeth the Father, that I should say unto you at that day when the Gentiles shall sin against my gospel, and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, and shall be lifted up in the pride of their hearts above all nations and above all the people of the whole earth, and shall be filled with all manner of lyings and of deceits and of mischiefs and all manner of hypocrisy and murders and priestcrafts and whoredoms and of secret abominations. And if they shall do all those things and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, behold, saith the Father, I will bring the fullness of my gospel from among them. And then will I remember my covenant which I have made unto my people, O house of Israel, and I will bring my gospel unto them. And I will show unto thee, O house of Israel, that the Gentiles shall not have power over you. But I will remember my covenant unto you, O house of Israel. And ye shall come unto the knowledge of the fullness of my gospel. But if the Gentiles will repent and return unto me, saith the Father, behold, they shall be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. And I will not suffer my people, who are of the house of Israel, to go through among them and tread them down, saith the Father. 
but if they will not turn unto me and hearken unto my voice i will suffer them yea i will suffer my people o house of israel that they shall go through among them and shall tread them down and they shall be as salt which hath lost its savour which is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of my people o house of israel verily verily i say unto you thus hath the father commanded me that i should give unto this people this land for their inheritance and then the words of the prophet isaiah shall be fulfilled which say thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together shall they sing for they shall see eye to eye when the lord shall bring again zion break forth into joy sing together ye waste places of jerusalem for the lord hath comforted his people he hath redeemed jerusalem the lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eye of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of god third nephi chapter seventeen behold now it came to pass that when jesus had spoken these words he looked round about again on the multitude and he said unto them behold my time is at hand i perceive that ye are weak that ye cannot understand all my words which i am commanded of the father to speak unto you at this time therefore go ye unto your homes and ponder upon the things which i have said and ask of the father in my name that ye may understand and prepare your minds for the morrow and i come unto you again but now i go unto the father and also to show myself unto the lost tribes of israel for they are not lost unto the father for he knoweth whither he hath taken them and it came to pass that when jesus had spoken he cast his eyes round about again on the multitude and behold they were in tears and did look steadfastly upon him as if they would ask him to tarry a little longer with them and he said unto them behold my bowels are filled with compassion towards you have ye any that are sick among you bring them hither have ye any that are lame or blind or halt or maimed or leprous or that are withered or that are deaf or that are afflicted in any manner bring them hither and i will heal them for i have compassion upon you my bowels are filled with mercy for i perceive that ye desire that i should show unto you what i have done unto your brethren at jerusalem for i see that your faith is sufficient that i should heal you and it came to pass that when he had thus spoken all the multitude with one accord did go forth with their sick and their afflicted and their lame and with their blind and with their dumb and with all them that were afflicted in any manner and he did heal them every one as they were brought forth unto him and they did all both they who had been healed and they who were whole bow down at his feet and did worship him and as many as could come for the multitude did kiss his feet insomuch that they did bathe his feet with their tears and it came to pass that he commanded that their little children should be brought so they brought their little children and set them down upon the ground round about him and jesus stood in the midst and the multitude gave way till they had all been brought unto him and it came to pass that when they had all been brought and jesus stood in the midst he commanded the multitude that they should kneel down upon the ground and it came to pass that when they had knelt upon the ground jesus groaned within himself and said father i am troubled because of the wickedness of the people of the house of israel and when he had said these words he himself also knelt upon the earth and behold he prayed unto the father and the things which he prayed cannot be written and the multitude did bear record who heard him and after this manner do they bear record the eye hath never seen neither hath the ear heard before so great and marvellous things as we saw and heard jesus speak unto the father and no tongue can speak neither can there be written by any man neither can the hearts of men conceive of so great and marvellous things as we both saw and heard jesus speak 
and no one can conceive of the joy which filled our souls at the time we heard him pray for us unto the Father. And it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of praying unto the Father, he arose, but so great was the joy of the multitude that they were overcome. And it came to pass that Jesus spake unto them, and bade them arise. And they arose from the earth, and he said unto them, Blessed are ye because of your faith. And now, behold, my joy is full. And when he had said these words, he wept, and the multitude bare record of it, and he took their little children, one by one, and blessed them, and prayed unto the Father for them. And when he had done this, he wept again. And he spake unto the multitude, and said unto them, Behold your little ones. And as they looked to behold, they cast their eyes towards heaven, and they saw the heavens open, and they saw angels descending out of heaven, as it were in the midst of fire. And they came down and encircled those little ones about, and they were encircled about with fire, and the angels did minister unto them. And the multitude did see, and hear, and bear record, and they know that their record is true, for they all of them did see and hear every man for himself, and they were in number about two thousand and five hundred souls, and they did consist of men, women, and children. End of Third Nephi, chapters fourteen through seventeen. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com.